and have a lovely day. Uh, everything's in the program, and we're not sure as to when. I'll try and keep up to date if you want. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the St. Joseph's College Festival. Another extremely important weekend of schoolboy rugby coming live from Ipswich. It's overcast, it's grey, but the, the rugby will still be played. We're here for the first game of the day. It's Whitchurch of Wales, based in Cardiff, up against a Trinity side, not performing to the standards they would expect of themselves so far. It will be Trinity to kick us off. Trinity in the blue and white, playing from right to left. Whitchurch in their traditional black and blue. There's a serious level of rugby to be enjoyed here this weekend, live with Next Gen, and it's claimed from the kickoff. What an excellent start for Whitchurch. A great take by Niall Moore. Well, a thrilling weekend of rugby to come. This, a very impressive group with Trinity and Whitchurch. Hampton and RGS High Wycombe play over on pitch two. Bit of a change in location if you're a frequent visitor to the St. Joseph's College Festival. The traditional pitch one has now become the second pitch and I'm live here in the gantry on the new pitch one on the right hand side of this beautiful field. Well, we started off with the old boys rugby game, which took place last night. A thrilling occasion for the uh, traditional occupants of St. Joseph's College. Plenty of current students and old boys alike, like myself, there to uh, get involved. But now we're starting with Trinity line out possession. It's a, a really strong Trinity side. They're unlucky to miss out with their starting nine, Lucas Friday, the England international, son of Mike Friday, of course, who is not appearing in this tournament due to an injury. And Whitchurch, who had a very impressive uh, under-18s rugby international festival back in the summer in the sevens, now playing on the 15-a-side game, and it's just been touched in air uh, by Trinity's number 15, Omar Leon, the team captain, player of the season so far, has played on the wing as well in the National Cup final last year, which Trinity were a part of. Charged down by Whitchurch. There's a touch in there, so they'll play with ball in hand. Paku plays it wide. Lovely footwork. And it's a thrilling start to the game. Whitchurch and Trinity trading possession in these early stages. They'll run it through the forwards. Well, Whitchurch piling on the pressure. Really feeling it now. Once again, it's Paku at nine. They go wide, found a bit of space on the short side, perhaps. Stepping inside and out. Despite the uh, short 15-minute halves we have here at the St. Joseph's College Festival, expect a real test match vibe from these two sides. Some serious talent on show, being executed excellently well. It's a lovely run from Britain. But knocked on on the floor from Fraser Britain, the number, number 10. Well, one player to watch out for, the pink scrum hat in Lestin Hutchins, number 13, a really dangerous player. And one who you expect to see in action if they can turn it over from this scrum. Young Lestin Hutchins, who played in the Rugby Under-18 International Festival that was brought live to you by Next Gen, had a real starring role in that Whitchurch side. And now they'll be looking to pile on the pressure, on the pressure onto the young deputy Reese Gormley, whose brother has played nine for the last two years at Trinity. Now it's up to him to fill the, the large, imperious boots of Lucas Friday, and a clearance kick has been charged down, and now Whitchurch come away with it once more. Theo Lewis with excellent work, Hutchins over the ball. Down the short side they go, hunting for a little bit of space, and Whitchurch in the 22 for the first time. Excellent work by Britton to get the ball away. On his knees, the young number 10. Britain again. Little show and go through the hole, looking for the offload. That came off a Whitchurch player, and penalty is the call by the referee. Offside, the decision, and uh, Whitchurch will look to add three points and score the first of the St. Joseph's College Festival.
an impressive start by Whitchurch. Strong carrying by uh, Isaac Godfrey, the number 18. Sizable young lad looking to add his weight to this uh, Welsh side. The sole Welsh competitors here. Traditionally uh, a huge part of this tournament and they've got a real opportunity in this group. A Trinity side not firing in all cylinders. RGS High Wycombe undefeated. They just simply haven't had the fixture list that Whitchurch have had. Part of the uh, top division of Welsh schoolboy rugby. Serious standard. And Britain will look to add the first points of the day. An easy penalty in the end. And Britain has added three points. And Whitchurch take the lead, a really impressive early few minutes for the Welsh side. And Trinity now looking to respond. These short formatted games, it's so important that whenever you're in the opposition's 22, you come away with points. Well, Trinity kick off through Lewis Harrison Ricks. And Whitchurch will look to play out from inside their 22. Ambitious stuff from the Welsh side. Penalty goes the way of Whitchurch. Unfortunate stuff. Really from uh, Trinity just pinged in the breakdown. That will be a real format of this uh, weekend. The breakdown, such an important contest. But it's a lovely kick as well. And Whitchurch will look to profit from this good position. Jack Morris with the throw. His white and blue scrum hat. Lovely option. Ball won by Whitchurch and they go to the mall. Morris with possession. Well, it's a good carry from Whitchurch. They've made plenty of meters and the ball's gone down. No penalty, so Morris will just carry. And it's quick ball for Whitchurch. Short line to Hutchins, but it's a little show and go. Crossing is the call, unfortunate from Britain. A good idea to test this Whitchurch defence, but uh, Hutchins penalised. And a penalty for, Witch for Trinity instead. Well, it's a lovely kick into these grey overcast Ipswich skies. And this perhaps the best opportunity of the game so far for Trinity. Line out then for Trinity. Quinn Singh, the uh, Quinn's under 18 player, will take the throw. An extremely skillful forward starred in the National Cup final last year. And Singh will have the throw. Well, it's a clean line out won by Trinity. And now they'll attack through the midfield. Hard runners in that centre channel there, camped on the 10 metre. It's loose at the breakdown, the ball could go either way. Picked up by Whitchurch, but knock-on is the cool. Well, Theo Williams' eyes lit up as he looked to uh, stride through with the ball in hand for Whitchurch, but instead the scrum will go the way of blue and white. Reese Gormley with the feed once more. And the first scrum of the day on pitch one here, live at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Well, it's a competitive scrum it is, and a little cut inside, and away goes Trinity. What lovely footwork. This could be a score, and it is. Wonderful work for Max Farrell. Two tries in last year's National Cup final. Plenty of tries this time last year. And Max Farrell now in upper sixth, the senior leader in this team with wonderful footwork. Farrell had an awful lot to do from this position. Beautiful running. Well, Farrell's been involved in the England setup before. He's making a good case for himself at the moment. A beautiful try to put Trinity in the lead for the first time.
an excellent score. Truly magnificent, exactly what you'd like to see from a tournament of this quality. Woo! Sam Goldschmied with the uh, conversion. So Trinity lead by seven points to three against Whitchurch. Goldschmied on the right wing this after this morning, sorry, with responsibilities for the tee. Well, despite their early dominance, Whitchurch now lag behind a Trinity side inspired by Max Fowler's excellent score. And Trinity clear from kickoff. It'll be a line out for the Welsh side. Well, we've yet to see the best of Whitchurch, the likes of Hutchings and Salem Kaibi on this right wing. Will be keen to get involved. Morris with the throw once more. Godfrey at the front of the line out. Trinity with a big defensive set inbound. Good contest. But Morris comes away with it on the wraparound. There's a quick ball from Paku, but knock on is the call. Trinity escaped this time. Well, I'm sure you know full well, or ever you're watching the St. Joseph's College Festival this weekend, that the weather has been horrendous up and down the UK, but especially here in Suffolk, the rain falling in the last few days with real torrential power, and yet these pitches hold up in excellent condition. Well, it's an excellent scrum by Whitchurch, but uh, Gormley comes away with it. And they'll hit Harrison Ricks at 10, and now they'll offload it. It's an excellent carry. Quick ball for Trinity, but knocked on in the breakdown. The most disparaging of outcomes for Trinity, who done so well to exit from within their own half. But Whitchurch and their powerful scrum will have possession. Impressive scrum it is with Godfrey and Morris in the front row. Sam Bartlett at number three as well. They've certainly got the edge over Trinity, but the ball spits out the left-hand side. They'll come away with it. But a reset is the call, and Whitchurch uh, perhaps fortunate to come away with possession. Dan Eisler Miller at 21, starting. Right, Mitchell Shield, sorry, starting at number 21 for Whitchurch. Clean ball. The play away. Aku Hutchins runs the dummy line. Instead, they go wide. Skipping through the contact. It's an excellent run by Finn Paisley. Prisoner at first receiver offloads it to forward carriers. Also with the carry, but Trinity have turned it over. No release. There's the referee and Whitchurch lose possession once more. Oh, the story of the first half really is Trinity under pressure, unable to escape their own half, an excellent score by Farrell, the difference between these sides from the set piece, and another set piece then for Trinity. Line out goes the way of blue and white from the penalty, an excellent kick to put Trinity right on the 22 of Whitchurch. A fascinating group with Hampton and RGS Highwickham also involved. He's perhaps two side Trinity perhaps overlooked in the build up to this tournament following their poor start to the season, but a very impressive side nonetheless. That's a loose line out, but Trinity come away with it. Great work from Opara to win possession and down that the short side they go. It's a real collision there. And Whitchurch go hunting in the breakdown. Penalty goes the way of Trinity. Off feet is the call. And Opara dictating play, the vice captain, a real leader, the number five. This time they'll tap with Singh 
with the ball at feet. Little show and go. Good carry from Quinn Singh. And Trinity deep in the red zone, looking for their second try. This bright early morning start. Singh carries once more. And it takes two Whitchurch players to put him down, but they do drive him back. Reece Gormley dictating play from the nine position. Good carry through the breakdown. Once again, Whitchurch hunting for turnover ball. And this time they come away with it. Well, in this short format, what a ginormous moment that is for the Welsh side. Under pressure inside their own 22, they've come away with possession. And it's an excellent kick downfield to get them well out of trouble. Well, suddenly Whitchurch are in the ascendancy right at the very end of this first half. What a thrilling start to this uh, wonderful weekend of rugby. As a light drizzle falls, Whitchurch come away from the line-out. It's really excellent work from Godfrey. Put the ball out the back and a quick ball for Whitchurch. Hatchins crashes up through the midfield. Once again, Whitchurch play quickly, and this time it's chipped through, and there's a real contest on the floor. Rutley battling for it for Whitchurch at number nine. The ball goes loose. And that will bring an end to this first half, the final, the, uh, the first interval here at the St. Joseph's College Festival. And Trinity, despite being on the back foot for much of this game, lead by seven points to three, separated by an excellent Max Farrell try. Well, Whitchurch, despite being perhaps the dominant, the dominant side in this first game, they trail by four points to a Trinity side who have underperformed this season so far, but will be looking to re-establish themselves on the schoolboy scene with a great performance here at the St. Joseph's College Festival, live from Ipswich in the drizzle and the rain. We're at the halftime interval of the first game of the morning. So much rugby to bring you live with Next Gen here on Belstead Road. The second half inbound here at the first game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. Whitchurch, despite being in the ascendancy in that first half, trail by seven points to three for an excellent Max Farrell try and, and a great take from Louis Harrison Ricks off the kickoff. But a Whitchurch penalty early in this second half. Well, this is a huge opportunity for Whitchurch, who went for points early in the first half when they had a penalty in uh, Trinity's half. 
This time, they opt for the tap, and it's Isaac Godfrey with the ball at his feet. And Godfrey carries. Trinity affect the tackle, but there's still plenty of Whitchurch players around the ball as they take play some Route 1 rugby here in the wet weather in this first game. Well, Rutley is dictating play at number nine, but it's still Whitchurch who carry through the forwards. Great counter drive by Trinity, and they've turned it over, but not to the liking of the referee. No release from the tackle. Interesting to see how Whitchurch will progress. It looks like Godfrey will tap once more. But it's been spilled. And Trinity escape unfazed early in this second half. Well, Whitchurch do not profit from their uh, superiority in this second half. They've driven deep into Trinity's 22, but a knock-on from young Isaac Godfrey will allow Gormley to feed the breakdown and Trinity to escape. Well, it's a good counter-drive from uh, Whitchurch. Difficult to profit from scrum dominance at this level. Restrictions on how deep one can drive in the scrum at under-18 rugby. But Whitchurch certainly on top and piling on the pressure on Quinn Singh, the uh, Harlequins under-18 hooker. A real talent with Jacob Broom and uh, Temia Sambe at his side. Well, a Trinity squad littered with impressive names at the schoolboy level. And expect them to do well in this tournament despite their start. And Hutchins puts a hit on for Whitchurch, but the clearance is made. They're up to their 10 meter, but it will still be Whitchurch possession. Trinity very much still in the thick of it here. They lead 7 3 in this first game. But Morris once more with the throw. Godfrey relays the call. Up it goes. Niall Moore claims well in the air. That ball is brought down. But legally, according to our referee, and Hutchins on the hard line. Trinity are over the ball. But the penalty goes against them. Can I please remind the teams that. A crucial. Phase of the game then for Whitchurch. They camped in Trinity's half in this second half. Unable to profit so far, but Morris with the throw once more. It's another Whitchurch line out inside the 22. They'll be desperate to come away from with points in this crucial phase of the game and to the mall they go well Trinity have disrupted that mall effectively the ball's gone down and Whitchurch will have to play away it's a turnover that goes the way of Trinity and for the second time in this second half Trinity have escaped unfazed and Whitchurch possession in their 22 Uh, Whitchurch just unable to dig the ball out of their uh, collapsed mall. And therefore, possession goes the way of Trinity. Um, uh, Reese Gormley has had a good game. Filling in for Lucas Friday, of course. The England international unable to appear due to injury. But once again, Whitchurch get the shove on. Harrison Mix with a great clearance. Lovely nudge from Louis Harrison Ricks. Deep it goes back to Whitchurch's five meter. Picked up by Kaibi, who plays it inside. Good strong carry by Paisley. Whitchurch over the ball, they've turned it over. And suddenly, despite Whitchurch's dominance in this second half, Trinity have possession on the 22. Gormley under pressure. Digs out the ball and Wilkie carries. Quick ball down the right hand side, but left hand side, sorry, but it's a knock on in that wide channel. 
for Trinity playing with penalty advantage. Scrum then, the eventual call. Well, if Trinity were to score from here, it would be a real mountain for Whitchurch to climb to get back into this game. The opening game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. Reese Gormley wants more with the feed against this Whitchurch scrum, which is piling on the pressure. But Harrison Ricks, little trick play out the back, and Farrell wants more with a great carry. Already has one try in this game, searching for his second. It's not a clean breakdown for Trinity, but they are still in possession in the 22. Penalty goes against them. Neither side able to string together any semblance of an attacking set inside their opposition 22. Whitchurch twice denied from inside Trinity's red zone and this time Trinity fail to make their possession pay. Still 7-3, the score remains. Just eight minutes to go in this opening fixture. And once again, Morris with the line out. Short break in play while a substitution is made. Godfrey leaves the field. But Whitchurch still come away with it. Moore with a good take. And they'll go to the mall. And they've got it moving as well. Rutley once again dictating play, but this Whitchurch Mall still rolling them up past their 10 metre. And a breakaway from the middle of the mall. Away goes Morris. Chopped down on just shy of the 22. Rutley plays quickly. Wide they go. Bit of pressure put on Whitchurch. Backwards. Lashan Paku goes down, but backwards is the call, and suddenly Trinity have turned it over. Harrison Ricks with the clearance. Paisley goes back for Whitchurch, but it's a wonderful kick. Well, it's happening all at once here at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Morris with a great break from that Whitchurch Mall, driving into Trinity's 22. But a beautiful kick from Harrison Ricks has put Trinity back in the ascendancy. 50-22, so the line out will be Quinn Sings to throw. Let's go, lads. Referee hurrying on play in these short formatted games. These moments of respite so crucial. Even early on in the morning here at St. Joseph's College. Singh with the throw, Opara up goes, but it's lost and carried hard by Asambi. Through the forwards they go. Great carry by Singh over the gain line. Back down the left-hand side, Asambe gets the offload away. Great ball out wide and suddenly Trinity are in the corner. But it's been held up. Beautiful hands in there from Wilkie as well. Well, Jacob Broom and uh, Temi Asambe driving hard in that left-hand corner, but... Whitchurch escape and they clear from their five-metre. Harrison Ricks with ball in hand, direct running from the number 10. They're in the 22 once more. Singh poised at first receiver, but the ball goes loose. But there's a Whitchurch hand that's intercepted play, so it will be a scrum for Trinity. It was not forward by Black. An impressive defensive set 
from Whitchurch, but they're still under pressure here. It's a formidable front row. Temi Asambe, Quinn Singh and Jacob Broom for Trinity. Whitchurch may have got the better of them in the early stage of this game, but Trinity will come away with it. A little show and go. Excellent work from Gormley. Sing. It goes loose. Whitchurch come away with it. As they look to clear from inside their 22, no advantage coming. Under four minutes to go. Whitchurch, who have looked very impressive in this game, still trail to Trinity. A sole Max Farrell try, the difference between them. Rutley with the ball in hand for Whitchurch. They'll have to produce something really special from inside their 22 if they want to turn this game around. And they've got possession with the scrum. But of course, at this under 18 level, the possibilities of dominating with the scrum restricted by the rules in play. So the referee calls a reset where in the men's game, it would have very much have been a penalty in Whitchurch's favor. Rutley with the ball in hand once more. Razor Britain poised at first receiver. Really does look like Whitchurch are willing to run it from here. And once again, they have the scrum in possession. It comes Whitchurch's way. Great offload and wide they go. Ball in hand for Whitchurch. Sam Neal. Penalty advantage for a high tackle. So now Whitchurch playing with free ball. Morris. No advantage coming. High tackle number 15. Well, there's very little time left in this game. And Whitchurch are in need of a score to take back the advantage over Trinity. They led by three points before an excellent Max Farrell score. Now they have a line out right on the 22. Morris with the throw from this line out then. Up they go through Niall Moore once more. A real line out specialist, the number four. Morris joins them all. Trinity looking to disrupt. Whitchurch still in possession. Through the forwards they go. Right in the closing stages of this opening game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. Happy to play through the forwards for now. Whitchurch hunting for the score that will put them in front. Down the short side they go. Good carry by Morris. Witch Trinity in the breakdown, hunting for a turnover. What a crucial intervention it would be at this stage. They're only five metres out. Another pick and go. With Church edging ever closer to the score that will turn this game on its head. Less than a minute to go. Possession just inches away from the Trinity line. Driven back by Trinity. Ferocious defending. Down the short side they go. Steal. Fends off one. Morris into support. They skip more and hit highway. Freddie Highway with a good carry. The ball spits out loose from the breakdown. Trinity are over it once again. We're crossing into the final stages, but another pick and go makes meters for Whitchurch. The Cardiff side looking to turn this game around. Now they go wide. There's a bit of space in the right-hand corner. It's been spilled. Lost forward there. Time. Sam Neal couldn't hold on to it, and Trinity will come away with the victory. Full time here on pitch one in the opening game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. 
and a Trinity side written off by many following their questionable start to the season have beaten an impressive Whitchurch side also looking for their first major win of the season. 7-3 the final score and Trinity have opened their account at the festival in which last year they made the final. What a ferocious start to the St. Joseph's College Festival. But the rugby doesn't stop. We're right live here on pitch one where Kirkham will face off in their opening pool game. Finalists in their first ever tournament back in 2020. Trinity come away with a victory, but we'll be live Thank on you. pitch one very shortly for our second game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. Second game of the St. Joseph's College Festival and RGS High Wickham, the winners in 2015, plate winners the year after, take on Kirkham, who drove all the way to the final in their first year here at the St. Joseph's College Festival. What promises to be an excellent game kicks off with RGS High Wickham on the chase. Well, Kirkham from Preston Way. Very impressive schoolboy side. Will clear from their first possession of the morning. Well, great pressure from Kirkham and RGS High Wickham forced to clear. That's you. Let's go. Well, it will be a Kirkham line out. <laughs> Turned over by RGS High Wickham. What a start. And they go straight to the mall. The ball is at the back. I'll just High Wickham play away. And it's great carry through the centre, but Kirkham turn it over. Ball is loose. High Wickham hunt for the corner. They could be running away here for the opening score of the day. Kirkham concede. RGS High Wickham in front. Opening try of the morning for the previous champions. RGS High Wickham off to a flying start. The perfect start for RGS High Wickham. Great finish in the corner. Well, the rain continues to fall here in Ipswich. Just a drizzle at the moment. Not enough to truly disrupt play, but we saw 
the wet ball in action in that uh, midfield play, just popping up loose for RGS High Wickham. Unlucky from the conversion, just short. So 5 0, High Wickham will lead. Wait there, we've got two balls on. Wait there. Wait there. Thank you. When you're ready. A great start. Brajes High Wickham, opportunistic play from there inside centre. And Kirkham will kick off. Returned swiftly by High Wickham, but only up to halfway. Claimed well in the air. And Kirkham put boot to ball once more over the head of any on rushing High Wickham player, and the ball goes dead. Not a lot of space between the try line and dead ball here at St Joseph's College. And that kick. Profits High Wickham, who will have a scrum on halfway on the right hand side of the field. Crouch! RGS High Wickham with the scrum on halfway. They currently lead by one try to nothing. Wellington in action over on pitch two. But at the moment, it's High Wycombe carrying on halfway. Looking to create some momentum. Once again, they put boot to ball. A good option in the wet weather. It's loose and Kirkham will eventually come away with it. A real contest on the floor. Could spit out either side. This way, this time it's High Wickham's ball, but spilt in possession. And Kirkham will break, skipping through the tackles. Lovely step inside. Kirkham putting man to floor. They'll go for the corner. Kirkham equalise. Well, in this wet weather, High Wickham opted to chip ahead, but their tactics work against them as Kirkham break, and it's an excellent score in the corner. Scrum half goes over and Kirkham equalise. What a score by Kirkham. They've done amazingly well to break away. Well, Kirkham will look to take the lead with this kick. Kirkham then from far out on this left-hand side will look to take the lead for the first time. It's a great strike. But just wide of that left hand upright, so the scores will remain level. Five apiece here in the second game at the St Joseph's College Festival. When you're ready. Arches High Wickham will kick off. It's high and wide on this left-hand side, but Kirkham gather cleanly. Outside! The box kick is Kirkham's get out of jail. Excellent shot, the two-man tackle, but a wonderful offload from High Wickham's left-hand winger. And now they'll come away with it. Through the forwards they go, strong carry by the High Wickham hooker. Back down the short side they come, through the forwards once more. Big shot by Kirkham and they have disrupted possession. It's a match made in heaven, Kirkham and two-man shots. A school characterised by their aggression and power in the tackle and it's won them possession once more. Kirkham scrum, Crouch. possession on halfway. Let's see if they can profit with ball in hand. Well, oh, it's a great RGS High Wickham scrum, but uh, Kirkham come away with it. Great footwork in midfield. A wonderful carry by the number 12, driving all the way into the High Wickham half, but it's a turnover. Not releasing is the call. and 12 blue holding on. Kirkham unable 
the profit from their uh, momentum in this first half. Well, the kick for touch almost finds us here in the gantry on this left-hand side. But it will be a high Wickham line-out. Little dummy, and they do go short. No jump needed for the ball to be formed. High Wickham go driving away. Well, the line out goes down. The mall collapsed by Kirkham. So High Wickham play with a bit of ball in hand. They prod it into this uh, slippery deck that we have here at St Joseph's College. Penalty goes the way of High Wickham, and you imagine. They'll kick for the corner and look to profit from this impressive maul. Well, High Wycombe have uh, we'll on the 22. failed to compete the 22 in recent me. years, the, the latter stages of this competition. But taking on the uh, 2020 finalists in Kirkham, oh, yes, they look impressive. Can't have you run up and go, please. Thank you. In this first half, it'll be another line out. To the front they go, and they will form the mall. Well, it's at the back with the RGS High Wickham nine. Kirkham hustling for possession, but driving forward is RGS High Wickham. The mall has stopped. Music calls the referee, so they'll play through the backs. A hard line run by the centres. RGS High Wickham inside the 22. The ball pops out loose and it's hacked forward by okay, Kirkham okay, and suddenly they could be in behind. There's no one in the backfield for High Wickham. Wonderful pace, but the ball goes loose once more. Eventually claimed by the outside centre of High Wickham who offloads it. Now they're back on their five. Stop talking. RGS High Wickham were moments away from scoring. The ball went loose and it was hacked forward by Kirkham. And suddenly they're piling on the pressure in defence. Deep inside High Wickham's 22, forced to clear. Well, perhaps not far enough. Back come Kirkham, ball inside. Lovely footwork and a great offload over the top. Kirkham with the show and go, driving forward. This would be a real hammer blow for High Wycombe, who not only failed to convert from deep inside Kirkham's 22, but could be about to concede. Forward runners off 10, they go behind. There's the hard line from the centres of Kirkham. Quick ball. Out the back they go once more. The ball is loose, but backwards is the call. It spits out the back of the breakdown, and now carried by Kirkham's back row. Once again, the ball goes no loose. Coming. Knock on in the tackle by Rez. Knock on by High Wickham from the base of that loose breakdown. So Kirkham with another great opportunity from the set piece. I know we've got close gap, Scrum then for Kirkham. In a menacing position. Here you go. Right on this right hand touch line. Hi Wickham have had an impressive scrum so far, but they'll do well to disrupt from this position. The scores are level, five apiece. Hi Wickham had the opportunity down in Kirkham's half, they couldn't convert. Opportunistic play from Kirkham, hacking the ball through, has got them deep into High Wycombe's 22. And it's loose once more, and again, High Wycombe will hack the ball through. In the blink of an eye, Kirkham are back in their own half. Well, the ball just is spilled out the back of the hand of High Wycombe. This wet weather really playing havoc on both sides as High Wickham looks a break. It spits out the back of the breakdown. Hacked through by Kirkham once more. And it'll be a line out for High Wickham, is the call from the uh, assistant referee. Line out blue or red? 
chaos here on pitch one in the second game of the St. Joseph's College Festival. No, no, it's a line out red. It's the wet ball really wreaking havoc for both sides. The ball just spit out of the hand of Kirkham's 10. It was hacked through. They were back in their own half and they kicked it through themselves. And now they're putting pressure on High Wickham with a line out on their five meter. Backwards. Kirkham come away with it. Great counter drive by High Wickham, but Kirkham back in possession in the 22. The score's still level at five apiece. Carried through the forwards. Out the back it goes to the backs. Hard line by the centre once again. RGS High Wickham go hunting forward in the breakdown. Penalty Kirkham. 13 red offside. Well, you see a, a hand went up from their right hand winger. Points is the call as we edge ever closer to half time. A mature option from Kirkham to stride out in front. The simplest of kicks really following the penalty. Kirkham will look to stretch out in front. Right on half time, Kirkham take the lead. And this really is a game that could go either way. Half time score, Kirkham lead by eight points to five. In the second game at the St. Joseph's College Festival, live with Next Gen. We'll be back for this thrilling second half very shortly. Well, we're back at the St. Joseph's College Festival, the second game. 15 minutes to come between Kirkham and High Wickham. Kirkham lead by eight points to five following that late penalty. And they'll kick off high into this overcast sky on Belstead Road. Right away, hunting in the breakdown, the perfect start. Jubilation for the blue and white as Kirkham have a penalty right in the early stage of the second half. Now their, their forwards point to the posts, but Kirkham in fact will kick to the corner and hope to convert from deep inside High Wickham's 22. Well, Mr. Revel, of course, former teacher here at St. Joseph's College, still on the intercom, letting all of our uh, 
attendees know how the day is going to progress. At the moment, Kirkham with a line out just five to ten metres shy of this High Wycombe line. Well, it's a Kirkham line out. The crucial stage of the game. They currently lead by three. And it's clean ball at the back of the line out. The ball's been brought down, legally so. According to our referee. They run it hard at first receiver. First man is legal. Great deal. Turnover. High Wickham come away with it. Release for A crucial intervention. And RGS who trail by three, clear from inside their 22. It's a good kick as well, finds touch. Kirkham line out, they were repelled from the five metre, but they still have possession. Once again, they go to the back of the line out and win it cleanly. Don't grab the leg. Run it hard at first receiver, Kirkham. But it's been knocked on, and RGS High Wickham come away with it. RGS High Wickham trail, but they have possession. Crouch! Kirkham! Bye! Set! Oh, no! I Wickham look to break from inside their own half. They hack it through. It's picked up by Kippener. Carried into contact by Davies. Hacked through by Hulse. From the box kick, it will find touch. Yeah, a beautiful kick. Puts RGS Wickham right into deep water. Red, there's you. Yeah, clear like that. OK. Do they start on side? Once again, the pendulum right, cool. swings, and this time Kirkham are back in possession. Are you happy with where they set? Well, clean line out ball one by Kirkham, and they'll set them all once again, driving forward. Reese Hulse digs it out and finds willing runners at first receiver. They'll set once again in the 22 of High Wycombe. No reds! Hold that, thank you. Is Davies at 10, out the back they go. Smith lets it go and is over to support in the breakdown. Quick ball for Kirkham. All the way wide they go. But the ball has been spilt once more. Kirkham lead, but they make waste of these good opportunities they have. Now there's the towering Joss Gilmore at number five, looking to disrupt from this line out. Watch off. Thank you. Time off, and both sides will make okay. some changes. Knock on by Blue, strung down Red Bull. 
Crow. Scrum Set. then with RGS High Wickham on the feed. Set. Kirkham looking to disrupt once more. RGS High Wickham come away with it and they'll clear downtown. The ball lands on halfway. And a great step by Ray. Bit of momentum for Kirkham. Here's the carry. Considine. Driven back by High Wickham. Penalty goes against them. It's a turnover. Morgan Dryhurst Jones, a senior figure in this side, penalised by the referee. On the cross. High Wickham search for possession from the penalty. Line out back on the 22. Use the line, High Wickham trail by just three points. On the power and brute of Kirkham, Preston side with some defensive duties. Quick ball then for Kirkham. The play through their centre, out the back they go. It's a loose pass, well gathered in the wide channels. Great tackle in the end from Kipena. Willing runners once more at first receiver. Back down the short side they go. Huge tackle. A real tip from Dryhurst Jones. And it's been turned over. And Kirkham clear. Well, the story of this game, really. Sides unable to convert from possession in the 22. And now Kirkham are piling on the pressure on High Wickham. Yes. And Kirkham have turned it over and now they're driving through the forwards. The ball goes loose. But there's Miles Lister who hands it off at first receiver. Now Kirkham play with a penalty. A huge opportunity to kill off this game. Wide they go. There's numbers in the wide channel. If they can use them, over they go. Harry Ray has the score and Kirkham have seen off High Wickham in these closing stages. I don't agree, he slipped and he's regained and there was no contest. Kirkham turn it over in their own half, hack it downfield and then they affect the turnover once more. And in weather like this, if you can play on top of your opposition, you're more than in with a chance. And in the end, it's Harry Ray who goes sliding into that far corner. Well, Lolly Davis will look to convert, but uh, Kirkham, with little time remaining, are certainly in with a good chance to come away with a victory in their first game of the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. It's a good contact. Just off the bar. So unfortunate. Great positioning, lads, for that kick. But they'll still lead 13 5. Kirkham in front. Two tries and a penalty to their name. Yeah. Knock on in, start your option, scrum or line. Well, High Wickham scrum back in possession. In. Scrum or line out, they take the scrum. Huge moment in the game. High Wycombe need, in need of two scores to take back the lead that they held early in this first half. Crouch! Yeah. Find! Squeeze. 
set. Scrum then for High Wycombe. Kirkham under a bit of pressure. They lead 13-5. What a counter drive by the northern side. And RGS High Wycombe forced to play with scrappy ball on the 10 metre of Kirkham. Driving through the forwards. Well, there's little time remaining for High Wycombe. Great defence from Kirkham. Charlie Bray over the ball, unable to win possession. There's a high tackle, unfortunately, for Miles Lister. So High Wycombe will play with penalty advantage. Little show and go! High Wycombe through the centre. The substitute nine. Good ball to play quick, advantage quickly for High, for High Wickham, tackle. but advantage over. no more penalty no, advantage, advantage for over. them. A crucial phase of the game. No, They're in need no. of two scores to retake the lead. Kirkham deny gain line ball for High Wickham. Intense defending. Yes. High Wickham still First driving on in. inside Kirkham's half. It's been turned over. Lost in contact. No, not yet. Yes. High Wickham lose possession and Kirkham with the opportunity to clear. Hulse with the box kick. Doesn't make any metres, but reclaimed in the air. So Kirkham play with ball in hand, just inside their own half. Oh, it pops up unkindly. First by Blue, second by Red. Josh Gilmore just can't keep hold record. of possession. Last play. Well, next gen zone Angus Savage in his uh, podcast in the precursor of this tournament tipped Kirkham to go far. Rob Howard agreed, of course. They are a force to be reckoned with, a very senior side. The likes of Ollie Davis, Morgan Dryhurst Jones, Josh Gilmore, who have played two years of senior rugby in the first team. They're ready to compete here, and that's an un Hold impressive down, counter Hold drive. And they do turn it over. It's cleared by Loggenberg, and Kirkham take the victory. Well, they've laid down a marker. It's been an impressive performance. Kirkham come away with the spoils from this fixture. RGS High Wickham, Falter 13 5. Kirkham go striding on as they look to compete. All the marbles for Kirkham, a really impressive defensive performance. But there's more rugby to come, of course, here on Pitch One Live at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Denston are in action up next here on Pitch One. We'll be back very shortly for more rugby live at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Match three on pitch one upcoming very shortly.
Well, it's Blundells up against longtime favourites Denston. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride, Denston College. They've been really impressive in recent years. Up against tournament newbies Blundells from the southwest. And Denston reclaimed possession from the kickoff. But they'll be in for a tough day against this impressive Blundells side. Good carry from Ned Corey at number eight to get us started. Penalty advantage, contact Penalty advantage goes the way of Blundells and the tournament newbies will look to start swiftly here. Thank you, mate. Always exciting when a new side takes the stage at St. Joseph's sure, College. Yeah, the, the vice captain at number 10 dictating play. Stewart with a strong carry. But the wet weather playing havoc as we've already seen and uh, penalty advantage goes the way of contact Blundells. The red and white, easy to confuse with tournament hosts and Joseph's when College, ready. but uh, when you're ready, let's get going. a historic sporting institution, Blundells. And Yap, the vice captain, hacks it towards the touchline. There's your D mark. Let's go, Red, let's get it in early. What a thrilling morning of rugby we've already had. Red speed it up. Kirkham overcame a spirited high Wickham in that second game. Pools are really wide open here, as Angus Savage said in his precursor to the tournament in his podcast. It really could go either way. There's no clear favourites this year. That's a, a loose line out, an early lift is the call, so free kick goes the way of Blundells. They're lucky to get away with possession. Oh, it's a little show and go from Southgate and penalty advantage for Blundells. Yap. At first receiver looks to go wide. Step inside from Clover. Thank you. Yap looking for forward runners. The ball goes loose, but that's a second penalty that Denston are at fault for. Offside this time. White five offside. Push, push, push. And post is the call. The captain, the captain James Clarkson at number eight, points towards the uprights and. Lucas Yap in his matching scrum cap will open the scoring for Blundells if he can convert from right in front of the post. Well, Denston will trail following a successful conversion. Blundells out in front in their opening game at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Their first ever game at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Blundells take the lead by three points against Denston here on pitch one. It's on you, White, as soon as you're ready. Well, it will be Denston to get us back underway. Blunders will claim in that far right-hand side. A good strong carry to set the exit. Yap puts boot to ball. We just played you on. And back come Denson. They look to free the hands. A loose offload, well gathered in the wide channel. Holly Booth at scrum half, dictating play, looking for quick ball. I'm happy that you picked it. A lovely pass. And a Backwards. great offload too. Backwards. Backwards always, says the referee. Well gathered in the end by Tom Hodler. And Denson put boot to ball as they look to pin Blundells back in their five metre channel, and that's exactly what they do. Here's your Mark White. A great kick in the end. Front, you got it just there, well, Liam showed at fullback, running the show from first receiver in those last phases. James, watch your AR, yeah? Deputising at fly half. Well, Blundells with the line out. The throw in by Jack Power. And cleared. Once again, it's shown with ball in hand, looking to weave his way through this Blundell's defence, dragged Never down well ball. by Fenton. Play that. 
Denston with possession in the 22 for the first time. Turned over and Stewart comes away with it instead. Denston have lost possession. And a penalty for Blundells to compound their misery. I need it clear with that white. There's your mark, Mella. No, right. And Yap now with the opportunity to drive Denston back into their 22. It's a great kick. Thank you, mate. There you go, fella. Well, it's Denston in their traditional go, white shirts up against the new boys, Blundells, with a line out on the 22. Up goes the Good captain, contest. Clarkson, but it's over his head, eventually gathered by Stewart. Use it! Well, Will Maunder at 12 at first receiver. Now, Yap back in his usual role. Backwards. Lovely hands by Seb Linnett and into the wide channel go Blundells. Well, they've looked ferocious in this opening exchange. It's a strong carry by Guyatt. Yap finds more forward, Stewart. Yap goes himself this time, the vice captain in need of support. Penalty advantage offside white. Metzen at nine. Penalty advantage, Penalty advantage goes the way of Blundells. Metzen goes back to the left hand side. Winslow over the gain line. Metzen. Yeah, out the back. An excellent pickup by Clover, but dragged out behind the gain line. Yeah. Blundell still with penalty advantage, looking to create some momentum. Away goes Guyatt. Metzen, Yap goes himself. Through the forwards once more. Inside ball, met with a Denston kit. Impressive defence. But the penalty advantage always in favour of Blundells and they'll go for posts. Should have given that earlier, gentlemen. Well, the penalty then for Blundell's mature play once more. They'll look for points to extend their advantage from six to three. Well, the tournament new boys are making a name for themselves up against Denston. Denston, of course, stalwarts of the festival. But now they trail only by three. Unsuccessful conversion for Blundells. A missed opportunity kicking into this blistering wind that's picked up in the last few moments. The weather remains just as poor. As soon as you're ready, White, let's go. Play on. Well, it's a 22 that's been reclaimed by Denston. On by but White. a knock-on is the call. Thank you, mate. Well, a difficult decision for Denston to swallow. Clever play from them to reclaim Mark possession Jets. for the 22, but the yeah. ball's gone loose. It will be a scrum then for Blundells, who missed the opportunity to go further ahead. But now they have possession just shy of Denston's 22. Set. Alistair Metzen with the feed and the scrum moving on. Yap looking for the centre at first receiver. Up into the line comes Rocky Prowse at 15. Driving onwards. There's a Denston player at the breakdown, but illegally so. Not supporting his body weight. An unfortunate call for Ollie Booth at scrum half. Well, Yap will kick to the corner for this penalty. Six. And Blundell's nice keen to up. press home their advantage. You, the Plenty of time spent in this Denston 22. Right. A pretty formidable group. Brighton College 
playing at the moment on pitch two. Brighton College and Strathallan of Scotland, the other sides in this group. And the mall is formed by Blundells. They've turned the ball over, they're driving forward. This will be a try. Blundells have the score. Well, the mall was rolling and excellent work to transition as well under pressure from Denston and Denston so often the uh, epitome of forward power have faltered under an impressive Blundell's Mall. The scorer, Jake Power at number three. Well, Power crosses over. It had to be Jake Power to score from a powerful driving mall. It was written before the game even started. Blundells extend their lead against Denston. Yap with a great strike, but just wide of the left hand upright. So the, store, the score will remain. 8-3. You see, the ball was, was held up by Denston, but great work to transition their weight. They rolled to the right-hand side, and Power goes driving over with ball in hand. Well, it's going to be Denston to get us back underway. Scrum advantage. <whistles> Not up. Liam Schoen with an excellent kickoff. And Denson have carved out a line out right outside Blundell's five metre. No points on the board for Denson so far. Scrum then for Denson. Well, Blundells might be eight points ahead, but they're under real pressure now. Great scrum to disrupt, but it's carried by Schoen at first receiver. Contact taken by Denston. Willing runners at first receiver once more. Ricky Owusu drives over the line. What a carry by Owusu. And that's the try that Denston were after. It looked like nothing more than a set-up play. The Ricky Awusu has scored. Well, in the blink of an eye, Denston could look to come within a point if this conversion is successful. 8-7 the score at half-time. Well, tournament new boys, Blundells were doing excellently well to drive out in front, but it was a good move off the set piece. And then what looked like a routine carry from Ricky Owusu, he just didn't stop. Great leg drive, bursting through the contact. Well, half time between Blundells and Denston. Denston trail by a point. We'll go live to Angus Savage pitch side. Well, hello. Thanks. Thank you very much, Wilf. We're just building up to the big moment when St. Joseph's College come out onto the field for the first time in this 2023 festival. We all know how this one goes. They build the tunnel, they come storming out. It's gonna be one of those moments in schools rugby that is not to be missed. But we've had a big start to the day, Trinity with that 7-3 victory against Whitchurch High School to 
kick the tournament off, get themselves off to a winning run. They reached the final last year, and we know they are keen to make a point this year. Hampton also off to a flying start. A good 11-3 victory against Queggs Wakefield. As I wander up to where I know the St. Joseph's team is going to come storming out of. Oh, well, we've got some wonderful jackets here. In a few moments' time, you're going to see them on your screens. This is outstanding pitch side wear. And we're going to throw over to Wilf for the game. For tournament newbies blundles, an impressive side from the southwest of England, taking on the tournament stalwarts in Denston. Chipped into the backfield, and it'll be carried for now by uh, Denston's flanker. All the way into the backfield they go. Harrison Eaton, at number 11, claimed it, but it's been turned over, and now Blundells will come away with it. They lead by just the solitary point, but they have possession on Denson's 22. What a blistering start to the second half. Yap. A lovely wide ball to Clarkson, the captain, driving into the 22 once more, tackled by Collier, but Yap into the backfield they go. Well held in the wide channel by Linnett. Metzen finds forward runners. What a tackle that is by Collier. Back to his feet and making the shot. And it's been spilled and hacked away in the end by Ollie Booth. No advantage coming, knocked on. What a great defensive set from Denston. Here's a mark, and they have survived the early onslaught from Blundells at the start of this second half. Let's keep the scrums up, boys. Listen for the hold on the push, yeah? Thank you. Scrum then for Denston, Ollie Booth with the feed as they look to Exit Go, from head. inside their own Fight. half. Powerful Blundell scrum, but well held by Denston. Ned Corey at number eight, looking to control the ball. This side, make sure you're holding up and make sure you're driving straight, OK? Come on, boys. Crouch! Bind! Set! Booth with the feed once more. Denson under a bit of pressure at the breakdown. But they'll come away with it. A huge shot by Arthur Guy at the passion in this game. Really something. Both sides piling in the shots. But a free kick in the end. You're good there, thank you. A lucky escape for Denston, who are under a lot of pressure. They're under a lot of pressure, sorry, in that opening exchange. Well, from the free kick, Denston hack it high into the overcast sky, and it will fall the way of the white and maroon shirts. Awusu with a good carry. Oh, and potential interception, but Denson come away with it instead. Now they play with knock on advantage. And we will reset for the scrum. Change for Blundells. Kit Cameron onto the field in number 18. Well, the wind really picking up here as the rain has subsided for the moment. But the wind is at Blundell's back and they'll hope to use that to their advantage. But it will be a Denston scrum, almost potential intercept. Just knocked on, nothing malicious, but a penalty goes the way of Denston. And they'll get us underway quickly. It's a loose pass through the hands of any Denston player and Blundell's drop on the ball. No advantage, knocked on by White, scrum down Red Bull. Well, a missed opportunity from that penalty. Oh, 
I need you straight, OK? Well, Jed Benson at fly half, wearing number six at the moment. To the great disarray of us here in the commentary box. But quick thinking to get Denson on the way, just unable to capitalise for that penalty advantage. And now Blundells will have possession. Clarkson, the captain, picks from the base and carries hard through the first contact. Metzen goes over to support. Kick Cameron at nine, plays it off to Southgate, who's driven back. Metzen, Yap, Power, or Stewart even in the front row. Two formidable figures as Power drives over. Yap, well gathered by Maunder. And now here is Power, the try scorer, up over the gain line. Push there. Knocked on by the knock. Oh, it's just knocked on at the base by Metzen. That run of phases comes to an end. Off we go. Knocked on by the nine. Well, Blunder will still lead by the solitary point. Against Denston. Strath Allen in action on the other pitch up against Brighton College. Crouch! Bind! Set! Well, there's the feed by Denston. Ollie Booth plays it away. What a loose ball in midfield, and Blundells will look to capitalise as they pile on the pressure. A good tackle by Clover. Counter drive by Blundells, but Booth comes away with it. Through the forwards they go. Wusu in to lock down the breakdown. And Booth will go to the skies. Instead, plays at first receiver. Backwards. Blundells playing with it. Instead of clearing, risky stuff, but they're in their 22, looking to play with ball in hand. Use it! No now, no set. He's fine. Let's go! This time, Booth will clear. Excellent box, but only finds Rocky Prowse in the backfield, who skips away from one. Oh, through goes Prowse, gliding through the defenders. Prowse steps off his left. Dragged down inside the 22. Penalty There's no release from Denston, so the penalty goes penalty the way of Blundells. <laughs> well, First Rocky Prowse drives Blundells deep into the 22. First action, hands on floor. You're good there, thank you. And mate. once again, they will look to add three points through the vice captain, Lucas Yap. Well, Lucas Yap, whose father is the coach of this Blundell side. Questions raised if that affects his ability. Absolutely not. He's in this side on merit and merit alone. And Lucas Yap running the show for Blundell as he adds another three points. Well, Denston quick to get the game underway. Backwards. And they hook it into the wide channel, Backwards. spilled by Blundells, but they'll clean up and play from inside their 22. Backwards, says the referee. Push. Good work, White. Press! Retreat there. No, yeah, puts team. his long boot to the ball. It's a great clearance. Eaton in the backfield to collect. And beats the first defender, does Eaton. Taking on power, beats him too, but just spills. And it's a knock on, on by White. and Blundell's come away with it. Scrum down, Red Bull. Oh, Lucas Yap, big supporter of Taunton RFC. And a real standout in this game so far. Really composed rugby player. Described as an avid rugby player. Crouch. By his teammates. Bind. Set. Really showing an impressive string of maturity as Blundells have the scrum. Well, Clarkson looks to pick from the base. We'll have a reset instead. 
Mitchell. It's Mark. Now Clarkson, also deputy head of the school. Thank you, mate. At Blundells. <laughs> Been injured for almost a month in the run-up to this tournament, so uh, got a bit of catching up to do in terms of his fitness, but he's had an excellent game so far. Penalty advantage. Well, penalty goes one the way of Blundells from the scrub, and Clarkson's quick, keen straight. to get us back underway. But Yap will look for the corner. Post. Penalty then, and Yap will look to convert from halfway. What an impressive effort this would be. He's got the wind at his back, the number 10. I've got one and a half left on my clock, gents. But it would still be an excellent conversion if he can add the three from this way out. All the way out on this left-hand touch line, just inside the half. Yap will look to convert. And put Blundells further ahead of Denston. What a clean strike. But it's just 22. wide of the left hand upright. So 22 dropout is the call. Make sure they're behind you, mate. Make the sure they're behind continues you. continues to howl here at St Joseph's College. This time it worked against the young Blundells number 10. Linnett drives forward for Blundells, Metzen, this time carried by Power. Yap at first receiver finds Kit Cameron. Ripped in the tackle of Abbott. Well, it's been ripped, and away go Denston. Good carry by Ned Corey. Then the offload on Is halfway. It? Denston in possession. They trail to Blundells. Out the back they go. Long year. Carries up to halfway, but the penalty goes the way of the red and white. And Blundells containing Denson within their own half. This entire second half, it seems, has been played inside the territory of Denston. And the app taps and clears high and long. And that's game over. And in their first outing at the St. Joseph's College Festival, Blundells have put the impressive Denston side to bed. 11-7 the final score. A real statement for the new boys. A great result for them. Well, I'll hand over to Angus Savage in the interim to discuss the events here at St. Joseph's College. We'll be back live on Pitch One for another game very shortly. Well, the moment is almost here, isn't it? St. Joseph's College about to make their first appearance of the tournament. It is always huge. The tunnel is forming and it's new this year because we are turned around. Pitch two is now pitch one. Pitch one is pitch two and they're going to come charging right from behind us. We've got a busy, busy touchline. You're about to see some lovely jackets walking out in the background as well. St. Joseph's ready and raring to go. They're taking on Dulwich College. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Over on pitch two, by the way, don't forget about that one. The back-to-back -back champions, Millfield, are about to kick off against RGS Newcastle, looking for three in a row. First time since 2003. But here on pitch one, it is all about St. Joseph's College, and it is going to be absolutely ripping stuff we've got jackets we've got the tunnel we've got players ready to go they're going to come charging through we all remember when the likes of lewis ludlam and all of those guys came charging through here we're going to have a little walk through the tunnel in fact here we go charging through the tunnel let's hope the players don't catch up with this but this is what they are all going to experience in a couple of moments time we've got some excited boys here you looking forward to this yes i am very looking forward to it. <laughs> they cannot wait can they they're all buzzing and excited it gets older and older as we come through we're loving it are you excited yes 
Here we go, St. Joe's moments away from running out on here. We're going to come up to the drums in a second. It's going to go hammering through people of all ages. The players are getting closer and closer. We're about to get taken out in just a second. But we are ready and we are raring to go. Here are the subs. Dulwich are out on the field already. And the players are almost ready to come out as well. <laughs> the moment almost upon us. Over on pitch two, remember, for those of you that are interested, Millfield and RGS Newcastle are in action. The drum beating. Dulwich College, you can see in the background, ready to go. The tension is ramping up. Some great games already. Kirkham Grammar School have taken victory. Trinity, Hampton and Cheltenham College. But this is the moment. Could this be the time that St. Joseph's College take on the mantle of that 2013 group? They were led by Lewis Ludlam then. They took victory. A huge performance that was. And now, 10 years later, as they emerge from the tunnel, they look to rejoin that pantheon of St. Joseph's greats. Three times they've won this title, 95, 2010, 2013. Will they add 2023 to that list? Dulwich College, the first side up today to try and stop them. That was quite an entrance. And Wilfred Kemsley is going to talk you through this one live any second now. Thanks, Angus. Well, the drum is being beaten. The white wall of Dulwich faces the host side at Joseph's College. There's been murmurs of a real competition inbound. Of course, Angus Savage said on the podcast with Rob Stewart that this game really is the decider. Millfield and RGS Newcastle, and RGS Newcastle, who have not won a game all season, take place on pitch two. But Fergus Cherrington leads out the red and white. It's a beautiful kit this season, a real event, the unveiling of the kit for St. Joseph's College. A littering of South African stars within this St. Joseph's College side. A real roar in the crowd as, for the first time today, the hosts are in action in a crucial encounter against their old enemies, Dulwich. A well-established fixture in the schoolboy calendar. Raman Solomons with the kick to get us underway. A good take off, the kick off by Millinch. And St. Joe's in their home tournament. Kick off. Now Dulwich forced to exit following the kick off. In the wet weather, it will be gathered cleanly. And St. Joe's attack for the very first time. A great run by Lloyd Davis. He puts in the fend. Lloyd Davis could be over. The host could score. Driving away. The perfect start. St. Joseph's College sent the crowd into raptures. And James Lloyd Davis, from deep inside his own half, has opened the scoring. The perfect start for St. Joseph's College. There were murmurs of a real challenge this season. St. Joseph's College with the perfect start. That familiar chant of Joey's lingers in the crowd as Lloyd Davis openings the, opens the story. What a weekend this could be for those 25 young lads at St. Joseph's College. And the conversion as well. St. Joseph's College lead by seven. Dulwich immediately under pressure. It's been a tough start to the season for Dulwich School. They've got a really tough fixture list. They're an impressive side all the same. St. Joseph's College lead. Well, the kick is deep into the 22, and claimed 
by St. Joseph's College who are breaking through the tackles. Every carry supported by the home side. Great shot by Dulles to keep St. Joe's under pressure. Solomons will clear. Charge down! But one in the air by St. Joe's with possession in their 22. A nervous start. Solomons goes wide. It's a great carry from Liam Van Hoving. Loose ball, Solomons gathers, great step, and the offload too. St. Joe's with some risky play in their own half. Finally cleared by Jimmy Thompson, the co-captain. Now oh, Dulwich with ball in hand for really the first time in this game in a promising position. Through the forwards they go, a wonderful tackle. Josh Grig Pettit, the second of uh, the Grig Pettit family to compete at the rugby festival with a great shot, but Dulwich breaking down this right-hand side. Offload inside by uh, Nathan Feeler. Hector at nine finds Pickering. The ball's loose at the breakdown as the Joes come away with it. Thompson. Max Aguana with the offload to Russell Cox. Solomons. Smith. Good leg drive from Smith. Thompson. Looking for Max Aguana again. Icona Max Aguana with a good carry. Thompson with possession. It's been spilled at first receiver by the try scorer Lloyd Davis. So Dulwich will come away with it. Easy, easy. We're coming back for the scrum. No advantage. Well, tensions flare. Nice and easy, lads. Nice and easy. James Lloyd Davis letting his opposite man know he's there. But it will be a scrum in the way of Dulwich. Cartwright, Padrini and Beeson make up the front row for Dulwich. Up against Smith, Russell Cox and Max Guana, the South African. Crowd. Bind. Hector with the feed for Dulwich, who trail by seven to St. Joe's. The host with a lightning fast start. But St. Joseph's College get the shove on. And it's been knocked home on the base. A great turnover. Jubilation from the home side as they reclaim possession. Every drive, every tackle, every pass at this home tournament cheered on. An excellent crowd forming around the rim of this pitch, despite the weather. But it will be a scrum, this time with Jimmy Thompson, the vice, ca the uh, co-captain, sorry, to feed. Thompson, of course, in action at the last festival, now in his senior year, a real leader. Callum Hurst. Set. At number eight. And he will pick Hurst. Dragged down by a combination of no, Millinch no and Hector. But Thompson has it. Through the contact goes to Joes, over the gain line. It's been spilled, but only backwards by Greg Pettit, and Solomons looks to gather. But the first knock-on came from Dulwich, so St. Joseph's College in possession once more. Uh, Dulwich, of course, to another stalwart of the St. Joseph's College Festival. And some wonderful players in recent years. No more notable than Zach Carr, of course, try of the tournament two years ago. Still playing with England at under 21 level. Their most recent export. Clout. St. Joseph's College. We haven't won this tournament in coming up to Set. 10 years now. But Thompson. Great ball to find Van Hoving at first receiver, who's driving through the contact. Patterson goes wide. St. Joseph's College take contact on this short side. The drum is beaten. 
And Smith carries on no at first fits. receiver. Thompson dictating play. Solomons. Seguana dunks it out the back. Excellent move. And now St. Jones could be on the wraparound. McFarlane offloads it wide. McFarlane puts the chip in two. No, thank you. No, There's thank a bit you. of action on the floor. Back here. Line out. Well, the history of this fixture it's visible there, in the uh, the high tensions that run throughout both sides. Line out. It will be a line out and it will be Dulledge's ball following that little chip through. Good interplay between McFarlane and uh, uh, in that wide channel. Dulledge line out then. Claimed well by Pickering. And they go to the mall. That's one sideways. Dulledge rolling slowly onwards, eventually brought down. Jarman comes away with it. And Dulledge with the wind at their backs, clear long and far. It might run all the way. Well, it has in fact gone dead. And that is so unfortunate. It was uh, an Jones excellent the clearance. The scrum back. Okay, but of course, St. Joe's will opt for the scrum right Thank back you. on the 22. Right here, yeah? Just inside. Thank you. Well, it's really unfortunate for Dulledge and for uh, Ali Mully, who's an excellent clearance kick, but it rolled all the way past the dead ball line. A change for St. Joseph's College. Frank Christopher onto the field. St. Joseph's College scrum. On the 22. Stop, Crouch. Well, of course, being part of this festival squad, such a huge cultural Find. moment for St. Joseph's College. The festival assembly, Set. a statement, a real staple of the calendar. This tournament really is everything to the home side. And Solomon's out the back. It's a loose ball, excellently gathered by the, the try scorer. No the number damage. 15, Lloyd Davis. And now St. Joe's will build from the 22. Penalty goes the way of the hosts. Hold on, hold on, Dulledge hold on. really feeling the pressure of this home support. Whoa. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. Whoa. Easy, easy. Well, penalty goes the way of St. Joe's and uh, seven offside. Ryan Solomons, another one of the South African contingent, will nudge to the corner. The South Africans uh, coming from uh, from Bishop School, one of the top sides in South Africa. I'm sure they're getting used to the weather, if only slowly. Line out then, in a promising position. St. Joseph's College lead by seven against their old enemies in Dulwich. Yeah, no worries. Will be Rufus Ruffle, Russell Cox at hooker with the throw, whose brother, of course, played in the festival just a few years ago. A side really steeped in uh, tradition. Josh Grigg Pettit at five, of course, his brother George played in this tournament in 2019. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Fergus Cherrington in action last year, now as captain okay, watch on. with Jimmy Thompson. Russell Cox will throw. That's a good movement in the line out and they go to the ball. The ball is securely at the back and Sir Jones go rumbling on. It's been still going here. Sir Joseph's College have another. Callum Hurst with the score. Another one of the South African contingent has a try for St. Joseph's College and they double their advantage. Uh, it will be half time. And up comes that familiar be. chant once more, the host rolling on. Thank you. A great score for Callum Hurst. Well, Thompson with uh, responsibilities from the tee. It's a great strike. 
but it drifts to the right-hand side of the upright. Well, this is real textbook stuff from St. Joseph's College, a great mall formed. And I thought here the momentum had gone, but they kept on driving. Rufus Russell Cox desperate to grab that ball off Callum Hurst, but it was never coming his way. Huh? Uh, yes, please. Well, what a start for the host side. St. Joseph's College lead by 12 against old enemies Dulwich, a real staple of the tournament. And in a tough group with uh, Millfield and RGS High Newcastle facing off, RGS Newcastle facing off on the far pitch. St. Joseph's College are laying down a real statement at half time. Yeah, just the one. Well, the hosts are in action here at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Their opening fixture, and they lead by 12 unanswered points against Dulwich. In a group that also includes the record eight time champions, Millfield, searching for their third consecutive tournament win. If, if Millfield can go all the way, they'll be the first side since Colston School back in the 70s to win three tournaments on the bounce. But the hosts have plans to upset Millfield's ambitions and they're starting excellently well. They lead by 12. Dulwich, of course, have had a tough start to this season, but their fixture list is littered with some of the best schoolboy sides in the country. They'll have plenty more to offer in this second half, and Ali Mully will get us underway in the number 10 shirt. The whistle goes, and Mully kicks off, and St. Joseph's College will look to claim. Picked off by Dulwich, and Hector has it in the backfield. Lovely footwork by AJ at 15. Sorry, it's Tom Chamber at 15. Carried now by Peter Ash, the captain at flanker. Hector, Mully at first receiver. Lovely ball, shot by Maguana. Max Guana puts in a huge shot, Thank and it's a penalty for the host. Penalty. Just trust me, please. Thank you. Ikona Max Guana goes by 22 X. obstruction. It's like Oxen Che, another large, formidable South African. I'm sure there'll be mixed allegiances in this St. Joseph's College side as we watch the rugby this afternoon. But that's an excellent kick. And Dulwich are under pressure once on more. Five, Just don't engage. Despite the weather, an excellent crowd here at the St. Joseph's College Festival. And the hosts are in the Stay ascendancy. A line out just five metres shy of the Dulwich trial. And they already lead by 12 unanswered points. Another score here would really light up this crowd. It's a lovely line-out move claimed by Greg Pettit, and to the more they go. Well, they've broken, and now it's in the hands of Thompson. Another great carry. Driving on goes Liam Van Hoving. They're just a few inches short. Driving over the line, there's another score! St Joseph's College have a third. A great finish. And they're really in the ascendancy now. Dulwich with a mountain to climb in this second half. 
And Callum Hurst has a second try. A successful conversion. St. Joseph's College up by 19. Well, the ball broke, and it was a great pick by St. Joseph's College forwards. Van Hoving with a great carry. Quick ball, putting Dulwich under pressure, and then Hurst from only a few yards out, difficult to stop, driving straight over the breakdown. Clever play for the South African, and Dulwich will kick off again. Mully with a teasing kickoff, claimed well by uh, Ted Warner. And the host lead by 19, the biggest scoreline we've seen so far in the St. Joseph's College Festival. Thompson will clear. OK, and use nine. It's a great clearance, but it's straight out, unfortunately. So Dulwich will come back for the line out. Well, if they hope to get anything from this game, they have to score soon. Dulwich with just a great edge, opportunity, please, a line out just shy of the St. Joseph's College 22. In you come, please. Dulwich line out. As they look to upset the host, they trail by 19. They go short. Claimed well in the air by Pickering once more, and the ball is really rolling. Brought down. There was no one engaged from St. Joe. The possession no in the hands engaged. of Hector for Dulwich. Use, please. He's the captain, Peter Ash, with a strong carry. Over the ball goes St. Joe's. Illegally so, says the referee. Back here, back here. And Dulwich keen to get the game back underway. Here, Eight red, roll away. A great kick into the corner, and Dulwich have a real opportunity now to upset this home crowd. They trail by 19, time ticking away. The uh, score here. Captain, can we speed up getting in, please? They're right back in this fixture. Uh, Freddie Cartwright relays the messages to uh, Monty Pedrini. Up go Dulwich, claimed well by. Millinch, but line out. Thank you. not straight is the call by the referee. A, a difficult call for Dulwich because St. Joseph's College did not yep. compete in the line out. And when, Red when an opposing Luke. side doesn't compete, the referee tends to let play. But plenty of substitutes for St. Joe. Solomon's back onto the field, joined by Ollie Edwards and Tommy Rope as well. Oh, 19 points up, the, uh, the half rule in play, of course. Players selected within the side must play a certain amount of minutes as determined by the RFU at this level. So a chance for rotation, perhaps, as they lead by 19. They've got a scrum within their 22. Under a lot of pressure, the host. Set! Dulwich get the shove on, but they're unable to disrupt. And Joe's have pretty clean ball to play with from the base. It's a good carry by Frank Christopher. Solomon's clears. And it's a slip in the backfield, but no knock on. And Dulwich come right back with ball in hand. A great carry. They're past the 10 metre. Millinch lines up at first receiver, another good carry, they're over the gain line. Let go! Let go! Let go! Hector finds Mully. Out the back they go. It's chipped through. Michael EJ is the target, but the ball runs Ted and EJ runs right into the uh, gathering crowd of St. Joseph's White College supporters. Sorry, blue replacements. Um, fellas, your jackal is really good, but just clear the tackle first, please. As a Jay went chasing for that kick, it's certainly difficult to be pounded by all those uh, loyal St. And Joseph's up, followers. Where the West from. Well, just to let you know the run of the day, there'll and be a break after this. 
I believe, before our next round of group fixtures. But the rugby keeps coming all weekend. So don't go anywhere after this, of course. Trinity and Quakes Wakefield take to the field. But uh, from the line out, it's gone. It was loose. Dulwich held it, and then St. Joe's disrupted, and now they have possession once again. Let go! Let go! Dulwich over the ball, but the substitute nine, Ollie Edwards, plays it to first receiver, and that's a beautiful that kick. 50 like 22, perhaps. Yeah, thank you. It is indeed an excellent clearance. All right, Solomons, very successful with the boot. And suddenly, Rufus Russell Cox has a line out to throw on the 22 of Dulwich. Ready, we come. They lead by 19 with under 10 minutes to go. You'd really think this game is in the palm of St. Joseph's College hand. This was tipped by Angus Savage on the podcast as a real decider with Millfield, the strong favourites as they always are, currently taking on RGS Newcastle, who are yet to win this season. And if St. Joseph's College can lay down a marker here with a big victory, it would certainly pile the pressure on the other teams in their pools. Another carry by Liam Van Hoving everywhere today for St. Joseph's College. There's Antonin Super cleaning up for St. Joe's. Edwards, Solomons, spilled and hacked through advantage and claimed over. by Dulwich. No advantage. We come back for the first knock on. No advantage. Nice and easy lap. Cool. Two knock ons. And there's a, Sorry. We're there's a handbags once Sorry. again. Back over here. Really. Two knock ons. First by red, then by blue. Getting I was a bit quick in calling game. it over. Uh, just under for Dulwich. Uh, They've got a lot of work to do if they want to turn this game around. Actually, a pretty excellent carry by uh, off the mark, please. Hey, 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 behind the mark. Back, back. Charlie That's Dulwich set up again. Five to disrupt for some There's too much weight there. He came in front of the mark. Just stay behind the mark. But the scrum then. Scrums have been this really good. Rotated to Joseph's college side. Still plenty of first team players on the field. Sarvan Engeland at 14. As yet, Crouch. unseen oh. with the ball in hand. A dangerous Bind. young player. Set. <laughs> Nine. It's a matter of Dutch and South African in this St. Joseph's Jones. College team. And St. Joe's get the shove on to disrupt as well, but it's Dulwich ball. It's Jay. Chopped down by uh, Van Engelen. Penalty goes the way of Dulwich. No release. It's the call. Here, back here. 12 red, clear release. Uh, the ball's still live, not now. Now they can. Ali Mully kicks into the corner. Dulwich will have possession. Uh, both hands come around off the, the ball. Right mark stayed on the host and Joe's. Just there. Oh, the RGS Newcastle sporting their uh, black and red shirts this season. A change from their usual traditional red and white stripe. Up against Millfield, currently under pressure over on pitch two with a line out in their five meter. But over on pitch one, it's Dulwich who are unable to convert from the line out. And a simple knock on sends the crowd into raptures as the hosts reclaim possession once more. Cubby's catching it here. What's that? Is it not straight? Why is that? It's not straight, bro. Yeah, it's a muffle. And tell us we need to start behind the mark. We've had really good stuff. Keep it going. Cheltenham College, the new boys, live on pitch one at one o'clock. Trinity and Pokes Wakefield to come as well. The host, Joseph's College, with a huge game against Millfield. Scheduled at two o'clock, perhaps a touch later. They'll be back in action live on pitch Set. later on. And St. Joseph's College also closed today's rugby when they place RGS Newcastle at 4.30. But for now, Solomons clears his line. 50 22 on. Is back. Another 50 22 perhaps. An excellent kick. Ryan Solomons running the show for St. Joseph's College. More field possession, exactly what this home crowd are after. Rufus Russell Cox can barely believe his luck. The 50 22, such an integral part of the modern game, so difficult to execute. We've seen two of them from the hosts already as they continue to lead by 19 unanswered points. Searching yeah. for another try. Points difference can so often be a significant marker in this tournament. 
Oh, Dulwich looked to disrupt, Pickering with great work, but in the end it's Frank Christopher who gets his hand to the ball and St. Joe's come away with it. Edwards goes to the short side. Lawrence with the carry, Dulwich holding him up well. Milench is in there disrupting the back row. No advantage. Yeah. We come back for the knock on, an and that is full time. And it's over. The hopes have laid down a real marker here in what was tipped to be a crucial encounter in the upcoming to this competition. St. Joseph's College have led by 19 unanswered points and exactly what the home crowd are after. In the rain, in the wet, in the wind, the hosts are off to a flying start. An excellent win, 19-0 over Dulwich whose uh, difficult start to the season continues. They'll be back in action up against RGS Newcastle later with a chance for redemption. Well, there'll be a short break from the action now as the hosts soak up their home support. A jubilant crowd cheering on the uh, so far undefeated hosts in this tournament. A great start. And we'll be back very shortly for the continuation of the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival live on Next Gen here at Belstead Road.
Here the guys come uh, running through the Joe's Tunnel, led by Fred, um, looking very excited and ready to play. There's a great atmosphere building around the place. The guys look like they're ready to go and uh, very excited to play. We've got Mr. Reardon leading the team talk with Mr. Silver. Uh, come here, Cal. So it's great to see these under 11 starting to uh, put the stuff that we've been in doing in training into practice. Um, very excited to see how they get on today. We've uh, been doing a lot of work behind the scenes with these guys at break times, uh, lunch times, after school, during their school games. Um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they get on today. St. Joe's lose the toss and they are receiving first. We've got Oscar carrying the ball up the middle with a great carry. We talk about foot movement, moving the attackers. Now trying to move the ball to space. Good counter ruck there. Good counter ruck by St. Joe's. This is the sort of stuff that we work on on a Friday morning in our combat skills. Uh, looking at our ball presentation, our counter rucks, our tackle, our carrying to contact. Good line speed, great carry from the Felstead boy. Brave tackle from Oscar there. And they knock the ball on. Joe's looking to move the ball to space now. Counter-ruck from Felstead. And a penalty to St. Joe's for off their feet. Fred carrying it up the middle. We've got Oscar supporting. Rocco moving the ball to space. We've got Josh making a good run down the touchline. He's got support with Robin, Jonah. Good carry from Oscar. Rocco playing nine. Stan carrying it up the touchline. Good leg drive. Now looking to move the ball to space. Rocco cutting back on the inside, trying to find the weak defence. Great ball press. Again, all the stuff that we work on in our, in our combat skills, our game sessions. Good ball carry and 
We just get held up short of the line. Ball, the ball's out. Elsa turned the ball over on their own line. Now they're looking to play away. Great tackle from Rocco. And it is a scrum down St. Joe's ball. Good contest at the scrum. Fred has the ball. He's moving it to the space. Robin out wide, some good footwork, a great counter up from Felsted. <coughs> Josh moving the ball back inside, we're playing on. Henry with a big ball carry up the middle. Good offload, there's space on the right hand side. Let's see if we can see if Joe can utilize it. Josh with another good carry, good ball press, the ball is out. Stan with a great carry. Another great counter up by Felsted. And we've got a great run down the touchline by Felsted. The Joes guys are staying in touch and a try to Felsted. Kick off from Felsted. And a good tackle there. Rocco moving the ball to the space. There's a great carry up the middle. And there's a break by St. Joe's. Good movement. Now he's looking for support. Great cover defence by Felsted. Advantage to Felsted, and they'll go back for the scrum. And that's half time here at the under 11 St. Joe's versus Felsted. It's been a tight game so far. Uh, both teams looking to play expansive rugby and trying to move the ball to space. Felsted being a very physical team and counter-rucking very well. And we are back for the second half. Rocco to kick off for St. Joe's, Felsa to receive. Felsted looking to move the ball to space. St. Joe's recovering in defense. Good tackle from Rocco, rolling away. Fred's looking to Jackal there. And great pressure from Jonah. Joe's trying to move the ball to space. And the counter-ruck 
this time is not effective for, for Felstead. Uh, St. Joe's penalty for not rolling away. Great run from Robin, trying to find the space. St. Joe's get close to the line. And Josh moves the ball away. Rocco's going the long route round and he gets held up. A great tackle on the line by Felstead. And a knock on from Joe's. Very good defence there from Felstead. Looking to launch a counter attack. Some brave tackling there from St. Joe's. A high tackle, unfortunately. So penalty Felstead. Some brave tackles from St. Joe's, but bouncing off. We've got Josh with a last gasp tackle, and he tackles the Felsted player into touch. St. Joe's guys are around him celebrating. We've got a free tap. Lots of space on the left hand side. Let's see if Joe's can utilize that. Some really good counter rocking there by Felsted. And Fred has just turned the ball over on our line. Robin has got the ball. Great carry there. And another great counter right there by Felsted. Seems like that's a, a big ploy this game is to target the breakdown. Advantage to St. Joe's. Brilliant offloading there from St. Joe's. We've got some great carrying. Josh up the middle. There's a lot of space on that left hand side. See if St. Joe's. Another great counter up there from Felsted. That counter ruck seems to be stopping the momentum for St. Joe's and not allowing them to, to move the ball to width. Now they're starting to move the ball. Uh, knock on in the midfield. And brave defence from St. Joe's in the midfield. Felsted still on the ball. The Joe's defence is going forward. Forcing the, forcing the offloads. And that's a great carry from Felsted. St. Joe's working very hard there to turn the ball over. There's space on the right-hand side if they can use it. And Fred's on the ball. We've got a big physical carry going around the touchline. Some brave tackling from Felsted. Stands over the ball. Robin moves it. There's space out wide. Noah is carrying very hard through the middle. There's still space out wide if he can find the pass or the offload. He's now been held up. And a great counter ruck again by Felsted. The ball's been played if he can pass it. Another good carry. George down the touchline. There's some great tackling going on by Felsted. Some footwork from Rocco there. There's space on the right-hand side. If they can just move it there. Robin moved the ball. And again, great defence from the Felster team. Making it tricky there for St. Joe's. A great competition at break, uh, the breakdown time. The defence from St. Joe's, they're going forward. Fred turns the ball over and scores the try for St. Joe's. Some great defence there, some great line speed leading to a turnover. 
Fred capitalises on it and scores the try for St Joe's. Again, some great pressure there, some good go forward from St. Joe's. The Felser player stays on his feet. And a turnover for St. Joe's. Back for the scrum for the knock on. Great competition at scrum time. They choose to go left. A bobbling ball Rocco picks up off the floor. And a big counter ruck from Felsted and they've been turned over. Ripped in the tackle. Stan with a brave tackle in midfield. We talk about the ring of steel. He has wrapped his man up there. Good competition at the breakdown there. St. Joe's turned them over. There's space on the left-hand side and they've moved it there. Robin carries up on the edge. George gets to the breakdown. The ball is available. Great competition at the breakdown there. Penalty to St. Joe's. There is space on the right-hand side if they can communicate it in. Josh goes for a run through the middle. He's got support from Fred. Fred with a great clear out. And the space is on the right-hand side. They're moving the ball. Great pick up. Stan, oh, Stan runs into touch. Great movement of the ball. And that is the end of the game. A great competition from two teams. Uh, very evenly matched. And a great game to watch. to the uh, visitors sort of information point and it's a black Nike overall so that will be at the visitors information point found in the entrance of the English block. So this is it, it's an information point.
just a reminder that the um, Innocent Problems for the Into the Elevens for entertaining us. That's really um, lovely and fantastic to see that enthusiasm at that age and also the quality of rugby. Um, staff and parents, you should be very proud and well done. They've done uh, well in front of a, a large crowd. Thank you all for your support. Trinity versus Craigsway Field on pitch two, Brooks Church and Hamilton. Um, so that's pitch one, Trinity and Craigsway Field, pitch two, Brooks Church and Hamilton. Players will be ready for those games. Well, sort of now, really. I know we were a few minutes late, but I can't be a precise time because we were a few minutes late, but we could be ready for those. So those could commence straight after uh, this, um, maybe it's this section of the next uh, under 11s tournament. Thank you. Point out that in the program, uh, it does give information on those schools and teams involved in the tournament. Um, 
Somebody from the Mini's organisation would let me know details. Come on, let me know details. I will definitely read down scores of the various games and so on and so forth. So, somebody from the Mini's, if you'd like to do that, I will welcome you happily and then do that. Thank you. Well, how good was that? The under 11s showing us what they're all about. And that's all about inspiring the next generation of uh, festival players in this under 18 competition that we're about to return to for the years to come. Now we're back to group one. We've done a full work through of uh, every single group's first round games this morning. Now it's back to group one. Everyone's had a bit of lunch. They've had a coffee. Everyone's feeling good and a bit warmer. The rain's gone. The wind has died down. It's happy days. And we're with Trinity against Quakes Wakefield. Trinity won the their opener, Queggs Wakefield lost their opener, so for Queggs, this is an all or nothing game, win it, and they've got a big chance of going through to the trophy quarterfinals tomorrow, lose it, they're almost certainly going to be in those bowl quarterfinals instead, for Trinity victory means they are definitely through to those trophy semi uh, quarterfinals defeat, suddenly it's all in the balance again, that is the nature of the St Joseph's Festival, it is so so tight, every single game matters so much, so this one's going to be a cracker over on pitch two by the way, just in case you uh, happen to be a fan of either of these two, Whitchurch High School and Hampton have already kicked off so if you're from Hampton or Whitchurch High School or just have an interest in either, do jump over to pitch two, here on pitch one though Trinity against Queggs Wakefield Trinity remember, got to the final last year, Queggs Wakefield they won the title way back in 1997. They need a victory if they are going to achieve that again here in 2023. Trinity are going to be a hard side to stop, though. We're going to head over to join Will in just a second as kickoff is just about ready. The 
beyond that. Okay, keep your players behind you. Welcome back then, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else to the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. We're back for the second round of group fixtures. It's Queggs Wakefield up against Trinities of Croydon. Trinity have kicked off and have driven Queggs deep into their 22. Well, Trinity, of course, we saw in action in our opening fixture. They won 7-3 in that game, and now they're starting brightly as they dart towards that right-hand side. But it's a great tackle by Gibson. High tackle is the call. And Trinity are in the ascendancy early on. Broom with a strong carry. They're Singh of Quinns at first receiver. Into the backfield they go via Leon. Still playing with quick ball. Here's the carry from Asambe. What a bright start this is for Trinity as they drive towards the line. The forwards in narrowed, looking for that early advantage. Pick to the left-hand side. There's the offload, there's the score. And Trinity open their account in this afternoon session. And they've started brightly in their second game here on pitch one. Well, it's a good score to open the day for Trinity. They kept the pressure on in those early stages. And Harry Webzell, the under-16 star, making his senior debut in this competition with the score. Trinity, of course, already in action today, as uh, Angus alluded to. Thanks, Wakefield defeated in their opening fixture. And uh, once again, it will be Samson Goldschmied to add the extras, and that he does. Trinity won 7-3 over uh, inspired Whitchurch, while Hampton overtook Queggs Wakefield by 11 points to three. So Queggs in with a fighting chance if they can come away with a victory here. If not, it will be Trinity progressing to the cup competition. Queggs get us back underway. Oliver Smith with the kickoff, and it's into the wide channels, and Trinity, deep in their own half, will look to play with ball in hand. Wind still blowing here at St. Joseph's College. Elstead Road a buzz with uh, rugby players, support staff, parents and teachers alike as uh, Quentz Wakefield regather. Inside Trinity's half, great line speed, but a wonderful hard line. Craig's Wakefield with ball in hand for really the first time today. High tackle is the call, and there's also hands in the breakdown there. So we'll come back for the penalty. Really excellent kickoff from Smith to pin Trinity back, and now they're going for posts as well. Oliver Smith. Really backs himself from this range. As they look to get themselves back into the game. Seven points, Trinity lead. A converted penalty will level the uh, earlier score from today. 7-3, Trinity came up against Whitchurch. Over on the other pitch, of course, it's Wellington looking for their second victory against the Welsh side. Well, this would be a really impressive effort from a long way out. A real hush over the crowd here at St. Joseph's College. What a clean strike, it's an excellent kick. What an excellent conversion by Smith and Queggs Wakefield. Their substitution bench below us here, lifted by that score and Trinity with some work to do. Okay, when you're ready, ten. Well, it will be uh, 
Trinity to get us back underway. Louis Harrison Ricks with the kickoff. Option scrum but or kick. Not ten is the call. No, option scrum or kick. Not exactly the start that Trinity scrum needed call. to the uh, resumption in play. Trinity will scrum down. Well, oh, Temi Asambe, Quinn Singh, and Jacob Broom certainly have the weight. Get your shoulder through, okay? On Quokes Wakefield, Dobson and Hayward in the front row. Crunch! Jack Lawrence, the vice captain, to feed this scrum. Set! Hold now! It's a great scrum from Trinity as they look to disrupt. Picked at the base by Bailey. Tackle release, 19 release! Look to resume some order in their back line. On a Dale play scrum half in that run, and now it's. Quokes Wakefield hands once more. Smith to hook it downtown. Only as far as Omar Leon. Little show and go from Leon. Skips through the first tackle. Eventually dragged down by Cochrane, who you may recognise from our commentary last year, back at the St Joseph's College Festival, Dan Cochrane. Yeah, Harrison good. Ricks was searching for Samson Goldschmied, but the kick has gone straight out. So that'll be the end yeah, to a promising attack. No more Leon, another player who's back at the St Joseph's College Festival. Looks really impressive in that fullback role. Line out then for Quirks Wakefield, who trail by seven points to three. It's an yeah. early lift by we'll Trinity, so it's claimed in the air by Wakefield, and now away come Quirks. Harrison Ricks over the ball. No turnover, so Quirks play inside their own half, spilled by Smith, and away come Trinity. There's the offload, but it's a forward pass for the dismay of Harry Webzell, try scorer, of course, in this first half. A change of hands once more then, and uh, Quokes Wakefield will have some defending to do. Over to my right-hand side, Kirkham in their warm-up ahead of their next fixture. Live here on uh, Next Gen 15 at the St Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Is of course, live on pitch one, RGS High Wickham against Cheltenham College. Cheltenham College, of course, with that excellent victory, 7-6 against uh, Hampton, a scoreline that uh, perhaps none predicted for the new boys, but Trinity have a free kick from the scrum. And they've run it hard at first receiver, Webb's L carries into contact. Chris Pauling is at scrum half. For Trinity, another on his first 11 debut at St. Joe's. Really in the ascendancy, Trinity. What a shot that is by Wakefield, but unfortunately just too high. The defence from the northern side, great representation at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Really important to advertise schoolboy rugby up and down the country, as Next Gen, of course, does so well. Chipped into the corner then by Harrison Ricks. Eight. Just keep down your contact was up here, okay? Brand new to the school this the year, the fly half. Well, this is a great opportunity for Trinity to extend their advantage. They currently lead by four. Well, there's plenty to pick out. And they do go to Isaiah Apara, really impressive in last year's tournament, and they crumble towards the line. And that's the score. And Trinity have their second. And it's Quinn Singh, the Harlequins under 18 forward, a star of last year's National Cup final. He has a try at the St. Joseph's College Festival, and Trinity extend their advantage.
Well, it was a simple enough score in the end. Textbook for a hooker of Singh's quality to roll over with them all. A feature of this tournament so far, plenty of sides going to the mall as a platform. Some real maturity amongst these sides. Goldschmied will look to add the extras from far out on that right-hand side for Trinity in front of uh, plenty of onlooking supporters. Busy day here at St. Joseph's College. Goldschmied hangs in the wind, but it's an excellent conversion. And he has another, it's 14-3 that Trinity now lead. Well, the wind was blowing against him, but Goldschmied put enough on it, and that's a great advantage. All of these points so crucial in these short formatted games. Quick Wakefield with an 11-point deficit to make up now as Smith kicks us off. Well, it's deep into the backfield, spilt but only backwards, and perhaps Trinity will look to play from here as Webzell breaking through the tackles, flicks it out the back door, and now Trinity have got a bit of momentum. Singh with a try scorer, little show and go, and then lifts the offload. Farrell puts it to the boot. Gathered cleanly in the end by Queggs Wakefield. A good take by Will Heath, the uh, vice captain. And now they'll hack it downfield. What a break by Trinity. Jack Vass, with ball in hand in the backfield, puts it to toe. A lovely weighted kick in search of Goldschmied, who will gather. And he'll look to take on this Wakefield defence. In goes Gibson with the tackle. Gibson, great work at the breakdown, but hands in the ruck. Penalty, Trinity. What a beautifully weighted kick by Vass. Goldschmied everywhere today. Jack Vass, another one new to the school this year. On his way back from injury. Great to see him back out on the field. And you feel that uh, this forward pack licking their lips at the opportunity of another five metre drive. Currently lead by 14 to three. A win here will surely see Trinity into the cup competition where a school of their prowess deserves to be. One more game, of course, against tournament stalwarts Hampton. Well, it's an overthrown line out and Wakefield will come away with it. And right away they go to the boot. A beautiful spiralled kick as Trinity in retreat. Isa Miller assessing his options, puts it to the toe. It'll drop kindly for Queggs. Got a broken field to run into. Great line speed from Trinity to shut down this attack. And the forwards finally set. Excellent offload. And Quex Wakefield looks to break with a bit of momentum. That's a wonderful run by Hunter. The vice captain making plenty of yards. And once again, there are forward runners off of 10. It's just been spilt. And Jack Bailey, who threw that beautiful offload to get Quex Wakefield underway, unfortunately can't hold on to it. Half time in our resumption of play here at the St. Joseph's College Festival in a crucial game for Quags Wakefield. They currently trail by 14 to three against last year's finalists, Trinity. Trinity without a few of their star players for injury, yet they've got things working today through their forward pack. A great score by Quinn Singh and an excellent try by the under 16 Harry Webzell separates the two sides. We'll be back very shortly for the second half, live here with Next Gen at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival.
Well, the second half beckons here at our resumption of play at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Trinity looking to secure their place in the cup competition as they lead 14-3 over Quakes Wakefield, who is staring down the barrel of another cup exit. There's plenty more rugby to come. RGS High Wickham, who were very impressive, even in their eventual defeat early on, to uh, Kirkham are up against Cheltenham College who secured a surprise victory against Wellington. Wellington of course finalists uh, in their first year led by Finn Baxter the now Harlequins front row back at the tournament and on the back of a loss they've got a huge game over on pitch two up against Kirkham but Cheltenham College could be steaming into the cup competition in their first iteration at the St Joseph's College Festival the result of that will be after the second half here, live. Quakes Wakefield fighting to survive in the cup competition up against last year's finalist Trinity, who have had a rocky start to the season, but are looking to get things back on track. Live here with Next Gen on pitch one from Belstead Road. Are you ready? Keep your players behind you, goal. Smith to get us underway, who nailed a, a, con, a penalty conversion all the way back on halfway in that first half. Kicks deep. But it's been returned by Trinity with some interest as well. It's been touched. It's been touched, gents. Line out then for Quirks Wakefield as they look to get their second half on track. Currently trail by 14 to 3. Back 10, please. Bit of trickery in the line out as they go to the back. A little dummy, hold, hold. two dummies, in fact. Excellent work from the line out. And they find willing runners off first receiver Jack Bailey at number eight with another good carry. And Smith puts it to the boot low and drives it along the grass, and it'll be returned by Harrison Ricks. Smith again with ball in hand. This time it's straight oh, it's out, touched. unfortunately, and suddenly Quegg's Wakefield are under a bit of pressure. Put, put Quegg's on the edge of the line. God, this is yours. Line out then for Trinity, deep in Quegg's Wakefield territory, on, looking to see off the game. Dead's back, ten, Currently lead by two off. tries to just the one sole oh, penalty. Oh, oh. Converted impressively enough from halfway. O'Para, the line out lead, of course. Knocked on, unfortunately, so Quakes Wakefield come away with it. Spits out the back of the breakdown and they're forced to carry under a bit of pressure, but now looking to exit. Good clearance, finds grass. Been touched, gents. Trinity looked to play it quickly, Touch but it was uh, off pass. the uh, substitutes on the sidelines. We'll come back for a line out. Good clearance by Quirks Wakefield. They've repelled Trinity this time around. Yeah, just hold them. And Opara leads the line out once more. A real leader, the vice captain. Short, there he go. A clever little line out move, but it spits out unkindly to Trinity. Numbers. And it's a free kick, unfortunately. Quirks Wakefield with incorrect numbers and off go Trinity. Watch height. A huge clear out in that breakdown. So Trinity have quick ball to play with. To the toe they go. There's good coverage in the backfield. It spits up for Trinity. Going back for Playing with penalty advantage. Mature play yep. from the uh, blue and white. Go on, go on, go on. So unfortunate to lose to Millfield in that uh, final. You'll remember that beautiful try set up by Timmings of Millfield. The new guard in that famous old jersey of green and red are representing Millfield. They had a big win against Newcastle, 22-5. Newcastle are still searching for their first win of the season. They're up against the host of Joseph's College sides. later on this afternoon. You're not in on in the line. Promises to be a cracking fixture live on pitch one. For now, though, Trinity with a line out just five metres short. 
they scored from a similar position. Up goes Opara. Maul is formed. The ball is at the back. And Trinity are looking to drive on. There's the second shove. They break away. They will score. It's a great try. Cheers for the call, Justin. And Trinity are up by 19 to 3 now. It's the substitute hooker who's done it. Reese McCarthy. I'm always the line. Well, Ozzy Edwards, pretty, okay? in fact, new to the school. Ozzy Edwards in his blank shirt has come on as hooker and flanker, very versatile player, and he scored in his first appearance of the day. Ozzy Edwards, another new intake to Trinity, has apparently made a great impact into the squad, according to their support staff. Samson Goldschmied then, clinical off the tee so far, looking for his third conversion of the day. With the wind at his back. Yep. It's an excellent kick. And Trinity have racked up the most points of the day, of, on pitch one at least with a 21-3 lead over Quiggs Wakefield, who have got a real mountain to climb to keep their cup hopes alive. Smith, hey, when to ready, get us in. underway. <laughs> well, into the backfield go Trinity. Charge down from the clearance. It's all on, it's a play. Backwards. Backwards is the call, so... They'll still play with ball in hand. No offside, because the ball was touched in flight by a Quiggs Wakefield player. Stay back, Pete. Good counter drive from Quiggs, but Trinity play away and carry into contact. Well, that was tipped past the vertical. And uh, off. Oscar Sweeney could be in trouble there. Walk away. Time's off. Time is off, calls the referee, because that was a... Jesse, come to you. Not a particularly encouraging looking uh, tackle so what there. Got, well, I can see his legs have been lifted behind me. Yeah. What do you got for me? Discussion of the AR. Control. Yep, landed. Um, landed on shoulder. I don't okay. Know. I don't need you yet, please. Fair number. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Need 16. 16. Wilcox. Wilcox, come here. Wilcox. Wilcox, come here. 16, off you go. What is it called for? Right. Take tackle. We're not taking back. Back 10, please, gents. Go, go, go. Well, tip past the vertical, so. Uh, a penalty for Quakes Wakefield, a lifeline, really, given the fact that they trail by 21 yeah, points to three. If you're not in, on the line, please. Five called. Line out then, just five metres shy. In, Let's go, Gold. Well, it's one in the air, but not cleanly, and Trinity come away with it. They might be a man down following the yellow card, but they have possession and they'll look to exit. Full on, binds, please, back Chris foot, Pauling back foot. with the box clearance. Smith's in the backfield and has ball in hand and returns that kick, yes, slicing it to the wide right-hand side. It's a lovely kick, but straight out is the call. So unfortunate. It looked to be a lovely weighted nudge from uh, Oliver Smith, but unfortunately just here. trickled beyond the touchline before hitting yep, the ground. Them. Not out is the call. Trinity line out. There's yours, Gold. Well, Trinity have done very well to escape. And now they'll look to build on this uh, possession within their opposition half. A player down, but always dangerous. Up goes Apara, the throw is loose. It was knocked on. Makes Wakefield with a scrum advantage. They'll go through forward carriers. Tackle release, Blue! Slow ball then. The Quags. Up come the uh, back line as they chase this box kick. And it's straight out again, unfortunately. Quags Wakefield 
just unable to uh, capitalise off these turnovers in play. And it's another Trinity line-out. We're back where we started, perhaps. Blue, take a step. Gold, step up, move onto the mark. Keep coming up, Gold. There you are. Well, live for you up next, of course. Rogers Hay Wickham take on Cheltenham College. But for now, Trinity, with their commanding lead over Quake Wakefield, are looking to extend. Advantage high. Penalty yeah, advantage penalty the it. way of the blue and white. Number two. High and hands in two. Well, high tackle and hands in the ruck, so uh, Trinity keen to get us underway as quickly as possible. Hands out, seven! Got a release for me. Good counter drive from Quags Wakefield. Side entry. No number, side entry. And the penalty is one. Smith wastes no time in clearing off field. Blue, the line's yours. Well, line's yours, the Blue, game okay. may well be on to Quags Wakefield, but of course there is still rugby to be played. Come tomorrow, we split into the cup competition and the plate competition as well for those third and fourth place teams. Plenty of rugby and silverware up for grabs for every side in this competition. Free kick five. goes against Wakefield. Free kick Wasteful here, in possession once From again. The mark, please, gents. It's free kick. Unfortunate, really. It's taken a lot of the sting out of this uh, talented Quags Wakefield side that they've been unable to hold on to the ball. Marks on the cross, okay, gents. You can hear the frustration on the touchline. Crouch! Scrum for Trinity. Bind! Called the scrum from the free kick. They're back their set piece, perhaps something special coming from this talented Trinity side. They go to the boot, a spiralled effort. Smith is back to cover, and an excellent gather as well. And a low, flat kick into the backfield. Here on our stream, the wind still howling here at uh, St Joseph's College. Forearm. Yeah. And Quakes Wakefield have the penalty from deep. They're only 10 metres out and they'll tap quickly. A little show and go Sorry. by Ed Hunter. Not 10 is the call, so Cheltenham have a penalty advantage. Sorry, uh, Quakes Wakefield have a penalty advantage. Tackle release, blue! Driving towards the line. How quickly things can change at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Hard line once again from Cocke. And now they go wide. Smith. Connor Dale hangs it up wide. There's a hand in there. We could see another card here. Dan Cocke with a good carry and then wide they go. But nothing for penalty try. So yellow card. I think the other one can come back on. 21. Well, just as Trinity are returned to a full complement, they're going to deliberate lose another Brock. player. Brock. It's a deliberate knock-on. Trinity reduced to 14, just as they returned to 15. And it's another penalty up. in the red 21. zone that Quakes Wakefield simply must capitalise from. Well, they'll go for the tap penalty and take it up the jumper through Bailey. Picked at the base once more. Well, there's a bit of space on that right-hand side, but uh, Wakefield will look to exploit. Good carry. They drive ever closer. Wakefield only inches away. And now they go to the right-hand side, driving towards the line. Quakes Wakefield inches away. Trinity have the turnover. And the last embers of the Quakes Wakefield fire are time. Back ten, please. slowly ebbing away. He's got a last play. Yeah, yeah. Please. Game over, and Trinity have taken a huge step towards cup 
qualification. It is completely in their hands, while Queggs will return tomorrow and play plate rugby instead. A clinical performance, despite being down for 14, so for almost the entire second half, Trinity have done excellently well to win the game. 21-3, the final result. RGS High Wickham back in action on pitch one following their spirited performance against Kirkham. Up against the new boys, Cheltenham College, looking for their second win after their very impressive victory against Wellington in their opening fixture. We're live on pitch one of the St. Joseph's College Festival, back in a moment for this huge game. Well, we're live at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. It's the new boys, Cheltenham College, who take on RGS High Wycombe. High Wycombe looking for their first win of the competition after they fell in the uh, first game to Kirkham. Cheltenham College looking for their second win. Alongside me, Will Stace. Welcome back to the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival, Will. Been a long time. After a year. And a Only. ball flying over towards us. But no, glad to be back. Excited to be on pitch one. The new pitch one, the new look rugby festival. It's great to be here. Absolutely, yeah. That uh, subtle change to the formatting. If you're thinking that pitch one doesn't look the same as it has in previous years, they've switched round the uh, the format this year. So pitch one has become pitch two. Pitch two has become pitch one. Uh, that's a change that St. Joseph's College implemented. So nothing to affect your stream and the schedule. Don't worry about that. Any insight into that decision, Will? Uh, everything sort of needed a, a reshift and a, a rejiggle, but it's great to see um, sort of this new start, new, more food stands, more concessions. Everything has got bigger and bigger each year, more screens. So the festival's always improving, constantly improving. It's great to see. Um, it's all just part of it. That moving pitches is just one part of a, of a big project here. Well, Cheltenham College with the scrum feed in these early stages. Uh... <laughs> Really huge win over Wellington and an unexpected win over Wellington who now find themselves grappling for cup competition rugby as they play Kirkham and RGS High Wickham pouncing on the loose ball and it will go dead. These uh, short dead balls leave no space for error but the ball will eventually fall for High Wickham will come back for a scrum advantage. How have you found the rugby so far? It's been a really high standard this year, Will. Yeah, it's, it's gone up another level. It's great to see so many talented rugby players here at St. Joe's and the new additions of teams. They're, they're making their way into the competition nicely. It's great to see Blundell's also playing well, as well as Cheltenham, the new boys. Well, it will be a uh, 22 dropout following the ball going dead off the boot of a high wicking player and it's hooked high into this uh, overcast sky. Bit of a mix-up between High Wycombe's centres, but they will carry away. Huge tackle. But High Wycombe still in possession. There's a great carry up to halfway. Over the ball goes Cheltenham again. Excellent work by RGS High Wycombe to retain possession. And then the 50-22, they look to kick it high and far with the wind at their backs and it's an excellent kick right into the red zone 
and RGS High Wycombe will have possession from the line-out. The 50-22 has been a key part to a lot of these games so far. I, mean, I mentioned St. Joe's and Ryan Solomon's, the number 10 for the Red and White Army. He's got an absolute boot on him, and it's been utilised so much more. It's great to see kicking being a strong part of the game for a lot of the good sides here, and brilliant position for High Wycombe to come from. Well, it's a quick move at the line out. They fold away. RGS High Wycombe could be over. Held up is the call, and Cheltenham College survive. Great and great pace injected into the attack by High Wycombe. Unfortunate not to come away with the spoils, but uh, once again, Cheltenham forced to clear from deep inside their own half. The new boys under a bit of pressure following their huge victory in the first game. Cannot be uh, understated how impressive it is to see off Wellington at a tournament that they have so much joy in. Yeah, well, Wellington, one of the big sides, aren't they? And a lot of chat about them being close to becoming winners, so a big win in the first game, and great to see them Cheltenham defending College. Well. Cheltenham College over the ball looking to steal, but High Wickham instead carry into the 22. Ferocious defending from the black and red. Great line speed once more. High Wickham still on the 22. Now they'll play in the playground with the backs. A lovely step to beat the first defender. Offloading contact. But they haven't extended beyond the 22 just yet. Back the short side they go. Once again, chopped on the gain line. And now the forward carriers. Great line speed by Cheltenham College. Picked at the base. And now there's a bit of space in behind. Little show and go. RGS High Wycombe creeping ever closer. Another little show and go from the number nine. A pick and go this time. And through the forwards they'll play. Just five metres short. Quick ball at the breakdown. Over go High Wycombe. But it's spilled. Inches away, but the ball was dropped just as High Wycombe descended on the try line. Feels like they're doing everything but just get that ball over the line. It's some brilliant attacking play, but you just feel that the number 10 there could have got it out wide and they would have been in for the first score of the game. But High Wycombe are playing very, very well. Opportunistic stuff from the uh, High Wycombe second row, but just unable to keep hold of the ball. A victory here for High Wycombe would really open up this group. There's some interesting groups today. Like we've we've seen some brilliant competition, and I feel that the groups have been drawn perfectly. We've seen some brilliant competition, and in the second or third games of these groups, we'll see some anticipation and drama as uh, the positions get decided. And how about that uh, huge victory for the hosts over Dulwich? Will on the sideline celebrating with the boys. I mean, I can't really control myself. It's absolutely brilliant to be back here as Norbert Feldian and see so many familiar faces, see family, see friends, see staff, and just enjoying the rugby on the pitch and to see St. Joe's back in the red and white. And it's a brilliant kit this year. Shout out to SDC and all they do for, for kits around rugby world. But no, it's incredible, isn't it? See the South African in, influx of players, but the continuous of St. Joe's boys striving to be the best on the pitch. and. What a performance it was. Well, we're pausing for the moment as a Cheltenham College player is on the deck, but we will be back underway shortly. It'll be a scrum to Cheltenham College right on their five metre after High Wycombe spilled it forward inches away from scoring. But High Wycombe looking for their first victory following their defeat to Kirkham. And the game on pitch two, an absolute cracker, Will, between uh, Wellington, who were defeated by Cheltenham, and Kirkham who won 13-5 later in the day. I mean, their two sides have also been spoken of trying to go the full distance. This is a brilliant, brilliant group. And I don't know how this one will finish over on pitch one, but pitch two as well has got some drama for you. Next gen, bringing it all to you live. So definitely stay tuned throughout the day. An absolute cracker up next, Denston Brighton. Two huge names in the schoolboy circuit. Uh, Brighton College with a nil-nil draw to Scottish side Strath Allen in their opening game. So a real game for the purists. Whereas Denston were defeated by Blundells, the new boys, who will be taking on Strath Allen on pitch two at the same time. 
And then after Denston Brighton, well, it's a fixture as old as rugby itself. Millfield and St. Joseph's College live here on pitch one. The hosts looking for their second victory, taking on the ever favourites Millfield, who racked up a 22-5 victory over RGS Newcastle earlier in the day. There was talk of Millfield not being as strong as they usually are, which still makes them one of the best teams in the country looking for their third consecutive St. Joseph's College Festival. They'll be the first side to do that since the 1970s, when Collegiate School, formerly known as Colston's, came down and won back to back to back. A huge game, Will. Yeah, Millfield last year was spoken about as being a little bit weaker than the year before, then they go out and win it. So never write off Millfield, but that's a huge game. You think about nine years ago, that final in 2014, 8-7 it finished, one point away from St. Joe's lifting back-to-back -back De Salle trophies. Didn't go their way. Millfield lifted it. So there's a lot of history in this fixture, especially here at the St. Joseph's College National Schools Rugby Festival. It's an iconic fixture and something I'm very much looking forward to. Plenty of rugby to come. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult time at the moment on, on, on pitch one. As a Cheltenham College player receiving some treatment. We do hope they are comfortable and they will be uh, removed from the field in, in time when it is appropriate to do so. And we will be back live as soon as uh, the injured player is removed with caution and care as is required. Gives us a chance to say a massive thank you to all the medics and staff here who worked so brilliantly over the weekend, keeping everyone safe and making sure all is okay on the field and off the field. Well, let's talk about this Millfield side as they're uh, up on pitch one very shortly. Stefan Emmanuel, who slotted the eventual winning points back as captain of Millfield, the Welsh under 18, also with Bath. What a frightening centre partnership there with uh, Stubbings as well. Yeah, it's a brilliant side, it really is. But there's a lot of new names. It really is a side that I went not recognise last year. A huge team full of year 13s with experience from the year before. So it's great to see sort of new look Millfield. A nice name in there, Eddie Lloyd, making his return to St. Joe's. Um, I'm sure there'll be a good fun time for him out on pitch one playing his old side. Eddie Law, the former St. Joseph's College student, back at his home festival. But there's plenty of players in there to be feared. Henry Bonetti, the Bath hooker, as well as Alex Deering, the Bath second row. Ben Morrow of Saracens in the fullback position. And St. Joseph's College, plenty to be said about their uh, side this year, including some very impressive South African contingents and some very impressive Dutch players as well. It's a lovely uh, continental feel to this St. Joseph's College side. It's a great mix, and we also think about it. Last year we had around almost in the, in the double digits of year 11s in the, in the first 15, and they got the experience to come out here as year 12s and look like the most experienced men on the pitch. And to think we've got another year of them next year, everything is just so exciting when you talk about St. Joe's rugby. It's a new era, it's a new formed style of rugby as well. It's always progressive, it's always attacking. And a big shout out to Roland Winter and his team for all the work they've done this season. And what a way to start it and get the festival underway for the red and white. Brighton College then in action, of course, on pitch one. Up next after this game between High Wycombe and Cheltenham, which has just been uh, paused for an injury concern. Brighton operating with uh, three vice, four vice captains, sorry, alongside captain and number eight, James Davies. Big boots to fill, of course, Smith of Brighton. Not Marcus, not his brother. The third Smith, the unrelated Smith, uh, one of the players of the tournament last year for Brighton at number eight, replaced by James Davies, the captain. Yeah, Brighton didn't have the tournament they would have wanted last year. It was quite a tough festival for them. Didn't make it through to the second day, top of the group. Um, they, they finished third in their groups. So they missed out on De La Salle Cup Rugby, which is a big loss for them. So this year it will be about making that comeback and showing the side they are. They have the pedigree. They are so experienced at what they do. And it's great to see Brighton back on top form. Harry Streak, the fifth vice captain of Brighton at number 14 want to watch as the tournament progresses. And Denston, of course, they didn't get off to the start they wanted, perhaps shot 
by Blundells, the new boys who were very impressive in their first encounter. Denston, of course, with a couple of really strong Leicester players, Ricky Awusu at flanker, the Leicester Tigers under 16. Will Smith in the second row, another Leicester player, along with Dom Smith in the centres. Jamie Longyear, the fifth and final Leicester Tiger player within that Denston setup, should be a really exciting encounter. I will just say Wolf Kemsley is not missing any knowledge here this weekend. A great voice to have on pitch one for you on next gen. Big shout out to him and all the work he's done in preparation this week. Hopefully well, you're enjoying it, mate. Thank you very much, Will. I really appreciate it. We'll be back very shortly when this game commences. Shortly as the uh, injured player is treated with uh, due care and caution. Back very shortly live with next gen on pitch one for the resumption of Cheltenham College against RGS High Wycombe. Well, we're back then on pitch oh, one, live at the uh, St. Joseph's College Festival here at Belstead Road. We'll resume following the, uh, the injury replacement with a Cheltenham College scrum right on the five metre. The score remains nil-nil. RJ Ty Wickham searching for their first victory of the competition following their earlier defeat to Kirkham by 13 points to five. Will Stace alongside me. Excited about the festival to come. So much rugby to be had. There's still another day and a half, Will. Crouch! Is that excitement or fear Five. of how much commentary to do, Will? So no. excited. <laughs> Nothing but excitement. Free kick for Cheltenham College for an early shove. Scrummaging has been a really interesting part of this competition, Will. Obviously, the rules are very restrictive at this level. Uh, we've seen a couple of sides who've really got the shove on. But so far, on pitch one, only one turnover from the scrum. Yeah, it's a tough set piece to go go over from and try and get that ball back. And we speak about these short form games and the use of penalties and what the decision is and what you go for. You've got to be more attacking. You've got to go for points because these games are just so short they can run away before you know it. So it is interesting to see the decision making of, of what these teams go for. With the wind as well, these kicks are even more difficult. Well, the wind blowing from right to left, but it was a good kick from... Cheltenham College from the free kick to clear their lines, but now it will be RGS High Wickham with the ball. Clean win at the line out. To them all they go. Great counter drive by Cheltenham, and eventually RGS High Wickham spinning in midfield. Tackle now, wait, please. Good work for Cheltenham to slow up possession once more. Good hard running. 
And now into the playground with the backs. Excellent drive through the tackle. One more pass wide, well held. It's lifted and it's... Well, there's a discussion to be had with the ARs. A knock on is the call. Well, it was a fantastic break by High Wickham. A great ball into the wide channels. You thought they were in, Will, but oh, a knock just, on at the end. It's point. just so brilliant from RJS High Wickham, but once again inside that five metre, it doesn't go their way. They're playing some brilliant rugby, brilliant attacking. They've got all the possession. Cheltenham having to watch the game inside their own half. It's it's a tough day at the office for them in this one. It's a tough call to give that as a knock on as well. It was excellently well held in the wide channels by High Wickham and then dotted down. But knock on the call and Cheltenham will escape is a bit. There's the big don't argue in the bump as well from Cheltenham College's number eight. A powerful drive and a great platform to exit. A good clearance too at Cheltenham College. Escape danger for the time being. Well, Cheltenham are on the verge of cup rugby with a win wheel, but they're on the back foot at the moment. Yeah, they've got a big opportunity here, but let's be honest, even though they've faced the game in their own half, they haven't conceded, and that's a brilliant, brilliant achievement. They've defended well, and they've now got a chance almost near the halfway line to try and get the possession back in their hands. Another more. More possession for RGS High Wickham, and they break down the short side. There's the high tackle, surely. But penalty goes, it's a knock-on instead, the other way. Chelton College do have the ball back inside their own half. And they'll look for the boot once more. Charge down. No advantage. But scrum advantage. Well, it's all happening. We're still in the first half here in this game between RGS High Wickham and Cheltenham College following a uh, rather lengthy injury delay. We hope that doesn't affect the schedule too much. If you're hoping to tune in shortly to the next game here, which is a mammoth clash between Denson College and Brighton, that is on the way shortly, followed by St. Joseph's College and Millfield, which I imagine will kick off after 2 o'clock, but it will be live here on Pitch 1 with next gen as Cheltenham College play away from the scrum. A lovely cut inside, great step. And suddenly, Cheltenham College could be in the ascendancy. Penalty advantage, or a knock-on advantage even. Penalty advantage it is for Cheltenham College. You're fine. Seven. And they've got to get this ball up the field now and try and give themselves a better position and be a bit more comfortable in the game. Cheltenham College pinned in their own half for almost the entirety of this fixture, and yet now with a chance to finally escape. Yeah, it's a decent Point kick with the win, that. Line out then for Cheltenham College. This is their best attacking opportunity of the game so far. Pinned in their own half by an impressive high Wickham. But unlucky, really, not to come away with anything from their game with Kirkham. And that is a very ambitious throw with the wind howling. Unfortunately, it's on the way of High Wickham. Stop. Channel College with possession in the backfield. And there's a lovely ball to put them in behind. A bit of momentum, maybe. Flicked over the top. Into the wide channels they go. Leave it. Strong carry through the contact. Cheltenham College still driving on. Yeah, he's moved. Another strong carry. Over the game line they go. First time they've visited the 22 against this RGS High Wickham side, defending valiantly. Into the breakdown they go. Penalty goes the way of the red and black. Stepping right and left, taking it quickly. Now through the forwards. They're only inches away. Hands up. Back foot, please. Picked at the base, driving to the line. Denied by High Wickham. Strong carry once again. Held up by High Wickham. The ball is available. Into the backs they go. Cross field. Claimed well in the air. One man to beat. Over they go. Jump and Collins take the lead. 
with their first visit to the 22. Cheltenham College in front, looking for their second win and to surely secure Cup Rugby on day two for the new boys. An excellent, really ambitious kick. Well, it's just incredible from Cheltenham College. They've been against it the whole game and to come back and moved up the quick pitch so quickly. And that crossfield kick, it's a thing of beauty. And Cheltenham get the first points of this game. And it doesn't matter about that high wick and possession because that time has passed and Cheltenham are in front. What a way for this game to go almost into this into the halftime break, I think. First time for a long time I've seen a crossfield kick without penalty advantage. Cheltenham College back themselves to come here and play. They're certainly not here to make up the numbers at the St Joseph's College Festival. The South West are here to play. Blundells and Cheltenham both competing. And in the wind, an excellent conversion. Well done. Half time then in this fascinating encounter. RGS High Wickham searching for their first win of the competition, but at half time they trail to the new boys, Cheltenham College, by seven unanswered points. We'll be back for the second half live on Next Gen very shortly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Red! Yeah, Tom, well, we're back then for the second half. Cheltenham College lead by an unanswered try against RGS High Wycombe. High Wycombe to kick off and pin Cheltenham back into their own half. And they've reclaimed possession from the kickoff as well. Back there. <laughs> a little bit of handbags between two Cheltenham College and uh, High Wycombe players, but regardless, RGS drive on. Looking to rescue their tournament. Inside ball. Great line over the ball go Cheltenham, but it's a good ruck by High Wycombe. Excellent line by the 13 as well. Excellent running. They're picking Leave perfect it. holes at the moment, RGS. Now with a penalty advantage, they surely must score from here. Bring it down safely! Chatham Away. College with a ferocious defensive set. And there's an excellent Still line once more, side. picked off by RGS. They're playing with momentum here, and they go crossfield, just like Cheltenham did in that first half. This time with penalty advantage. The ball is loose, and they're in the corner! Try given, Cheltenham concede. RGS High Wickham have equalised. Not now. Will Stace, what a brilliant score. Yeah, great stuff once again. But now it's the turn of High Wickham to get on the score sheet. Straight away in this second half, they've made it work. A truly excellent crossfield. We've seen a couple of them. This one just bobbled loose in the in the wet weather. It's still very much wet on underfoot, and it's profited RGS, who are hunting for their first win of the competition. The new boys, Cheltenham, on the back foot. Opportunity to add some extras. Nice game.
Stacey, it's on, boys. 7 all. Well, a great kick. And the game really could go either way, Will. Yeah, it's, it's set this one up nicely, hasn't it? Chown of College to get us back underway. Well, it's loose off the kickoff, but eventually it will fall for RGS High Wickham. All level here in the second half as High Wickham drive onwards in their 22. No. And now they look to exit. Good scenes, exit. Touch, touch. Well, it's been touched by Cheltenham College, so the line out will go the way of High Wickham and the perfect exit for them, Will. Yeah, it is. It's good stuff once again. Great to get further up the pitch, I must say. Whoever doesn't get through this group will be one of the top favourites for tomorrow in the secondary competitions in third and fourth place. Step, it's step. a very, very Back strong group. Arm, and Kirkham are just walking past us. I don't really know no, how they look, if they're happy okay, or sad. Just checking for you, Will, as Kirk can walk past. A huge win for them the over Thanks Wellington. So Wellington staring down the barrel of plate rugby, Will. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen. I thought Wellington would, would come here and have a story to tell. I thought they'd be up there as one of the favourites, but two losses, first two games, that surely means no cup rugby for them tomorrow. Well, in the in the uh, podcast, in the precursor podcast episode uh, Next Gen on Spotify, it was Wellington who were one of the four teams to make the semi-final, and that's uh, very enlightening now. Kirkham in the ascendancy, Cheltenham College could be joining them. That's outside the half. It's hung high into the wind. Missed by the uh, on-rushing Highwick and fullback, but claimed in the backfield. And well, RGS Highwick with a big don't argue, getting through the contact. Lovely offload inside, but the ball's gone loose. Well, backwards off a Cheltenham College hand, so High Wickham will continue to play. Back foot. And now they'll clear against the wind. It's a brilliant kick, that. But only into the hands of Cheltenham College's fullback. Shot it in the wide channels. What a hit! RGS High Wickham win possession once more with a wondrous shot. We've seen some big hits this this weekend so far already. Have a conversation. It's great to see so many more going on. All in the favour of the sport, though. Well, with the new rules introduced and uh, the constant levels of protection that are rightfully taken by the RFU to protect these young players, it's good to see the big shots like that can still merit results as High Wickham win the line out. Not clean for their nine, it's a difficult ball to take at first receiver, but they skip through the tackles, RGS. No. Playing within their own half still. Another strong carry. And now it's chipped through. 50-22 well, is on, says the referee. That ball will land in touch. And it'll be a line out once again. Well, both these sides you feel they're evenly matched in this game. It could go either way. My correction, Will, the game just hidden behind the uh, scoreboard to our left. So a scrum it will actually be. And RGS High Wycombe have gained some good yardage with that kick. With the festival getting bigger and bigger, it makes our commentary position even harder to see the full game. But great stuff and a great position for High Wycombe to work with. On the top deck of the gantry this afternoon, hanging out with the camera crew. I'm not really cool enough to be here. But they're having a great day as well. I need space before no shelter please. from the rain this afternoon. Left of the mark, both of you, please. You guys set the Reset at the scrum then. Cheltenham College under a bit of pressure. The scores remain seven apiece. Crouch! Scrum for High Wickham. Set! Deep inside enemy territory. With willing runners at first receiver. Out the back they go. There's a bit of space out wide. If High Wycombe can use it, cutting back against the grain. 
picked at the base and almost through. Cheltenham College go hunting for a turnover. Winning runners off nine once more. Through the forwards they go. Building momentum inside the 22. Show and go at nine. Skipping away. Highwick Gimmich is short. There's the pick. Once again short. Quick ball for High Wickham. Hands up. Through the forwards they go, reminiscent of their almost try in that first half. Inches short. Hands up, three. Once again, they cut towards the line, and there's the score. Arjes Highwickham take the lead for the first time in this game. Cheltenham College trail. Well, Kirkham are home and dry following their big win over Wellington. Both these sides battling out for Cup Rugby, and RGS High Wickham have just found themselves a lifetime lifeline. Will it's incredible, it's brilliant work, and it's well merited too. They've been the better side of this game, I will say. That first half, the first seven eight minutes of rugby that we saw was all High Wickham, and they got no reward from it. But it's great to see that they have an opportunity to go even further into the lead and get a greater grasp on this game. Not a simple conversion in this gale. RGS High Wickham with the opportunity to stretch further out in front. Yeah, agreed. It's a great strike, but it just drifts to the left-hand side of the upright, so 12-7, the score remains. Well, some excellent angles as well, provided by Next Gen, of course. Really enjoying the coverage certainly makes the job a whole lot easier when you're getting up close and personal like that. Cheltenham Collins get us back underway. Well, it drops in the backfield and it could be a Cheltenham College player herring after it. Line out deep inside High Wycombe territory. Not the kind of start they'd want to this next phase of play, Will. No, it's not ideal, but they've got a chance to put some pressure here on the High Wycombe side, don't they, Cheltenham? Oh, just big High position. Wickham. Certainly up against it with this line out. Red, eight, eight. Step out a bit. I'm having a little look around. Okay. There's some big yeah, sides right, watching on in this game. We've got Denston, Kirkham, Brighton. Some big names watching. One of the best games I think we've had this weekend so far. It is a really tight affair, and High Wickham have done excellently well to set up this opportunity to exit. Still driving on this mall. Make some good yardage all the way up to the 22 they go and beyond. Penalty High Wickham, the perfect exit. Textbook will. Excellent given the circumstances. Yeah, great stuff from High Wickham. Pressured into deep into their own territory in their own half. And a great position for them to get into safety. Into the Cheltenham College, half they go with possession from the line out. Have another look at this try. In this uh, St. Joseph's College Festival, in this short format, every point is crucial. And High Wycombe did so well to secure possession and work their way over the line. The jubilation from High Wycombe, you love to see it. This time the mall not working as effectively, but they've split. And now Cheltenham College are dragging them down. That's why he's working. Six. Six. Well, playing with ball in hand, just inside their own half. High Wickham decided to platform. get numbers out wide. Well, they've nudged it through instead to a, a well-filled backfield, but there's a mix-up. It's backwards. still rolling backwards. High Wickham latch onto it. A real mix-up for Cheltenham. And now High Wickham are driving forward, but knocked on. They just couldn't gather it before contact was made. And It'll be a scrum for Cheltenham College. Well, they worked it really well in the build-up of that play. High Wycombe had plenty of numbers on this left-hand side. And as soon as they tried to go through there, Cheltenham got back quickly. It's a bit scrappy, but it means there's a big opportunity for High Wycombe to apply some pressure deep into Cheltenham's territory. It is scrappy, Will. This, this greasy ball is being utilised to, to great effect by plenty of teams here at St Joseph's College Festival, just chipping it through and seeing where the ball lands. It's uh, We noticed it in the, in the old boys game on Friday night as well. A couple of chip throughs led to a few tries, even if the standard wasn't as high as what we've got on show for you here. 
the weather is a factor here at St. Joseph's College, even if the rain has stopped for now. Well, Cheltenham College under a bit of pressure to exit right on their five metre. Back to their try line they go. And touch is found. But there's not enough time for Cheltenham College to get back into the game. Well, this group has been turned upside down. Kirkham are through and away following their big win against Wellington. But Wellington has hit bottom of the group on zero wins. High Wickham and Cheltenham with one win apiece. What a crucial afternoon of rugby for both these sides. It hangs in the balance here at St Joseph's College with High Wickham and Cheltenham on the cusp of cup rugby. RGS High Wycombe know that it's in their hands. If they can beat Wellington, they'll back Kirkham to get a result against Cheltenham. High Wycombe could be making a return to Cup Rugby for the first time in a while for the 2015 champions. A great win. 12-7, they take down the new boys, Cheltenham College. Up next on pitch one, though, the rugby does not stop. It's Denston up against Brighton College in a fixture steeped in tradition and power and prowess. We'll be live here on Pitch One with Next Gen very shortly. Thank you for joining me, Will. No, thank you for having me. Pleasure to be back here and enjoying the rugby festival as I always do. We'll be live on Pitch One, Brighton College. Take on Denton next. Just on the back of the blue belt. Oh, sorry, go on the, on the actual belt. And then if you can pull the cable. Happy where you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, guys. We're a bit late as it is. <laughs> Never seen seven rounds of rock, paper, scissors before. Jesus. <laughs> well, we're back for another game live from Pitch One at the St Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Two stalwarts of the festival. Going left, guys. Former yeah. finalists, former winners, Brighton College. Up against Denston. Denston, a uh, tournament side, really, with their excellent forward game. Red captain. Plenty of Leicester Tigers Good scattered point. amongst Good. the Time's white on. shirts on field. And they take on Brighton, ever present, always a danger. Tipped to be semi finalists at least by our own Angus Savage and uh, Rob Stewart in the podcast in midweek. And it's a good start for them Use as the they line, clear it red. wide. Line, Jules. Your marks here. Yeah. Your marks here. White, your marks here. Okay. I'll set you both sides. Set. Well, it will be a line start, out then for wait. Denston on halfway. Disrupted at the line out, Brighton come away with it. And it's chipped through, but the referee calls it back. Well, it will be a. Uh, Scrum then for Brighton. It was knocked on in the line out. And it will come away with possession. Well, it will be a scrum then for Brighton, their first real part of play with ball in hand as they throw through McNamara at 10. All the way wide they go. Here's Lamb into the wide channels. Well carried by Sam Arengo-Jones, the Quinns under 17, a very young Brighton side. McGuinness at nine. 
finds Alec Berkshire, one of the many vice captains in this side. Back to McNamara. Another great carry in midfield. McGuinness, McNamara. Wide they go through Saunders. Little show and go in the midfield. Excellent run by Alex Stubbs. Driving forward. Down the short side they go, Miller. Another strong carry. McNamara out the back, they go once more. But they don't go all the way wide in midfield. Flung wide into the hands of Arengo Jones, skipping away. Arengo Jones with a great run all the way up, 10 metres out from the line. More forward runners in midfield. It's Rory Claxton who takes contact. Picks at the base. It's lifted, but always backwards, says the referee, and Brighton play on. What a great attacking set for this young Brighton side. Forward runners at first receiver once more. Denston so often powerhouses of the festival. Could be going behind here to the previous, the past winners. Short once more, penalty advantage. They surely must go wide. It's an excellent missed pass. The ball is loose, diving into the corner. Short once more. Harry Streak comes up short and there's a turnover on the deck so we'll come back for the penalty and Brighton unable to convert. Penalty then for Brighton as uh, Harry Streak is down and uh, request to be replaced. We'll have a short break in play while Harry Streak receives some attention, but a excellent opportunity for Brighton. It looks like they're going to do it the old-fashioned way with a tap penalty just five metres short. Plenty of options to carry. James Davis amongst them, the vice captain, the number eight. Or it could be Noah Faulkner Wheel, the other vice captain, all three front rows listed as vice captain. Cole Miller, the Saracens player amongst them. Well, Denston, of course, fell to Blundells in their opening game. Looking for their first win of the tournament. Brighton drew with Strathallen, nil-nil in that game. Blundells and Strathallen currently taking place on pitch two. With a five metre penalty as their own as they look to crash over. But for now, it will be Davis to carry to the line. Little switch play to find Miller. But they're short. Through the forwards they go. Over the line. Presented short. Picked once again, still short. Miller, short again. Still through the forwards they go. Surely this time, Brighton have the score. It was patient, it was controlled, it was composed, and Brighton opened the scoring. Great work from the forwards, real trust placed in them by their backs. And in the end, it's Alex Berkshire with the score. Could have been any number of this uh, impressive pack, but to take Denston on at their own game requires a lot of bottle, and Brighton certainly have that. Seb McNamara of the Cardiff Blues will look to add the extra two points, how crucial they are in this short format. Well, there are the points. And Denston have a response in them. Let's see. Shown to get us underway. 
all the way into the pack field it goes. It's looping, it's wide and it's been miscontrolled. So Brighton under a bit of pressure as they look to exit. Well, how about that for a break? Oh, what pressure. Brighton are away. There's the ball inside. There's a race in the corner. Schoen is in pursuit. Could go all the way here. There's the fend. Brighton have another in the blink of an eye. Alex Stubbs goes herring away. Great work from Harry Streak. What an exit from Brighton. And they double their advantage. Can someone do it for me? A beautiful score. A contender, a contender for try of the tournament, if I've ever seen one. A wonderful run by Streak. And Stubbs is the beneficiary, is the benefactor of that run. An excellent score. Well, what a two minutes for Denston. They've been absolutely stunned by that finish and McNamara to extend the advantage. Not one for the memory book of uh, Seb McNamara. It's the blister in pace. But how about this for a finish? We really thought that when Alex Stubbs spilled the kickoff, they'd be in trouble. The show well, and go from Streak and is the fend as well. Great work from Stubbs. Fine red hole three. This time Brighton return the kickoff. And Denston will have possession just inside the Brighton half with 12 points, the current deficit. Yeah, thank you. Say your line. Come on, thank you. Oh, you're from Well, what a finish by Alex Stubbs. A great run from Streak and Stubbs in support. Now Denston will set up the mall and they break away and ball's always backwards and carried in by the uh, flanker Owusu. 16-7. Archie Kane penalised the Harlequins back row for not rolling away. Jed Benson clips it into the corner. And Denston will feel right at home with this 10 metres line out. Thank you. A big opportunity then, Jamie Longyear with the throw and they find yes. their intended target. Whistle Red goes. The Penalty against Red Brighton. Leaving the line. When the line out is formed, the players who are called into the line out must stay as part of it until the referee opens play up and that's when other players can join the ball from outside of the line out. But it's also when players can leave the line out. Dropping out of the line is not allowed. If you wish to ice a mall where you leave the mall, there's a penalty for blocking. You must step sideways and not back, as Brighton have done. And now they could be in trouble. The mall goes rolling on, but taken down by Denston. Well, we've been here before, haven't we? Just as Brighton scored their first try, Denston will look for their first. Awusu. Brought down by Miller, held up over the line. Goal line dropout is the call. All right, guys, let's go. Come on, let's play rugby, not fights. Come on, let's go. Awusu back to his feet, and Brighton will clear. McNamara comes all the way onto this left-hand side of Brighton's periphery to clear. Let's go, please. Up to the 10 metre. Carried back by show and over the head of uh, Jebson. And it's a difficult ball for anyone to take, but long year looks to spread it wide. It hits the Five referee. The referee will play advantage, but Denston's Stop still advantage. in possession. Little show and go. Stop advantage over, red roll. By Ollie Booth at scrum Your half. You two have to roll. 16 and Same penalty as last time for Brighton, not rolling Jackson away at the breakdown. Roll. 
So Jed Benson will look for the touchline and will find it. It's just been knocked back by McNamara. And he's taken a foot into dead ball. So it will be a five meter scrum. Well, it was an excellent kick, a really, truly remarkable kick from Jed Benson to find touch. Kept in by McNamara by his fingertips and the ball cruelly rolled into dead territory. So it will be a five meter scrum for Denston. A crucial part of the game then, with only moments to go until half time. Denston must score from this position. They must take points away from all their possession in Brighton's 22. Benson fell to Blundells in their opening fixture. In desperate need of a win to keep their hopes of cup rugby alive. It's a powerful Brighton scrum. Picked at the base. Lovely hard line. Brighton almost over. Inches away. There's the pick. And it's held up once more. Brighton College deny the power of Denston once again. And Seb McNamara will have an opportunity to clear his lines. What defence from Brighton. Sterling stuff. The South Coast side. We're back in familiar, ter familiar territory. Jeff Benson carries into contact. Strong, hard carrying from Denston with the ball in hand once more as they look to rebuild. Wusu just tipped but not past the vertical. Carried over the gain line once more. Maul is the call, so Brighton could kill it here. Excellent defence, and Brighton have turned it over. Okay, that will do. Let's stop. That will do. Thank you. Half time. Let's go. Well, Half -time Brighton pressure. have put an end to that late Denson fight back, and they've and, uh, kept please. their sheets clean as we go into the half time break. Brighton College, in the blink of an eye, scored two quick fire tries to take the lead. And now Denston trail by 12 unanswered points. We'll be back live for the second half very shortly as Denston look to close the deficit on Brighton College, who are a step away from securing themselves Cup Rugby come day two. Well, we're soon to get underway for the second half here. Brighton College face Denston. Brighton College lead by 12 points to nil. Denston could be uh, facing their second defeat of the tournament following their one-point loss to Blundells in the opening game. Blundells looking to see off Strath Allen to take it through to the next round, but Strath Allen have just scored. This is a really open group which Brighton College seek to top. Although a Strath Allen victory against Blundells would see a very interesting final game open up between Denston and Strath Allen. A straight shootout for Cup Rugby. If Denston can come back here. But they've got a lot of work to do. They trail by 12 points so hard to come by against this impressive Brighton defence, yet to concede in the competition. Held up Denston twice over their own goal line in the first half. McNamara to get us underway. James Davies just receiving a bit of treatment.
Well, it's a very contestable kick, but it will fall the way of Denston as they drive into contact. No messing around for Ollie Booth, who looks to clear. Claimed well in the air. McNamara goes wide. The lofted ball, but it's well taken in the wide channels and out the back door. And then through the legs. What a pass. Brighton could be in behind here. What a beautiful bit of handling from uh, the Brighton back line. And now they'll carry through the forwards. There's Barkshire, who scored the opening try. McNamara puts boot to ball. It's high and looping and wide and claimed by Denston. Into contact they go. Carried by Eaton, chipped over the top. No advantage coming. Well, I'd love to have another look at that uh, through the legs pass by Sam McNamara. But a really excellent out the back offload as well by Harry Streak, who scored that beautiful try. And if Brighton go all the way, they'll have those two to thank as the sun threatens to peek its way behind these grey clouds here at St. Joseph's College. Scrum then for Denston, desperately in need of getting themselves into the game, facing a Brighton side who haven't conceded so much as a point in this tournament. Brighton College tipped to be contenders in the outset of this tournament as they always are, regardless of who comes in and out the door Whereas it be Marcus Smith or his brother or the other Smith who's not related to them but is also really good at rugby and played number eight last year, regardless of who's in this Brighton side, always contenders. This time it's Denston's turn, Eaton with a great pass out wide and now Denston could be in in the wide channels. Cutting back inside, they're on the 10 metre. Oh, great work from Jeb Benson just Tackle, carving his way through defenders. Denston with hard runners off first receiver. To the boot they go. Clever stuff. Claimed by Brighton on the deck and now they must clear. Great line speed from Denston looking to disrupt inside Brighton's 22. Stay. Cleared by McGuinness, a great box kick. Denston still in possession, time airing away for Denston. He's on his feet, we play on. Full of Leicester Tigers players as they so often are. He's on his feet, fellas, we play on. Real quality in this side. Time off. Time off as uh, Archie Kane is on the deck once more, receiving some treatment. We will restart with a Denston scrum. Uh, line out, apologies. Sub. Fine. You're hit, you're hit. Guys, you're the line. Yeah, well, hold on to your hats, gentlemen. Really There's a really huge game up coming. It's step, going please. to be St. Joseph's step College step against last year's yeah. champions, yeah. Millfield, yeah. who are hunting for their third consecutive St. Joseph's College De La Salle trophy. That's live here on Pitch One, but at the moment it's Denston hunting to get back into the game through Schoen. The pass is just behind, and Brighton will latch onto it. Brilliant, Jim. Well, Harry Streak has left his mark on this game and then some. And he's won the ball back for Brighton with a great tackle into touch and Cole Miller has ball in hand once more, the Saracens hooker. Take a step for me, guys. Well, we've got one eye on player of the tournament and Harry Streak certainly putting his hand up for that as McNamara plays through the backfield. It's been spilled by Stubbins and forward is the call. Unfortunate for Brighton and now Denston must profit from that unforced error. Say we get on the weight, let's stay square and stable. Second. 
Crouch! Scrum for Denson, a crucial Bye. phase of the game as Ollie Booth will feed from scrum Set. half. Brighton get the shove on, but the ball pops out Denston's way. Benson, through the midfield they go. Forward, forward pass. Forward, Ben Scrum. Well, the sun is setting on Denston's Cup rugby hopes as they still trail by the two tries scored early in the first half. That's the mark. As we, we need to work better together, guys, OK? Stretch out high, into the afternoon here at St. Joseph's College. Yeah, Disappointment is sure to follow for certain Five. teams. Well, over on pitch two at the moment, it's Dulwich up against RGS Newcastle. Both sides looking for their first win. RGS Newcastle Crouch. after their first win of the season. An incredibly Five. difficult fixture list for them up in the north. Set! Right scrum, which has been dominant so far, but it's gone Here's to the deck there. Still in their possession, though. McNamara clears. Well, he's found a bit of space in behind Schoen, but this could creep all the way into dead territory. Instead, it's carried out of the uh, Denston try area. In the backfield, falls unkindly, eventually gathered well by Brighton. Oh, they've carved their way into the outside. Lovely step, reaches out and scores. Fergus Lamb, the Harlequins under 17, has scored for Brighton. What an excellent try. Really opportunistic stuff. Denston's kick chase just not up to the mark. And after a clever, clever little inside ball from uh, McGuinness, Lamb will capitalise. Well, Denson certainly have a mountain to climb with five minutes to go. Brighton College can perhaps see the uh, Cup quarterfinals on the horizon. McNamara. Of the Cardiff Blues. A real talent. Excellent kick. You cannot buy points like that at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. But this is a great score. It's a decent clearance. Unkind bounce. This is a lovely injection of pace from Lamb. Steps onto his right. Leaps out and scores and puts the game perhaps beyond Denston. McNamara clears once more. An unkind bounce, but it will fall for Denston, who take contact, looking to crawl through Brighton defenders. Good carry by Tom Hodder. Now in the backfield they go. That's a difficult ball to take, and it's been spilled. Well, things just aren't going Denston's way in this tournament. It was a hard-fought battle, which they narrowly lost to Blundells, and this defeat here will see them roll into the plate competition. Surely contenders for that title, given their undeniable quality. But uh, Brighton have really announced themselves with this result. A draw with Strathallen, perhaps indicating that Strathallen are a side to be reckoned with considering the demolition job that Brighton have done here. Good scrum for Brighton, they'll come away with it again. McGuinness, McNamara swings it wide. Well, lovely footwork and Brighton will take him on, driving through the contact. There's Dylan Moss, but knocked on, unfortunately. Well, 
Well, the, the big news from pitch two is that Blundells have beaten Strathallen by 14-5, which means that a win here for Brighton leaves a straight shootout for the first and second against Blundells. A huge game coming up later on in the afternoon. Penalty for Denston. Red three, collapsing. Well, we've got uh, Denston against Strathallen for you later on. A big win for Strathallen and a big loss for Brighton would put Strathallen through the cup competition. Fascinating encounter, to be sure. But it's the hosts up next against Millfield. The game of the day. The absolute game of the day. Without a shadow of a doubt, an ex incredibly exciting fixture. This new look St Joseph's College side has the home crowd hoping they could uh, make it to their first final in years. Benston still fighting hard. The points difference could matter if it came down to it. Being seeded in the plate competition is now the goal as a Wusu drives over. Benson with a lovely weighted kick into the wide channel, but claimed well by Moss, who frees up the hands and Brighton had possession back on the 22. No, lost boy! McNamara goes cross field. Clever, incisive. Who will drop onto it? It's Benson under pressure. First man! Turnover by Brighton. Down the short side they go. Great carry. And a lovely offload to boot from Archie Kane. But Benson had possession back, and Wusu goes driving on. Over the top from Booth. Spots a bit of space in behind. But the try scorer Lamb will take it away. Forward. Well, that will bring an end to this contest and Brighton will go marching on with a huge game against Blundells over on pitch two later to decide who tops this pool following Blundells' defeat, uh, following Blundells' victory over Strathallen. Denston crash out of the cup competition with this result and will play for plate glory tomorrow. That's the end of this game, 19-0. Brighton College have beaten Denston.
it just recently was. I'll try and put round it as best I can. Okay, uh, is there any chance to get food? Or how many games left? Go, 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 go! Very fine. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Oh, I can hear you now, yeah. Scores for you. Boys, you want to jump in? Try jump in with us. Try jump in. Sport team, strap up. Well, the horn is blown and soon the pounding of the drum will start. The home crowd's tunnel extends all the way past halfway into Millfield's 10 meter. As that familiar chant of Red Army begins and the players are led out. Well, first come the substitutes as Millfield are marched back. They stand in line right at the precipice of this St. Joseph's College column. A jubilant home crowd spurred on by an excellent first performance where St. Joseph's College took Denston to the sword. They currently compete on pitch two against RGS Newcastle. But this is the real decider. The top two teams in this pool. And as the players creep onto this hallowed turf, this famous old field at Belstead Road. The next chapter in the history of St. Joseph's College will be written in the next half an hour. How come the players face to face with their familiar foe. The red, blue and green, the record eight-time champions against the St. Joseph's College side, providing new hope. The thousands of onlooking supporters, past, previous and future players and supporters of this competition. The De La Salle trophy for so long has been left in the hands of others, such as Millfield, as Brighton, as Wellington, as Kirkham. Is this the side that will bring it home? We will find out in the next half an hour as Jimmy Thompson stands face to face with the Welsh international Stefan Emanuels. Scorer of the crucial three points that took the game for Millfield last year. Henry Bonetti, the vice captain, stands on the 10 metre. There are some sizable units 
in that millfield pack. It's a jubilant crowd at St Joseph's College as Ryan Solomons will get us underway. Well, it'll find touch as well. St Joseph's College pile on the pressure. Millfield with the line out. The ball is in the hand of uh, Henry Bonetti, the Bath player. And it's the first test of the day for the Millfield pack. Beasley at first receiver, Charlie Brock at the back of the line out. St Joseph's College will compete. Millfield claim possession and start them all. It's Cody Pernell actually who starts in the front row for Millfield as that box kick perhaps doesn't have the distance that Millfield were after and it's been knocked forward by Morris. Scrum then for St. Joe's and the first real attacking possibility of the game. Smith, Russell Cox and Ox McGuana start in the front row for St. Joe's. Frank Christopher with his first start of the day in back row. The co-captain, Jimmy Thompson, will feed. Clean ball then for St. Joseph's College to play with. Liam Van Hoving with the first carry of the day. Solomon steps off the left. Thompson to Smith. Stopped at the gain line by Alex Deering, another Bath player. Van Hoving at first receiver, Greg Pettit. Great tackle. But still here comes Thompson, carried on by Saar Van Engelen. Great work by Van Hoving to deputise at nine. Thompson back into his regular role. Solomon's crossfield kick. There's numbers out wide. Preston McFarlane reclaims possession. Steps him out to deck. Preston McFarlane lighting up the field at Belston Road. There's the show and go. Finally contact taken. St Joseph's College just 10 metres out as they play through the forwards. Fergus Cherrington, the captain. Out the back to Solomons, the ball's loose, and Millfield could come away with it, and look at the break! But spilled at the very last by Yearsley. Well, heart in mouth for the home supporters here. Millfield almost broke away, and a reminder of just how dangerous they can be. A jubilant home support here. And it will be a St. Joseph's College scrum. Will Stace earlier on the live stream, of course, commenting on the uh, the kits this year. They really are spectacular, this St. Joseph's College home shirt. It's got champions written all over it. Jimmy Thompson with the feed. This powerful Millfield scrum, and they do get rolling, and the ball's been disrupted. Cody Pernell with a powerful drive. The number 16. Well, the Millfield bench below us, undeterred by the home support. A chance, of course, aimed at Eddie Lloyd, the former St. Joseph's College player, now on the field for Millfield and being involved with the contact right away there's a little out the back from Hurst try score in the last game and Van Engelen carries into contact oh it's been picked at the base but spilled and Millfield come away with it and for the first time in this game they'll have ball in hand just knocked on from Eddie Patterson played in this tournament as an under 16 as so many of them did scrum then another opportunity for the powerful Cody Purnell to disrupt. First real attacking set of the game. Catlin's in at nine for Millfield. Jimmy Thompson all over young Catlin, but he comes away with it. 
Out the back they go, lofted ball, it's been spilled. And St Joseph's College will come away with the knock-on. A really difficult ball for Ben Morrow to get down and collect. Owen Erasmus just didn't get enough lift on it. But every time Millfield attack, they look threatening. Scrum then for St Joseph's College. Another chance to get this home crowd off. Really on their feet. Thompson with the feed. Catlin being a nuisance as all good nines are. It's another big scrum, but it's picked away by Hurst. Thompson, Solomons, little show and go. Surely the ball had to go, but try scorer James Lloyd Davis kept hold and St. Joe's continue with possession. Here's the captain, Cherrington. It's a penalty advantage for St. Joe's, Thompson. Max Iguana lifts it to Solomons, who slips. There's Millfield players all over him. And will come back for the penalty. Well, St. Joseph's College then with an excellent attacking opportunity. Ah, and Solomons will nudge into the corner. And St. Joe's will look to take on this impressive Millfield pack. Line out for St. Joseph's College. Rufus Russell Cox with the ball in hand. Plenty of options to pick out. Josh Grigg Pettit, the tallest among them. Frank Christopher also in the line with Eddie Patterson. Callum Hurst in the pocket for the drive. I like it. No like contest. This. Now, from boys. Millfield, and the ball begins. Boys. Well, they're Let's drifting go, towards the right-hand side. Russell Cox has it in the boot, and now they'll break. St. Joseph's College just mere metres away. Thompson. Red boys, red! Max Iguana carries hard. More runners, it's Cherrington. Millfield are over the ball. Turnover! St. Joseph's College denied. Just lacked a little bit of imagination. St. Joseph's College repelled once more. Millfield have an opportunity to break out of their own half for the first time in this game. And it's an excellent kick. Right on halfway, Millfield will play with ball in hand. Bonetti with ball in hand. Bonetti with the throw. They'll look to pick out Alex Deering of Bath, who's up at the centre. Quick ball then. Catlin goes wide to Erasmus. Lloyd carries hard. Back down the short side they go. Deering on the switch around. Catlin over the top. And here goes Morris. Morris with the wheels. He's got one to beat. Chopped down well. Penalty goes against Millfield. Not releasing is the call, and St. Joseph's College have escaped to the delight of the home support. What a game of rugby we have for you, ladies and gentlemen, live with Next Gen. Well, this was such wheels from Morris to get on the outside of Ann Englund, but a great tackle, and he gets back to his feet despite being held. Penalty goes against St. Joe's, and Russell Cox will have another line-out throw to contend with. Well, the machine that is Millfield running well. Clever little line-out from St. Joe's with Jimmy Thompson at first receiver. Up goes Patterson, Millfield intercept. Loose ball, but Catlin drops on it. Penalties at Joseph's College. Greg Pettit with the turnover. And Solomons will kick into the corner. St. Joseph's College with another opportunity. 
to turn the tide of this game in their favour. It's an excellent kick. Deep into the millfield, 22. Again, 10 metres short, they lie with a line out in their favour. Russell Cox with the throw. Seven man is the call, so a more looks likely. Patterson, Greg Pettit and Frank Christopher in there again as the intended targets. The referee just sorting things out, setting the gap. Adam Smith takes first mark for St. Joseph's College in their home tournament, the biggest event in the school's calendar. Up to the back they go. Pop down to Greg Pettit, round the corner. Carried hard by Callum Hurst. And there's the all. Cody Purnell into disrupt. Turnover is the call. And the all just not going to plan. Cody Purnell once again the instigator for the turnover. Millfield are not out of the woods yet, though, with a scrum on their five metre. Smith and Max Guana looking to disrupt. Well, it's a good drive from Millfield, and they'll pick from the base. Solomon's with a crunching tackle on Howells. Penalty, though, will go the way of Millfield. An easy exit. There is a smattering of support for the eight-time champions. And Erasmus will look to find touch. Well, this time he's been unable to find the touchline, so Solomons will return with ball in hand. Composed play from the number 10, skipping through the contact over the Bulgo Millfield. But Thompson has it at the base and will box into midfield. But uh, claimed well by Morrow. And now Erasmus assesses his options. And it's coming down with snow on it, with Millfield players in support. But Thompson's taken it well and injected some pace into the attack. And Thompson's been lifted. And that will light up the home crowd. They're unhappy with that. And in go the players of both sides. Well, Millfield could be in real trouble here. Not only was the tackle late on Jimmy Thompson, but he was lifted past the vertical. And the referees will have some sorting out to do here. It was an excellent take by Jimmy Thompson, who cut down the left-hand side. He was searching for McFarlane, but McFarlane just overran his line. But, well, they could be in trouble here. To the delight of the home crowd, it must be said, that a late tackle went down much better than you'd expect, given the nature of the offence. Well, there's certainly some discussions to be had. Discussions to be had between uh, Jimmy Thompson and Stefan Emmanuel and the referee and... The result will be half-time. Well, certainly not the result that the home crowd are after, but at the break, St. Joseph's College have had the better of Millfield, who have only broken out of their own half a singular time. St. Joseph's College well in the ascendancy against the record champions. It's an absolute firecracker of a game here at the St. Joseph's College Festival, where the hosts currently hold Millwall, Millfield sorry, to a stalemate. We'll be back very shortly for a thrilling second half.
Well, plenty of discussion to be had about the uh, the late incident here on pitch one. Jimmy Thompson, the captain, put past the vertical, but Millfield escape unscathed. Despite only breaking out of their own half in one phase of that first half, the record champions are still in the fight, as they so often are. It's a lovely return by Sarvan Engelen. Max Iguana carries over the gain line. Brick Pettit with a bit of space out the back door. Carried well by Christopher. Solomons shows and goes through the hole. Lovely covering tackle by Morgan Williams on the field. Thompson, Patterson, Max Iguana over the gain line once again. Smith. Well, a hint of crossing there, a lovely Don't tackle once more by Killian Murphy. Brick Pettit over the gain line, Millfielder over the ball. Pulled him off, ball's available. But a good clear out. Solomons, this time they look to go wide. Liam Van Hoven with a big fend over the gain line and up over halfway at St Joseph's College. Thompson, Solomons. Max Iguana. Penalty advantage. Penalty advantage as well for the hosts. Smith shows and goes himself. Millfield once again over the breakdown, but Solomon's at 10. Little step off the right, out the back door, but the ball goes down. No advantage. Will come back for the penalty in St Joseph's College. Playing with real intention at the beginning of this second yeah. half. Yeah. 24 offside. Charles Heffron penalised for offside. Bit of a lifeline for St Joe's, who lost a touch of attacking momentum towards the end of that phase. But now the very impressive Ryan Solomons will chip it into the corner, and it's a great kick right in front of that jubilant home support. They don't want the ball. Well, the mall did not function for St Joseph's College in that first half. They had two attempts, both times it went to ground, both times it resulted in the turnover. We'll see what's uh, in the playbook this time. Russell Cox with the throw, claimed by Patterson, and Hurst has the ball. Now with Cox, and the mall is rolling. They've rotated well. Still, Russell Cox is going onwards with it. Still travelling. St. Joe's with a bit of momentum. Brought down in the end. Try give it. Penalty try for St. Joseph's College. The ball was dragged down illegally by Millfield. And they've taken the lead over the record champions. St Joseph's College, seven points to the advantage. Credit will go to Russell Cox, Max Iguana and Smith for getting that mall moving. And St Joseph's College are in front. One, two, one, two. Hello, hello. What a game we have for you live with Next Gen at the St Joseph's College Festival. The hosts are in front. First half domination leads to second half advantage as they finally get their mall rolling. Penalty try. So 
Seven points, no need for the conversion, and St Joseph's College are out in front against the Millfield side, who haven't had a sniff, it must be said. An incredibly talented outfit who put 22 points on Newcastle, and yet they are being held at the moment by the hosts. Saar van Engelen takes contact under a whole world of pressure. And now they'll look to clear. Charge down! St. Joe's under pressure, diving on the ball. Millfield have the score! And in the blink of an eye, the home crowd is silenced. And Millfield are right back in the game. Well, it was all of 20 minutes of work from St. Joseph's College to stretch out, of in, out in front. And Millfield equalised within 30 seconds. Thompson's kick charge down and Millfield crash over with Stefan Emmanuel looking to level things up. It was an excellent charge down and it's Henry Bonetti, the vice captain who eventually crashed over the line. Emmanuel pierces the uprights as he so often does and the scores are level. Well, the home crowd get back behind their team as uh, Henry Bonetti's try cancels out St. Joseph's College's opener. Solomons gets us underway. Kick taken under little pressure. It's an excellent carry by Yearsley and uh, chipped through by Emmanuel, gathered by Van Engelen. Penalty St. Joseph's College as well for not rolling away. Morris penalised. Well, it looks like points is the option that Solomons has favoured for, looking to put St. Joseph's College out in front. But uh, no T is to be found at the moment, and the time is ticking away. I think we're just all these people in the scaffold are bugging it, they pulled all the cables out. Yeah, seven all. Seven all, the current score. But Solomon's looking to change that from the tee. A hush falls over the crowd. Ryan Solomon's to put St. Joseph's College out in front with the wind against him, far out on the right-hand side. It's a good strike, hung in the wind, but it's made it! St. Joseph's College stretch out in front for the second time! To the jubilation of their home support, raucous in their praise of Ryan Solomons. St. Joseph's College lead 10-7, and Millfield get us back underway. Erasmus spilled from kickoff. Max Guana is offside. And once again, Millfield have the opportunity to equalise immediately from the kickoff. You cannot keep a side like Millfield quiet. Discussions ongoing, is it the corner or the post? Stefan Emmanuel has opted for the posts. Or a scrum is the call. Well, bold to say the least. Millfield back themselves from here. Who in this back line? Stubbings, Emmanuel, Erasmus. Future Premiership, future Bucks names. Ready to take on this in Joseph's College line. Ellis James and Jed Fitton-White 
in the lineup as well. With Ben Morrow hanging in the backfield for Millfield. What deception do they have planned? First, the scrum. Fed by Williams. It's a powerful Millfield drive. Erasmus. Out the back they go. Round the corner. Millfield away. Emmanuel is over. Stefan Emmanuel, the Welsh international, has taken the lead for Millfield. Two visits to the 22. Two tries, the result. Clinical, as they often are. Millfield take the advantage. And with very little time remaining, the home side will trail. And the try scorer Emmanuel has the opportunity to further extend the advantage. Stefan Emmanuel, a point scorer in that final last year. The captain, the leader, the talisman of this Millfield side. Stretched his legs and carved through St. Joe's like a hot knife through butter. Unopposed in the end, a great finish. Wide, but Millfield will still lead by two. St. Joseph's College are behind. It was simple enough in the end. There were just so many threats. Stefan Emanuel opened up his legs and galloped away. Backwards from the kickoff, and Hurst is onto it, but knock on is the call. Millfield scrum on their 22. Well, the game really does hang in the balance. A loss here would leave St. Joseph's College in need of a huge win over RGS Newcastle to secure Cup Rugby, something they didn't manage last year. And a game that could have been the final, given the quality of these two sides on show today. Alfie Sharplin on the field. And that familiar chant of Joey's rings true. Here's the scrum. Millfield with a good, powerful drive. as a good offload from Howells, but forward pass is the call. Well, Charlie Brock is down. Time off is the call. It will be a scrum for St. Joseph's College and got a feel for... Will Howes there, it looked like an excellent offload, but just forward. St. Joe's trail by two with a scrum in Millfields. 22. Well, a crucial period of the game. St. Joseph's College with little time remaining. Trail by two. And they'll scrum down inside Millfield's 22. Thompson with the feed. It's out the back with Thompson. Chipped over the top. Gathered by Stefan Emmanuel and hacked away. It's an excellent clearance. All the way back to St. Joseph's own 22. Back comes Lloyd Davis. It's a massive shot. And here's the counter drive from Millfield. Picked by St. Joe's, who drive forward. Over the ball they go. St. Joe's have it. Deep in their 22. Hurst with a strong carry. Well, it was a good turnover for Millfield, but the penalty went St. Joseph's way. High tackle is the call. 
Jack Hussey was hit with a high tackle and now Solomons will look for touch and he'll find it as well. Well, St. Joseph's College under pressure, still behind. Line out for Russell Cox. Twelve seven, the current uh, twelve ten, the current score, and St Joseph's College have a rolling maul creeping into the Millfield half. Solomon's is caught, excellent tackle, shotted by Stubbings. St Joseph's will still play. Thompson finds the captain Cherrington, driven back once more by this powerful Millfield defence which flashes past everyone, but always backwards, and uh, Patterson carries well. Thompson finds the captain again with Greg Pettit in support. It's a strong carry, but they're still deep in their own half. There's Solomons flashing it wide, and now they'll look to get in behind. There's the step from Van Engelen. Axeguana plays nine, flashes it across. Great line speed once again. Millfield putting in the shots. Cherrington with a great carry, but over the goal goes Bonetti. Solomons carries himself, steps inside and beats the first man. Thompson. Hussey. Driven into touch, but kept alive excellently well. Almost driven into touch. St. Joseph's College playing on a knife edge. Thompson again, Solomons, Axiguana carries himself over the gain line. Knock on is the call. Well, Millfield have done it. They've silenced the home crowd. They've beaten St. Joseph's College by the finest of margins. Two points the difference. And they will march into cup rugby as they so often do. St. Joseph's College with one game remaining. Required to beat RGS Newcastle for the right to play cup rugby tomorrow. But in one of the most fascinating schoolboy encounters of the season, Millfield prevail. St. Joseph's College beaten. 12-10, the final score. Well, you can feel the serious drop in momentum from the home crowd as they disperse following the end of this fixture. But a huge victory for Millfield. Any questions? of their quality compared to previous years. Asked about them in the run-up to this competition have been answered in sterling degree with a great victory. Well, there's a very big game coming up next as Trinity take on Hampton. That's live with Next Gen on Pitch One coming up very shortly here at the St. Joseph's College Festival.
Well, what a thrilling game that was. An unbelievable atmosphere. And what it means is that we have four teams that are already through to the trophy quarterfinals. One from each group, Trinity, Kirkham Grammar School, Blundells and Millfield, all through to tomorrow's trophy quarterfinals with a game to spare for everyone else. It's all about these next games coming up and coming right up now, Trinity against Hampton. They're through. Hampton need to do something here to come and join them because Whitgift are playing against Queggs over in, page, in pitch two. Uh, Whitchurch, sorry, I do apologise. And if Whitchurch get the victory there, they are in contention to qualify. Keep an eye as well on group two where RGS High Wycombe, Cheltenham College and Wellington College all still stand a chance of joining Kirkham Grammar School tomorrow in the trophy quarterfinals. But a reminder, that means Trinity, Kirkham, Blundells and Millfield are all through. Who's going to join them? We're going to find out over the course of the next four games on each pitch. Stay with us. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, we're live still on pitch one, of course. Trinity with a narrow margin beat Whitchurch seven points to three before dismantling Quegg's Wakefield 21 to three so they are through to this competition hampton on the other hand had a difficult start to the day following their 11-3 victory over quegg's wakefield in their second game they drew with whitchurch high school the side of course which trinity beat early in the morning one win and one draw a win here will certainly secure Cup Rugby for Hampton. Still reeling from that uh, St Joseph's College result. A huge game, a monumental clash that certainly lived up to the billing of how impressive the game was going to be. Well, Trinity for the third time are live on pitch one. Last year's finalists tipped perhaps to struggle, but have come through with flying colors against a Hampton side who had not had the best run in to this tournament. Not an excellent record, but a tough fixture list. And with their win and their draw, they're clearly showing their quality. Whitchurch, all they need to do is beat Queggs to confirm their place in the cup final, relying on, of course, Trinity to beat Hampton. Louis Harrison Ricks gets us underway, kicks into the backfield and Hampton clear. A bouncing ball, but it's well taken by Jacob King and carried hard through the midfield and Hampton are over it, but it's been won by Trinity. Another strong carry past the gain line. Spilt and offside is the call for being in front of the knock on. Well, Hampton will have a penalty then as they look for the touchline. Tim Wright in number 10 for Hampton. Finds touch on the 22. Line out one cleanly in the end by Theo Tyler Lowe. And the mall begins. Well, it's pretty static at the moment and uh, Hampton looked to break, but they're dragged down by Trinity. On the 22, Hampton in possession. They pick from the breakdown. Clean ball at the ruck. Right. Oh, it's a lofted pass, but a great take by Patterson. Still going, Patterson. Trinity back to cover. It's slapped down by a Trinity player, always backwards, and then cleared away in the end. Well 
Well, Rory Patterson with a great run. The dangerous Omar Leon clearing up. The captain, the best player of their season so far. Hampton then with another opportunity to strike. Line out on the 10 metre. And it's been their game so far. Picked up by Aran Tyra Murphy. Tahiri Murphy takes contact. Patterson runs another line over the ball. Go Trinity. But not legally so. In from the side is the call. So once again, Hampton will stick it in the corner. A win here would really upturn the group. It would leave two wins and a draw. And it would put Hampton right to the very top of this group. Hampton not favoured in the precursors to this tournament. But it would be a huge statement here to come away with victory. Tim Wright to strike from just inside the Trinity half. It's a clean connection and it's sailing through the uprights. It's an excellent kick. And Hampton will come away from their early onset of possession with some points. Hampton lead by three. Well then, Trinity must respond. They are through mathematically. This result is not in the favor of Whitchurch. It will come down to points difference, perhaps, if things stay the same. But at the moment, Hampton are in a bit of trouble. Right on their five meter, ne needing to exit cleanly. Will Skinner hacks it away. Claimed in the air by Trinity and back they come. Well, it's a lofted looping pass held well by Isa Miller. Makes good ground. Temi Asande with a good carry. Lovely step and the fend once more from the dangerous Harrison Ricks. And excellent work round the corner. Skipping through the contact goes Ozzy Edwards. Back down that right-hand side they go. It's been dropped, but it's been knocked on by Hampton. A slap down in the tackle. So we'll play forward here. Offload, great run once more by Ashambe. It's been picked up. And Trinity go driving onwards. There's the offload through the contact. Lacks a daisical defense from Hampton. Letting Trinity run freely into their red zone. Now they'll go wide. Flash across the face, it's an easy touchdown in the corner. They make it look so simple. Well, the referee's just guaranteeing the try and it's not been given. Well, Dan Iser Miller, the under 16, making his debut in this tournament, has not touched down. It was just a bit too easy for Trinity. Once it went wide, it was a lovely ball by Jacob King. But it's been knocked on. Excellent defending from Williams. And Hampton have escaped. Well, Hampton perhaps fortunate to escape that attacking set unfazed but they're certainly not out of the woods yet will skinner will feed the scrum spits out the back and skinner hacks it away only as far as harrison ricks flung wide and here goes leon the captain in the outside channels whipping it away to samson goldschmidt and then contact originally eventually taken Trinity reset on the 10 meter. Edwards. They'll go to the backs this time. It's been spilt, but only backwards. So it's spat out for Oscar Sweeney. Still Trinity possession. 
Great footwork in the contact by Webzell. But a knock on is the final call. Well, it's a disappointing end to what looked like a promising attack for Trinity, who still trail by three. Hampton looking to top the group with a victory here. Two wins and a draw would better the two wins and a loss if things stay the same. And with their draw, win and loss, Whitchurch will be crashing out of the cup. Lovely little step, but charged down by Trinity. Hacked away at the second time of asking by Hampton. And here, once again, is Wilcox. Harrison Reeks puts it out the back door, but it's been knocked on. And Trinity not playing to the whistle while Hampton are. So they're driving forward with a bit of momentum. Picking from the base once more. And now they skip to the backs. Wright just assessing his options. He's been caught by Wilcox. Attempted hack through, but it's come off a Trinity player and excellent work to keep the ball in play. Charged down by a Hampton defender and Isa Miller comes away with it, just skipping through. No, the ball's out. Always backwards, it's a very clever spin from Gormley and a great offload as Sambe puts it inside and away goes King. King flicks it up to a Sambe, but it's gone loose and this scrappy game is, is continuing to twist and turn as Hampton are back in possession and looking to exit or looking to play from inside their 22. They're in the wide channels, now they clear. Harrison Ricks will return the kick with interest. It's an excellent clearance. But it will be a Hampton line out. Three points they currently lead, and that's all. Despite their attacking intention, they've been in the 22, they failed to profit. And now it will be a throw for Will Wallace. It's a Trinity side that lack their talisman. Their England International Friday at nine, but Gormley deputising excellently well. Well. Whistle goes. And the game will get back underway. And it's been claimed well in the air by Wheeler. And they've started a maul rolling round the corner. Well, it's been down by Hampton, but they'll play with possession. What's well, a penalty advantage? Bringing down them all, but I believe it's two penalties for them to choose from. Well, Hampton escape pretty comfortably, too comfortably for a Trinity side chasing a place in the cup competition. They are through regardless. But they will finish second in this group if Hampton can hold on. Hampton look more like doing much more than holding on. They're very much in the ascendancy. Will Wallace. A good move. And they've set up the mall well. But it's a offside is the call for joining the mall early. Seen as early as today. You cannot join them all whenever you feel like it. The referee must give you some purchase. So Trinity escape, neither side able to uh, really get their game going. Both sides struggling to show us their full capacity. Still by just the margin of three points, Hampton lead. Isaiah Opara will lead the line out. A 
And to the back they go. Well taken by Apara. Difficult ball to collect for Ben Beadle, but he's carried well. Back down the short side they go. There's a great offload for Broom to carry. On the body and not the ball, so no turnover. Down the short side they go. Clever little flick past. And it's the would-be try scorer, Dan Eisen Miller, having another go, but Hampton have turned it over. Uh, once again, the attacking team are denied any real opportunities by some excellent defending, and that will bring an end to this first half. A game of rugby which, despite being an intriguing, fascinating counter, has really yet to get going. We are not yet to see the best of Hampton or Trinity live on pitch one. But still, one more half to come. Hampton lead by three in this crucial group decider. Well, it's the beginning of the second half here. Hampton take on Trinity. Hampton lead by three points. And a win by this margin will see them top the group and knock Whitchurch out of the cup competition. Well, Trinity will finish second. Well, it's an excellent kick over the head of uh, Tom Williams. And he's got to take it all the way on his five meter charge down. And a great start for Trinity. Well, it's a line out then for Hampton in a crucially important area. It's a slow moving mall which Trinity have got contained for the moment. But the ball comes loose, and it comes the way of Hampton. Penalty goes their way, and they'll exit without restraint. Well, it will be a line out on the 10 meter for Hampton.
crucial part of the game for them as they look to extend their advantage. What an excellent take at the line out by Theo Tyler Lowe, but not straight is the call. Well, it's a scrum then for Trinity as they are desperate to get back into the game. They currently trail by three. They are through to the cup competition, but would love priority seeding with that number one spot. At the moment, it's Hamptons. But Trinity attack through their back line this time. It's a wonderful run by Farrell, the scorer of their excellent try that defeated Whitchurch this morning by a narrow margin. Pauling at nine, but they go wide. Flash across the face. Trinity could be in the corner. It's a race to the line. It's a wonderful tackle. Hampton denied Trinity yet again. It was a beautiful, lofted pass from Jack Vass. New to the school on his return from injury, but it was an even better tackle by Hal Lemon in the corner. Overthrown line out. And Hampton still in trouble. To the short side they go, driven back by Trinity. Great tackle by Teddy Wilkie. This time Skinner will look to exit with the box kick. Well, it's got the height, but not the distance. And Trinity have claimed it and they go round the corner. What a run by Singh all the way. Oh, what a try. And the Ashton splash to finish and Trinity take the lead. A bit of magic from a real leader, the Quinns under 18 player. Highlighted as a skillful forward, had a starring role in the cup final and what an impact he's made off the bench. A beautiful try and Samson Goldschmid now has the opportunity to stretch Trinity further in front. A great kick and a lifeline for Whitchurch as well. Well, the box kick had good height, but the chase just wasn't there. But this is a wonderful finish. One player bought, two players beaten, three beaten, four beaten. Over goes Quinn Singh. An excellent finish. And what a return from the kickoff as well. Leon driving on past the gain line. And an attack from inside there, 22. That's a great carry from Beadle. What a pickup that is as well, off the floor. Changing the direction of the attack once again. Trinity are driving past the gain line. They've made good meters, up to their 10 meter already. Lovely ball by Singh, flashed across the face, still playing. It's a lovely offload. What a pick out and kick to the corner as well. Gathered by Williams, who will return it with some interest, but Trinity have done fantastically well. They've made some great yardage and they could look to kill off this game. And they could look to kill off Hampton's Cup fighting intentions. So, to clarify, as things stand, if Whitchurch beat Quakes Wakefield by a bigger margin than Hampton did, which was 11-3,
they will progress on points difference to the cup competition and Hampton will be out. If Trinity score again, points difference will rock further in favour of Whitchurch, which relies on their victory on pitch two. A game still going. For the moment, Hampton are out of the cup competition. Singh with a wonderful carry, had a real impact on this game. Through the forwards again, slapped down by a Hampton player, penalty advantage, chipped forward by Farrell, who's there to make the tackle as well. It was a scrum advantage, so advantage over from the kick. There's the counter drive, but in from the side. Hampton still in the game. Well, it's a Hampton penalty in at the side and the game gets back underway. They trail by a margin of four. <whistles> Touch found emphatically. And Hampton have a line out on the 10 metre. Things really do hang in the balance here. It's all over on pitch two. As Whitchurch have another try. So this result will see them through to the cup. While Hampton crash out, poked through this time by James. And Trinity looked to counter. Singh gets the ball away. Excellent hands. Leon. Takes contact on the 10 metre. Well, it's just off the foot of the Trinity player. It's an excellent pickup, but Hampton win a crucial penalty. And how the momentum swings so quickly in this tournament. All of a sudden, Hampton have an opportunity to turn the tide. Oscar James on at fly half. On comes Tom Holland as well. Not that one. but instead the outside back of uh, Hampton. Line out. Disrupted by Trinity. Hampton come away with it. Knock on is the call. Trinity escape once more. Now Trinity were home and dry in terms of cup qualification, but a win here would see them top the group and make a real statement about their intentions to be back-to-back -back finalists in only their second appearance at the St. Joseph's College Festival. Scrum for Trinity. Hampton get a shove on, but it comes out the way of Trinity. That's a wonderful drive by Nayland, piling on the pressure. And has Nayland come away with it? Nayland's stolen the ball for Hampton, and suddenly they have possession inside. Trinity's 22, just five metres short. There's lots of space in the wide channel, but Nayland will go himself. They've turned it around. Hampton have rescued their hopes of cup qualification in the dying embers of this game. A wonderful score, such industry from Eddie Nayland to turn it over. And Hampton crash over to take the lead. 
right at the very last. Well, it might not have been Nayland who crashed over in the end, but he's certainly credited for creating that try. A dagger in the heart of Whitchurch, who won't know at the moment, but their cup qualification hopes are certainly at an end. All Hampton need to do is secure possession and clear it away. It may have been Toby Smith who scored. We'll have another look at that try, but with a missed conversion, Hampton trail by a single point. Well, Nayland turned it over, one possession, stripped it in contact. An excellent driving run by Sam Ho, and then back down the short side, it was Joe Cornell who came away with it. Cornell, the scorer, Hampton, the beneficiary, and it couldn't, could still be going on here as they look to play in behind Trinity. The icing on the cake could be inbound for Hampton in the closing stages of this game. Holland at nine. Nayland carries hard. They go back down the short side. Taken in by Gwyn. Nayland out the back this time. A little chink over the top they go. With penalty advantage in hand, Hampton could finish it here and secure themselves cup rugby come tomorrow. Well, they'll go for the posts and kill off this game. It's Oscar James with the ball at his feet. What drama live at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Didn't think it could get any better than that uh, excellent win for Millfield over the host, but Hampton have stolen cup qualification from right under Whitchurch. Off the post, play on, carried hard into contact. And Trinity have such little time. They must play from inside their own 22 if they wish to come away with anything. Singh, Leon in contact. Still, they look to play. Hampton's defence is well set. Penalty. A lifeline for Trinity. Still hunting for the first place position in this group. Touch found. And they'll continue to play Trinity until the last whistle. Hunting for this win. Despite having already qualified for the cup competition, Hampton playing on a knife edge. They lead by a singular point. The likes of Wellington and Dulwich watch on, assessing who their opponents tomorrow might be. Hampton come away with it. Knock on is the call. And it's time. Hampton have done it at the very last. They've qualified for the cup competition. Whitchurch are out of the cup competition. It's heartbreak for the Welsh side. But Hampton have stolen cup qualification, written off before this tournament by many, with a poor run coming into it. Trinity will qualify regardless. But it's an excellent result for Hampton. Well, there's an excellent game inbound as well. RGS High Wycombe take on Wellington, a Wellington side who have struggled today, a High Wycombe side who have been so close 
to great victories. Still hunting for cup rugby, which Hampton have achieved with their victory over Trinity. We'll be back very shortly for the next game, live here from pitch one at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Kick off here in this uh, crucial encounter. Release, Wellington yet to win a fixture against High Wickham, who achieved a famous victory against Cheltenham College in their last game to keep their hopes of cup rugby alive. They must win this game and bank on Kirkham. Defeating. Oh, a wonderful offer out the back. They must bank on Kirkham defeating Cheltenham College to guarantee themselves cup rugby. Cheltenham College with one win and one loss at the moment. A sizable victory for them. We'll see them progress, but RGS High Wickham need to beat the famous institution of Wellington here who have yet to win a game, 25-0. They were defeated by Kirkham earlier on this afternoon as the sun finally rears its head and shines brightly on the golden black of Wellington who have their first penalty. Well, it's an excellent kick as well, all the way into the 10 metre of uh, RGS High Wickham, who look to progress to cup rugby yeah. for the first Numbers. time in a number of years. Five. Previous winners, of course. Guys on the AR, move. On the AR. Thank you. But it's a Hampton line out in their own half. Picked off by Ball. High Wickham. A great take. Starmer Smith was the target for Wellington, but it was picked off by High Wickham and they'll chip through a tantalizing kick. But Wellington will eventually latch Happy. upon. Knock on goes the way of High Wickham. Scrum. Blue ball. Nice call, thank you. Well, Wellington are not resigned to play rugby. A large victory here could see them progress on points difference. If Cheltenham College lose to Kirkham, Kirkham will go through undefeated as top, but all three of the remaining teams, with one win and two losses, could take that final spot in the cup competition. Crouch! Fine! Set. In two, three, four. 
Scrum then. Shove, High Wycombe. Great shove from High Wycombe and they're over the gain line with this excellent carry through the centres. Over the ball go Hampton. Stay there, stay there, thank you. No lift, so High Wycombe play on. In the wide channels they go. Ferocious defending from Wellington. Release! High Wycombe still driving forward. Through the forwards they go. Great meters. Release! Fine, I'll stop if we go there. Charge down. A charge down by Wellington as the RGS High Wycombe 9 try to chip it oh, over the thing. top. Hack through by Wellington and now there's a race on. It's not a Great work from Ben Smith. We weren't playing advantage. We weren't playing advantage. Well, suddenly yeah, RGS yeah. High Wycombe from their impressive attacking position. Now have a line out inside their own 22. OK. Fine. Break and play while our Wellington player receives some attention. I think it's worth a couple of minutes, to be honest, yeah, given how long he held his head. Oh, it's just something in his eye? It was just in the eye, yeah, it wasn't a head impact. Okay, all right. just as long as you're happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay, is he, if he's happy. Okay, two minutes, yeah. Okay. Well, let me do the subs. Yeah, let me set it up. Time where you are. Okay, time on. Well, it's a line out then for High Wickham. The injured player has left the field and they'll set them all from deep inside their 22. Scores. Don't change six. Still level here. Arches High Wickham. Knowing that a win here would guarantee them Cup Rugby. Wellington can keep their hopes alive with a victory, but High Wickham are still driving on, rolling slowly beyond the 22. Now they exit. But it's a searching kick into the wide channels, and High Wickham could be on it. Oh, it's tipped inside. A lovely ball. Away they go. Held on to by High Wickham as they look to build an attack. They're right back into Wellington's 22. Great tip. The players isolated. Wonderful clear out. And away go. Oh, Jess High Wickham, there's a show and go. They could be in in the corner. Drag down short. Penalty goes the way of RGS High Wycombe. What a twist in this game. 19 goals Great work off his feet, then from hands deep in. in their 22 to drive themselves forward. Time off. He's off the pitch, so he can do a sub there. What a big moment in the game for RGS by Wickham as there's a small break in play for an injury. Frank is alongside me, an and injured player, up, part of the uh, Hampton setup. Frank, you must be thrilled at your victory that's taken you into the cup competition. Probably to be in the way of the line out, wouldn't he? Uh, from the beginning of the game, but um, once we found out that winning it was uh, top of it to play second in another group, make it, you could say, easier for us to get through. We were. We we're up for the challenge, and you can see from the boys there that uh, the grit and determination at 100% throughout the side. day. Coming into this play. tournament, which, uh, you know, you're running into the tournament hasn't right, been you ready? perfect. It's not perhaps been what you'd wanted from the Fine. season. Did you ever you envision doing? topping your okay. very difficult group? Well, we, were, we wanted to just come off what we did last year as well, which is win the group. And uh, the boys had every capability of doing it, and we proved that today. And yes, we've had a rocky start. We've had injuries here and there, missing players for, for the tournament as well. But the strength of the squad is just phenomenal. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Frank. Really appreciate it and have a wonderful day tomorrow for the rest of the competition. Cheers, thank you. Penalty advantage early. Well, it's a penalty advantage for High Wickham as they pull down the line out. And it will be their way as they play. 16 early.
Well, from the ball, the penalty was won. Yeah, I'll do it all over again. Still level here. A great break. Pick him up, and he comes straight back down. From uh, RGS High Wickham, that's led them to this opportunity, and now they've got the ball rolling. They've rotated it well. There's power behind the drive, and RGS High Wickham have the score. A crucial score that will end all debate about the end fixtures and results in this group. A win here, and RGS High Wycombe are through to the cup. Textbook forward play. Oh, thanks, the Jesse. ball has been a feature of the day's play. Plenty of teams have worked on it, and uh, well, we saw an excellent one in their own 22, and now High Wycombe have worked their way up the field. Scored a great try. Excellent conversion, and suddenly High Wickham are in the ascendancy. Here we go, boys. When you ready? RGS High Wickham claim the kickoff easily enough, and can now exit comfortably from inside their 22. One more forward carry. RGS High Wickham have been very efficient around the breakdown. Great clear out so far. Stop eight and that five. box kick hasn't quite got the distance that they wanted, but they have claimed it back. Okay. Unfortunately, knocked on. First one's from gold, and then. Okay. Sorry, boys. First one's by gold, then by blue. Thank you, Rob. Well, it will be a scrum then. RGS High Wickham in front. Crouch! Bye! Free kick goes the way of RGS High Wickham, and it's the perfect exit for them. You can't kick it straight out. Scrum again. Scrum call. Well, scrum is the call. I'm going to come. Okay. I'll watch. Time off. Time back up. Oh. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Second. Go. Crouch. Bye. Set. It's just a lull in the crowd ahead of the uh, final two games. Denston in action up next against Strath Allen. Martin Joseph's College taking on RGS Newcastle for a place in the cup final. In the cup uh, group stage, sorry. The top two teams from each pool, of course, qualify for the cup competition. Tomorrow, the knockout phases begin. Scrum this time goes the way of Wellington. They're in need of something special to get themselves back in the game. Listen, listen, boys, listen up. Drum back. Just pull it. Crouch. Bye. Set. In two, three, four. And now. Well, it's a Wellington strum, but there's plenty of pressure being applied by RGS High Wickham. Carry through the forwards, it's a good ball from Ben Smith. Wellington simply haven't had possession of the ball this game and they've no! lost it again. And 
High Wycombe will come away with it. 19, release! Good line speed, but a wonderful tip on. And RGS High Wycombe are attacking now. Look at the injection of pace. Chip through as well. High Wycombe will gather, but spilled at the very last. Time off. Just take your boys back. Well, Stay on the line for me. Perhaps a discussion to be had between referee and assistant ref. Can you deal with it first? Oh, Thank you. I've seen a knock on. Yeah. The timing of the tackle is legal. Yeah. After that, is it over the shoulder? I think it's over the shoulder, yes. So it's a penalty. There's no penalty try because he's lost the ball and the tackle was legal timing wise. Yeah. Agreed? Yep. Anything well, else? Well, it will be a penalty then okay. for RGS High Wickham for a high tackle. And this is a big opportunity so for RGS High Wickham. The timing of the tackle is legal, but it is high, so it will be a penalty, but it's no penalty try. Sorry, high tackle. Yeah. Um, he is not that he was going down to score, so he was lowering his height. No. Still a high tackle. Did he not lower his height? Still a high tackle. Kick into the corner and uh, RGS High Wickham. Well, it's a profit off another mall. That's you there. Mall. Mall is formed, rumbling on with some great speed. They could be over the line here. Just here. I've got no clear grounding live. Help. We'll go for the goal line dropout. Well, it's been held up. Goal line dropout is the call instead. Hampton this time have escaped. Wellington, sorry, this time have escaped. You can't kick it straight out. But they can't still kick it straight out. trail. Touch. Well, it's been touched in flight by High Wickham, so it will drop kindly for them. Lovely step off the right, and RGS High Wickham crashed through the contact. They have possession in the 22. There's a strong carry once more over the gain line. Once again, they make more metres in the carry. High Wickham looking physically imposing at this stage, but over the ball go Wellington. Still it comes the way of the blue and red, and there's a lovely run, gliding through the defenders, great offload, but the ball goes loose. Still in possession, but now Hampton have it back, and the penalty goes their way, and another RGS High Wycombe attack has been subdued. Half time then. What's the line that question? Just the... Well, RGSI Wickham are fighting for a place in the cup competition, something that they richly deserved given the quality of their play. At current, they are just unable to put Wellington to bed. A tournament to forget so far for Wellington. Half-time, RGS High Wycombe lead by seven with 15 minutes left to secure their place in the Cup come tomorrow.
so um, Well, we're back for the second half here, live with Next Gen at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. RGS High Wycombe are on the verge of achieving qualification to the cup competition, second place in the group. Behind, Kirkham. Cheltenham are on the verge of missing out if Hampton, if Wellington, sorry, fail to win this game. I am fully aware the only thing similar between Hampton and Wellington is yellow and black. I apologise for making that mistake. But it's not the start that either side would want. Giving away possession after working hard to put pressure on at the kickoff. It's a scrum for RGS High Wickham. Crouch! Five! Eight in. Set! Clean ball for High Wickham and they pick at the base of the scrum and look to take on Wellington. Pick to the base. And High Wickham make metres again. Spilled at first receiver, and this time Wellington come away with it. Did I hit you in the face? You're right. Yeah, boys. Good form. Yeah, boys. Big shot, Brandon. Well, the final two games of the game. Straff Allen face Denston College next. Here live on pitch one. And then the hosts take on RGS Newcastle. For a place in the cup competition. That's live here at Next Gen. After this game between Wellington and RGS High Wickham. How's your way, Boo? It's a good attack except from uh, Wellington, but it's been knocked on and that brings an end to a promising attack and my Wickham have the opportunity to exit. Advantage over. Well, it's a long, deep kick, an excellent clearance. And Wellington will have to rebuild. RGS, High Wickham holding on for a place in the cup competition. They will finish second as things stand. Just take a gap off. With Numbers. two wins. I'm just Gold sorry she lost to Kirkham. Five. Wellington line out. Fighting for a place in the cup competition, still possible. 
depending on results elsewhere, but they need to turn things around and turn things around quickly. Spilled. And things just aren't happening for Wellington. It can happen in a, in a day as long and arduous as this. Having already played twice and lost twice, especially the really tough contest they lost with Cheltenham. They lost by a single point this morning. It can be difficult to bring things back, even when you know you're still in with a chance of cup qualification. They will have rugby tomorrow, regardless of the result. But at the moment, Wellington are out of the cup competition. And we'll finish the day with three losses. That's a wonderful kick out wide, but it just hasn't been claimed cleanly. And RGSI Wickham are comfortable with how things stand. The current result, of course, would favour them greatly. Keep the scrum there, guys. That was good. Let's go, Let's go, Crouch! Set! Well, it spits out the back and away you go. Wellington, there's a little show and go, trying to affect the offload, but instead it goes the way of High Wickham. Smartly hold on to possession. And they find forward runners in the wide channel. A great double shot once more from Wellington, but High Wickham have possession in a dangerous area. Spilled once more. The ball just not going to hand. Well, Wellington will need to uh, okay, break pretty efficiently from here if they want to get back into this game and turn things around. Crouch! They will have the feed at the scrum. Bye! Set! Penalty goes against RGS and they tap quickly and off they go. A huge shot comes in. What an intervention that is. That's one way to cut short an attack. A thunderous shot. To turn things round on Wellington. We were seriously staring down the battle of a third defeat in three. Set. Picked at the base, flicked off, and again it's a loose ball, and up come Wellington to make the shot. Turned over. Wellington come away with it. Easy, watch them. They've got a lot of work to do to break out from their 22. They're playing with ball in hand and there's some great direct running. Another strong collision in midfield this try through Harry Eckersall. Good ball from Smith out the back and wide they go and Wellington will look to stretch their legs here. It's a lovely carry in that wide channel. Well, High Wickham have affected a bit of disruption there with their counter ruck. It's another good carry by Eckersall. Picked down the blind side by uh, Maslin, and it's a turnover. Nine goals. Hold on. Maslin's been turned over, and that's a huge moment for High Wickham. This could be the end of Wellington's Cup ambitions and the start of something very special for Raj, yes. Oh. Just come this way a bit, Jesse. That's your line, edge of the line. 
Numbers? Five, sir. Five called. You okay? Yeah. Side mode. Happy? Line out then for RGS okay. High Wickham. Five. Boys, five, 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 five. Who know that a yeah. victory here will see them through to the cup competition. Oh. It would take a miraculous oh, yeah. result no, six. for Cheltenham College in order to disrupt their plans. And this is an excellent ball in which they perfected in this fixture. Still going. And now they break away and make more metres. Good line speed from Wellington. But RGS High Wickham with ball in hand. Cut back inside and carry into the 22. Slow ball, so they play through the forwards. Really aggressive, direct running. Another strong carry. Penalty advantage. Penalty advantage now. Get me that number. And it's been clipped forward. Two goal, roll away. Two goal puts himself. Oscar Thomas now penalised in his 22. Let's have a decision. Okay. And they'll kick for the corner, as you may have heard on the ref mic. The high wicket opinion is we have them in the hall, which is certainly visible from what we've seen in this game. Make sure you come straight back down. In the down. closing stages of this fixture. High Wickham could see off the final fight of Wellington with a try here. Claimed well in the air and then moving again. Turning to that left-hand side, parling through. Surely now they must score. Short is the call. So over go High Wickham with forwards in tow. Driving towards the line. They go straight to deck to recycle possession. There's a good leg drive once more. And now they flash it wide, crashing over. Now they must score. A penalty instead. Billy, Billy, slow. It was lost forward by Blue. 21 is offside. Well, it was not on in the end, in but uh, Mate, an offside has One. got an RGS High Wickham out of trouble. One. Spared their blushes. Thanks, Jesse. Good call. Another opportunity then for High Wycombe to carve their way into the cup in style with a comprehensive win over Wellington. They've defended excellently well. Wellington have just been unable to string anything threatening together. But the ball is still rolling. And it's rotated and broken away. And that's going to be a try, surely now. It's given. High Wycombe are through to the cup. And this powerful young team will pose a serious threat in the next few rounds of fixtures. The Maul proving too much in the end for Wellington, who will finish the day without a win. Sorry. Okay, fine, I'll watch. A clean strike with the wind at his back, and RGS High Wickham, despite missing the conversion, will win the game by 12 unanswered points, and they will ride out into the sunset knowing that Cup Rugby is on the cards come tomorrow. Thanks, well, Straff so Allen in action too. up against Denston. Denston searching for their first win of the day. Thank you. And after that, the hosts in Joseph's College take on RGS Newcastle, looking to confirm their place in the Cup competition. That's live here on Pitch 1 at the St Joseph's College Rugby Festival. We'll be back very shortly.
And so it's confirmed RGS High Wickham go through to tomorrow's trophy quarterfinals here from Group 2. Kirkham Grammar School won over on the other pitch. They go through top of the group, but it's RGS High Wickham that go through with them. We knew that this was going to be a brutally tough group, and so it has proved. Who would have thought Wellington College would come up against such stiff competition? Well, perhaps all of you viewers at home. It's been a tough old day for them. But going through in the other groups, Hampton ended up topping Group 1. Trinity finishing up in second place after a thrilling game. 8-7, that one finished up. And so we now move through to Group 3. Blundells against Brighton College is going to be over on pitch 2. Denston College against Strathallen coming up here. And then it's those final games of the day in Group 4. RGS Newcastle against St Joseph's College here to finish the day on pitch 1. And over on pitch 2, Dulwich College against Millfield, who are already through. So we've got a big couple of games coming up for you in each pitch. It's all going to decide who's going through when it all shakes out. Stay tuned, stay with us. It's going to be an absolute roller coaster for these final two games on each pitch. Okay. Ready, Ned? Welcome back then. Denston College against Strathallen. <laughs> Strathallen playing from left to right in their blue and gold. Denston College receiving that kick off in white, and it's ball in Strathallen hands. They move it to the right hand side, it just goes down. We've not seen too much of that since the morning's action when the ball was so wet and greasy. There you go. Okay, if you want to start to my left, I'm going to walk straight back off. Okay, first scrum. Scrum Strathallen. Crouch. Let's go, Max. Bind. Stay up. Set! Stay there, nine. Strathallen. Move it wide. Lovely little loop move. Out to the far side, but again it goes down, but playing penalty advantage. Bang in front of the posts. And in this crucial game. Offside at the scrum. Will they choose to go for the sticks? Chuckled. They will indeed. Gents, back line of the set piece, stay where you are, okay? Make sure you go back with the scrum if it does. Williamson bangs over the points and a 3-0 lead for Strathallen. Neither of these two sides have won a game so far today, but they've been involved in some absolute crackers. There you go. Strathallen actually drew 0-0 of all scores with Brighton College at the start of the day for a really tight game, 14-5. 
with Blundells. Okay. They've been impressive. Just haven't quite been able to get the victory. Could that change here? Denston College will be hoping it doesn't. They too had a really tight one against Bundles. 11-7 defeat. And then they faced one of the performances of the day from Brighton College earlier on. 19-0 Brighton College won that one, scoring some sensational tries in the process. Just had a conversation off air actually with some of their staff saying surely, surely an early try of the tournament contender. These two will want to have something to say about that though. Box kick comes in. There's a lot of space out there. Sits up nicely in the 22. The chase comes on. Denston working hard to recover it. Oh, a lovely breakaway. The ball is loose into Strathallan hands. And a lot of the play is coming through them at the moment. Hands away now. Mannion just conducting things. And now his forward pack starting to play, and Mannion has his hands on it again. And now they move it to the right hand side. There could be some space here. Final pass comes in, but just goes down. The chance was there for Strathallan. Oh, so close. Could have been the first try of the game, but just didn't go to hand. But it was lovely work. The interchange between Mannion and his forwards, and then the break from Townshend, the skipper, brought them ever so close. Crouch. Bind. Set. Hold. On end. Oh. No, 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 no. End. Okay, use. Denston College break away from their own try line. I look to put boot to ball hit. Use nine. Good boy. No, back. Strathallan underneath it. They move it centre field and there could be a bit of space out there on the left hand side but once again it's that final pass they are so so close to stringing this together Strathallan three or four times now it's just been that final pass that's not stuck yeah. they are creating chances the Scottish side Creating real chances. Just a bit of a delay. While an injury is assessed. A reminder. You know, of what's coming up, it is big. Next here on pitch one, RGS Newcastle against St. Joseph's College. A must win game. It really is. Victory for the home side would send them into the trophy quarterfinals tomorrow. RGS Newcastle, meanwhile, looking for a first victory of the day. Came ever so close against Dulwich College in their last one. Want to finish on a high. Over on pitch two, Dulwich College also with a chance of qualification after that victory against RGS Newcastle. But the challenge is mighty for them as well, taking on Millfield, the back-to-back -back champions who've been so impressive today. Here, though, we're back underway. It's a big scrum from Strathallan. Denston get the ball away from it, though, but they're having to work hard behind the game line. Again, they put boot to ball. 
It is a blustery day. Seen plenty of kicking and that one retrieved by Liam Sean in the backfield. Townshend, he thinks he spotted some space. Oh, that could be magical from Townshend. Has to be tidied up by Denston College. That's really good evasion. Oh, that's wonderful play from Denston College to avoid that potential trap as Longyear then takes it in and they get the penalty. A brilliant kick from Townshend, but so well dealt with by Denston College, who could have been in real trouble there. down by Denston they'll form them all in fact they've dummied everyone including myself and now they go searching away tackle comes in but a wonderful break that from Denston College Rika Wusu surging through ball has been well slowed up by Strathallen though so they have to work hard again long year takes it up Challenging the line offload, though, goes into the hands of Mannion, and Mannion gets it away. Clearing kick comes in. Perfectly into the box. Difficult one in that setting, Sun. Just to try and give you an idea that the Sun is directly now into the eye line of the Denston College players. A high ball falling perfectly into it. a wonderful turnout today as ever at the St Joseph's Festival and already the touchlines starting to fill up in anticipation of that all or nothing game that is coming up after this Strathallen extract the ball from that scrum start to move it wide this time the big wide pass does stick and there could be a bit of space in the backfield they stab the ball in towards it now it's a foot race for it but the ball beats them all and just runs dead will come back for the 22. and streth allen showing once again that they have the ability to get the ball into those wide channels and to find real space when they do so. <laughs> Instant scrum, and you are correct. That is a number eight putting the ball in because he's wearing the number eight. Suspect is either Ollie Booth or Eden Maxwell. I'll try and work that one out for you. You know what? He's wearing number nine. I'm just getting old, I think. My eyesight's failing me. Oh, there we go. Denston run into the heart of the Strathallen defence and make ground with it. Big tackle comes in. Ball was lost forward by Strathallen in contact, though. So Denston will be playing with advantage, and the referee quite correctly decides there was not too much advantage coming there. 
And in fact, that'll be half time. And we head in to the half time break. Well, it's not nil nil, but it's not far off. Strathallen leading Denston College three points to nil as we head into this half time break. Welcome back. 3 0 at half time here. <laughs> Strathallen leading, and Strathallen receiving the kickoff from Denston College. Denston College playing in their white shirts. There's Mannion. Clears it up to the 10 meter line just about to begin this second half. Denston will have the line out. It's a good line out ball again. The line out, I've seen them get on the front foot fairly consistently. Now they try and move it a little wider into the 15 metre channel. Crushing it up through the forwards. Long yet. Almost intercepted, but playing with advantage, Denston College. Can they take advantage? Pushing for a first victory of the day. Calling for the ball, there is a bit of space, but it just doesn't go to hand, ball is lost, but we'll come back. It'll be a Denston College scrum. And a real opportunity, this, for them to try and launch a play that'll take them into the lead. Referee just making sure that everyone's aware of what they need to be doing. Denston have stacked this near side of the field. Entire back line all on one side. 
Allen. It's a big scrum from Strath Allen, but Denston get it away. They take it right to the line and through the hole they go. Cover comes in and now the offload. It could be an opening here if they can just get one more pass. Oh, what a cover tackle that is from Strath Allen. Denston just a pass away from glory there, but still they trundle on. They're up to the five meter line. Forwards doing the heavy carrying. Wusu has a go. Out wide, didn't quite work, but it will work. Not the try they planned, but it's the try they've got. And a crucial one for Denston College. Brilliant, brilliant play to make the initial break. And then the forwards did the heavy lifting. And then this pass didn't quite go to plan. But as so often in the game of rugby, the bouncing ball causes chaos in defence. And gives Denston College the lead here. And that is a cracking strike on the conversion as well. Brilliant, brilliant bit of converting. And Denston College leads seven points to three. Come out firing in this second half. Good kick return as well. And they get their exit. Box kick is charged down, but back into Denston College hands, is it? No, referee says there was just a hint of a knock on in there. And Strath Allen will have the scrum. We've seen this a few times today, haven't we? When one side scores, next side gets an opportunity almost right away. Steady scrum from Strath Allen. Mannion. The 22, could that be a turnover? Referee says nothing doing. The kick through is blocked, but it's still in Strath Allen hands, and then we're going to come back for the penalty. Referee saying there was no clear release. Strath Allen poke it into the corner from the boot of Townshend. An opportunity here. Get their noses back in front. Mall is formed. It's a good counter drive from Denson College, though. Really good counter drive from Denson College. So Allen have to get the ball away from it. Townsend dances, gets himself up to the five meter line. Now they're on the front foot again. Playing with advantage too. Out to the far side, a good tackle coming in there. But still Strath Allen go. Nothing doing though, so the referee's coming back for that penalty. Looks as though the young Scots are going to go for the tap here. In fact, they're going to go for the scrum. Big call. They want to tie in some defenders.
remind you that it's a nine o'clock start tomorrow, not nine thirty. So an earlier start, nine o'clock. Reminder coming in over the tannoy that it's a nine o'clock start tomorrow, and that is worth remembering. 9 a.m. tomorrow, the knockouts begin. We start with the bowl quarterfinals and then we move on to the trophy quarterfinals. Strathallen have the ball at the base of the scrum. Can they strike back? Townsend tries to run through the Denston defence. Now Mannion moves it wider. There are numbers out there, but the drift defence is good from Denston College. Huge chop tackle comes in. Strathallen keeping their patience. Another big tackle coming in. But again, Strathallen recycle and get quick ball. And now they cut through the hole and they are going to get their noses back in front. Such great patience. And Strathallen have their try. Conversion is good as well. And Strathallen are back in front. There's Adam Williams and cutting that line that crucial score. Williamson and his teammates under a bit of pressure from the kickoff, but get the restart dealt with. Send it back down to the halfway line. 10-7 they lead. Couple of minutes left to play. Denston College are going to keep playing and keep playing. They are itching for a result here. Right through the heart of the defence they go, into the 22. This forward pack will run and run into brick walls if they have to. Bringing in the zigzag now, left to right, and now they go left again. And it's another big carry. Back row getting through a shift here, now they spin it wide, could there be space? No, Williamson grabs it. Adam Williamson is going to win it for Strathallen. Nobody's going to catch him. Two and two minutes for Williamson. Two and two minutes for Strathallen. And they will get the victory here. Denston had to throw caution to the wind. They knew time was ticking. They knew they had to do something. So they pushed on that envelope, but it was Strathallen that's opened it. And Strathallen that'll get their first victory of the day. A draw early on against Brighton College was impressive. But now a victory that is all but confirmed. Time's not yet up, but that score creates the distance. Conversion was added. And a 17-7 lead. So they thump that one off. In fact, they break a tree on their way with that one. And that is it. It's all over. Strathallen take the victory. They've got their victory. And a well-deserved one too. Denston College pushed hard. They were so good. But Strathallen were creating chances throughout the game and they get their rewards with the victory. All finishes up here. Strathallen 17, Denston College 7. And do stay with us because we are now into that final round of games. And up next, it's RGS Newcastle against St. Joseph's College. Win and St. Joseph's College are in the trophy quarterfinals. Lose. And they are into the bowl.
It is a big one now, isn't it? St. Joseph's College up against RGS Newcastle. Win and St. Joseph's are through to the Cup quarterfinals tomorrow. RGS Newcastle want to stop that, though. This will be their first victory of the day. But look what it means to these people here at St. Joseph's College. It is chaos, and it is going to be absolutely huge. This is going to be a massive one. Millfield are over on the other pitch. But my word, try and drag anyone away from this, eh? St. Joseph's College versus RGS Newcastle. Castle, everything on the line and it's coming to you now with Wilf Kemsley. Thanks Angus, yeah welcome back to pitch one here, it's the final game of the day in the opening day of the St Joseph's College Rugby Festival, the hosts St Joseph's College take on RGS Newcastle, still searching for their first win of the season, the hosts meanwhile narrowly beaten by a very impressive millfield, separated only by the impressive St Stefan Emmanuel. Early on in the day, of course, an excellent win over Dulwich. That ties things up pretty nicely for St Joseph's College. A win, and they will meet Brighton in the Cup tomorrow. <laughs> RGS Newcastle fighting for a bit of pride, but an impressive side that should not be underestimated. Plenty of changes in the St Joseph's College side. Make sure they're behind you. And the biggest crowd of the day ahead of the rugby this evening which will also be shown here Point at St. Captain. Joe's. We're live with Next Gen on the main pitch. Captain. Newcastle okay. in the Guys, change of their regular kit colours that we're so used to here, Time's now on. in the black and red. It will be William Alexander to kick us off. And climbing highest is Joe Prescott, the captain. What a start for Newcastle. Kelly. William Pontin deputising at nine in the 10 shirt, but Newcastle go wide, hint of a forward pass, but plays waved on. Good tackle in the wide channels, but Newcastle in the ascendancy. Savage, the number seven, the Newcastle Falcon. Lovely little inside tip as well. Exley this time with the carry. Pontin, Wilson. Getting back to his feet, but he was held, and up goes the roar, and St. Joseph's College are in possession once again. Well, first turnover of the game, and Newcastle have been emphatically repelled by St. Joe's. Solomons will nudge it into the corner. Well, it's high, and not the angle that's... Solomons was after, but it's been knocked on, unfortunately. Forward. The very impressive Max Shield. Unlucky there to drop that ball. Had a great tournament last year. The season just hasn't gone as planned for uh, Newcastle, but they're a strong side. Here's a scrum for Newcastle. Harry Wilson in there member of uh, the county side and uh, Kelly 
the vice captain, another Newcastle Academy player in the front row, but it's St. Joseph's College to feed. Solomon stands at first receiver. But Thompson goes himself, and it's over. First attack of the game, and St. Joseph's College roar into the lead. Well, no one deserves a try like Jimmy Thompson does. Had an excellent day. Survived a pretty brutal tackle on the halfway mark against Millfield. Still kicking and had hard runners on his outside. Liam Van Hoving drew the defenders in and Jimmy Thompson converts his own score, 7-0. to Joseph's College leap into the lead. A perfect start, first attack and the first result. And Joseph's College are inbound for the cup competition. Brighton awaits them tomorrow if they can hold on here. Taken well and some lovely footwork and look at St. Joe's go. Excellent work in the end from uh, Sharp, Sharp to keep hold of it and Solomon's clears. It's slashed wide and it's very much chaseable. Newcastle retreating, but it's been gathered by Sarvan Engelen. Sorry, by uh, Preston McFarlane. I couldn't possibly take that away from him. Excellent work. But uh, holding on the floor, so we'll go back 10 yards as well for a bit of back chat to the referee. Finally, it's Killian Murphy at 24, who started on that left wing. Slightly too far away from me here in the commentary gantry. But a great work from him. Unfortunate to be caught for holding on the floor. And here's Newcastle's chance. Their first real attacking set of the game. From the set piece, at least. Exley found and into the mall they go. Taken down by Newcastle is the call from the referee. Alexander at 10. First man. Taken down and St. Joseph's Knock College off. have turned it over, Last but then forward. knocked it on. So oh, Newcastle man, will have the scrum. Great line speed from St. Joe's. Forward in the jackal. Guys, this side was good. Same again, please. Well, we're very much into the early evening now as the sun starts to dip. The temperature will start to drop. The things are staying red hot here on pitch one. Newcastle have the scrum. St. Joe's look to disrupt and excellent work from Jimmy Thompson to knock the ball out of Joe Prescott's grasp and they've won the turnover. Well, that was a great bit of ingenuity from St. Joseph's College co-captain. And Joe's are back in the scrum with the formidable partnership of Kelly, Wilson and Jack White to deal with in the front row. The first start for Alfie Sharpland in place of uh, Ico in the Maxiguena, who's had an excellent tournament as well. And into the backfield they go, well gathered. Excellently gathered by McFarlane, and there's the offload of Sarvan Engelen, beating two, puts in the fend, and the turn. What a lovely run. St. Joseph's College into the 22. Hard line from Bush. Penalty, St. Joe's. Stay up, stay up, number there. Stay high. Black two, off feet. Great work Support between McFarlane and Sarvan Engelen. We've not seen nearly enough Line. of the outside backs Line today for St. Joseph's College. They've looked bright when they've had the opportunity. But Rufus Russell the Cox line, will be throwing into the line out. Anton in Make Super sure also you, with his first start of the day. So here. Yep. In place of Smith. Guys, I just gave you a mark. Noah Jassy is also Hold in the, the line out, along with Frank Christopher. A good game Check against out. Millfield. Oh, 
Line out ball claimed and the mall is rocking and rolling in there. Hurdling towards the line, it's been brought down. Penalty advantage. Hard line once again from Sharpin. All the way! A great score! Alfie Sharplin powers over. Great drive and determination to dot down and St Joseph's College could be putting on a show here to end the day. All on his own, powers through the first tackle, drives to the line. It's a great run and a great finish. Thunders through the contact, Alfie Sharplin on his first start. He's got his first try of the tournament. And Thompson will look to add the extras. It's a great effort, right from this short right-hand side. It's been slotted in St Joseph's College, go 14 in front. Neilfield, of course, in action against Dulwich. You'd expect them to come away with three victories from three. And for now, William Alexander will get Newcastle back underway. They search for a foothold in this game. It's a good carry. Thompson goes burrowing forward, does the captain, Charrington. Thompson, finally Solomons puts it to the boot. It's a lovely kick. It's going to require a healthy return. Here is Shield. It's high and not too handsome. Still alive, Josh. Still and it's alive, gone still dead. Still and what a position St. Joseph's College have found themselves in. Bye, boss. Front man, please. Numbers go. What an opportunity then for St. Joseph's College to Five. press home their advantage. They lead by two. And they have a line out. Just 10 metres shy of the Newcastle's line. To the back they go. Excellent take in the air by Greg Pettit. And the ball is set and stationary. So the ball is available. And now they get moving. But it's been disrupted by Newcastle. Thompson has it. Van Hoveling, Solomons, shows and goes. Oh, he'll go all the way himself. What a line, what a run, what another score. Ryan Solomons chalks up a third for St Joseph's College. What a wonderful line picked out. And this is clever from Solomons. Gives it and keeps it hold of it. McFarlane took the shot, but Solomons took all seven points as Thompson converts. 21 points, they now lead Newcastle. Uh, extra long conversation between the head coach and his team as Newcastle look to get a foothold in this game. They find themselves kicking off for a third time. Following conceding. And the home crowd really getting behind their side now. Another kickoff, a very contestable one too from Alexander. And it's been knocked on by Newcastle, unfortunately so. And that'll be a scrum for St Spend Joseph's College. Time, Forward by Black. That is unfortunate. Excellent kick from Alexander. Let's keep the standards up, please. They're good scrums. And you imagine St. Joseph's College will play from here. Give me your shoulder, please, one. Crouch! No! Bind! Sit! Now you! Solid scrum for Thompson to feed. And here is Solomon, it's just built. Well, that is unfortunate. A great platform for Newcastle, though. Newcastle ringing in the changes. Plenty of new faces on the eve of this scrum.
Well, two changes in the front row as well. Idris Pritchard and Josh Epen are both on the field. Ponting in his second tournament finds Alexander. Lovely footwork from Ben Wilson. Driving forward, Newcastle in possession. Ponting. Epen. Ponting again, Alexander, lovely line. Penalty advantage for Newcastle as well. Ponting picks and plays this time and the pass ungatherable at that height, but penalty persists for Newcastle. They did lead Millfield in the early stages before eventually succumbing to the collective weight of that famous old Red and green jersey. Thank you. Line out then. Deep inside the 22. 10 metres short for Newcastle. Up goes Welby and the mall is set. St Joe's putting the counter drive. But round come Newcastle. Still driving Newcastle with Ponton at the back and he'll play to Alexander hard line run by Jessup Tackle assist, must release. no release was from Joe so another penalty this time they'll tap and play Alexander miss pass lovely ball Rembeck Rembeck still going will he be held tackle Tackle called. Newcastle are only inches short. Pontin's there. Going wide, over they go. Well, Newcastle have scored. Although you might not be able to hear it because the crowd are in. No, uh, no mood for cheering on the opposition. But it's a good score from William Alexander. Yeah, fine. Daniel Rybeck, lovely in this uh, wide channel, made lots of space. The and then the, the forward there. stacked up to draw in the numbers. Great ball across the face to Alexander. And the captain of the... Uh, the uh, Newcastle cricket team and Durham Academy member crashes over to score. Ponting from a long way out. It's a great effort, but it's wide. No and that will be the half. Half time then at the final game of the day. A strong start for the host in Joseph's College, who sprinted out of the blocks and led by 21 points. Newcastle with the solitary score right at the end of the first half. RGS Newcastle with a mountain to climb if they want to upset the home crowd. For now, St. Joseph's College remain in charge with Brighton in the Cup tomorrow if they can hold on to defeat RGS Newcastle. We'll be back for the second half very shortly, live here on Pitch One with Next Gen 15 at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival.
Well then, the second half to get underway very shortly. Solomons, the third try scorer to get St. Joe's back underway from the kickoff. Black captain! Where's your captain go? You there? Good to go, time's on. We're back underway in the final game of the day here at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival. Taken well by Ponta, and lots of pressure from Thompson. Now Newcastle will look to exit. They'll play through the forwards no, no, from no, the good. moment. Stay. Wilson, come on. Well, the ball's gone loose. Fine, play the ball. And it's missed everyone. Finally picked up by a white shirt. Greg Pettit latched upon it. Penalty advantage. Penalty advantage too as Charrington, the captain, goes driving on. Thompson. Black 16 off Digging for the ball, but not getting any luck. So instead, Thompson will tap quickly. Hurst. New advantage. Another advantage. Thompson with the ball at the base. He'll go himself. Two players hold him up. Greg Pettit turns and scores. Josh Grigg Pettit scores for St. Joseph's College. Guys, you've got to work and they have their please. fourth. We could be looking at a really big score here if St. Joseph's College can keep turning the screws on this uh, Newcastle side. It was a good finish in the end from Greg Pettit, an industrial today. Impressive individual. One of many Greg Pettits to represent the school in sports, in rugby and in netball. I have been promised he's the last one to come through the Greg Pettit production line of sportsmen. But who can say? His brother George did uh, admit that he is perhaps the bigger and perhaps even the better one at rugby. I doubt he's ever said that to his face, but a great score for the youngest of the Rick Pettit family. Alexander to get us back underway, Newcastle's try scorer as they look to rebuild. It's been spilled off the kickoff, unfortunately. So this is the perfect opportunity for Newcastle to get the momentum back in their sense of direction. Same as the first half, standard high, please. Newcastle then with the feed inside St. Joseph's College 22. Right. Set! Spits out the back for Newcastle, but it's well gathered in the end, and Belm Wilson will take contact. Quick ball for Pontin, searching for Shield. There's a big fend from Shield, Good occupying now, a few tackle. defenders. Pontin, great line speed. And Wilson is dragged down. The ball spits out, it's loose. But it's been knocked on by St. Joseph's College. Good hustle from Killian Murphy, unfortunately. Unable to uh, gather cleanly. I just told you to stop reacting. If we see it, I don't care. Stop reacting. Next time I'll take a penalty against you. Okay? Just step to the right, buddy. The referee taking off. real control of uh, this game, but there'll be time off. Well, there's some cramp is dealt with. A reminder that after the. Uh, Days of play is over. Don't go anywhere. Is myself and uh, Tom has been on pitch yeah. two today, <laughs> and Angus great. will be running Stop through all of the day's rest. action and uh, throwing around a few predictions of what is to come <laughs> on what promises to be a thrilling day of rugby tomorrow with cup and plate and shield competitions. And Joseph's College making a couple more changes as well. And comes Max Iguana and Patterson. Make sure that shoulder comes through, okay? Scrum then for Newcastle. 
about 10 metres further back than when they, where they were on the left-hand side, but a, a great opportunity nonetheless. Oliver Emerson deputised at number eight. Pontin has possession. White nine. Go and stick a leg out, intentionally trip off the player. Well, Jimmy Thompson sees yellow. White nine, intentionally tripping a player. For sticking out a leg and trying to trip his opposite man in Pontin. But uh, that kick hasn't gone to plan. 22. And it will be a 22 dropout. So St. Joseph's College let off a bit too easily there by Newcastle, but they will play with 14. Four on the watch, so the bin will come on at eight. Behind your man, please. Guys, behind your man. And Solomon's then <laughs> with a little dummy kick to send all of his players forward. This time he lets it go, and it's in the centre of the park on the 10 metre. Wilson looks to return it. Alexander gets the ball away. Over goes to Joe's. Cleared off for the breakdown, but it's been turned over effectively. And the penalty. Black 22. Hands on the floor. Well, that's a perfect response from St. Joseph's College. Going a man down, but. Uh, Gathering their strength and winning the penalty too, and a great effort to try and keep the ball in play, but just a foot in touch and a really excellent kick has put St Joseph's College. In a very impressive position, searching for yet another try be their highest scoring Go back, guys, performance the of the day. Spilled at the line Not out. Advantage. Backwards off a St. Joseph's College hand, but forwards off a Newcastle one. No lost, Black! No lost! Oh. Ollie Edwards into play nine. Scrum advantage over! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edwards. <laughs> Penalty. I need to stay up. Hurst taps and drives towards the line. Wide it should go. Steps back in is super. Only inches away now. Hurst drives towards the line and scores. Callum Hurst has another. They're offside. Have to improve. They're offside again. Newcastle penalised on numerous fronts, and St Joseph's College extend their advantage. They lead by 31 to five. And Solomons will deputise with the tee while Thompson is in the bin. A real statement by St Joseph's College. A real crowd-pleasing performance. And they had an extras too, 33-5. 60 seconds. Uh, a good step inside by game. Super, Five. a purist of the game might suggest that ball needed to go wide, but Callum Hurst won't mind. It's a great score. Alexander with the kickoff as the crowd uh, are getting involved in this final fixture of the day. The bar certainly been open for a while. Barnstorming run from Newcastle as they drive up into uh, the St. Joseph's College backwards, 22. Backwards. Always back foot. Backwards is the call. Ryan Beck's back at nine. Penalty goes the way of St. Joseph's College. Holding back 17. Everything they touch turns to gold at this very moment. St. Joe's in impressive form. Four. Tommy Rope to Bin clear this upfield. Yeah, Bin's up. Still inside their own half, midway between the Guys, step for me. half and 22. 
under five minutes to go here. Last play of the day, at least on field. In the England game to come later. Hurst will throw. Guys, stop black, you've not got a receiver. Well, the, uh, the trick play worked. Five of the numbers, so we need a black receiver. Okay, same marks. But uh, now things are all even. Well gathered in the air, and St. Joe's will play away. There's a lovely line by the skipper who's back to his feet and driving, but held. So Fergus Sherrington goes back and Newcastle wastes no time getting the game underway. In comes the shot from Hurst. Cutting back inside. Newcastle trying to garner some momentum, but it's been turned over. Jack Lawrence lies upon it and Scrum advance is over. Now St. Joe's will look to drive forward, but now lost forward. Been lost forward once again by Newcastle after they affected the turnover, unfortunately. Now roll black. Ted Warner carrying it hard. Scrum advance is over. Nudge through. Excellent kick. Who will gather? Hussey makes the shot, and they're over the ball to turn it over. Top work from Jack Hussey to chase the kick and disrupt. Lovely nudge by Oscar Lewis as well, just off the toe as he slipped, and Hurst will throw in this St. Joseph's College line out. Called by Noah Jassies. Overthrown. Not straight, outside shoulder. Well, not straight option. is the call. Scrum on line. Scrum option. Outside shoulder. Well, we'll restart with a scrum. Hurst now at hooker with Super and uh, Max Iguana on the front row. Crouch! Bind! Rhinebeck with the feed. First 11 football captain as well as a county footballer and rugby player as Rybeck goes on himself and chips it over the top. The Ropes feet. in the backfield. Tommy Rope looking to take on Ryback. Steps inside. Through the hole goes Rope. Breaking two tackles. Lovely meters made. Go, 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 go. Penalty as well. Tackle was good. And to Joseph's College do to just take a bit of pace out of the game. And Tommy Rope will search for touch. Touch found, narrowly avoiding the big screen to our left here in the commentary box. Hurst will throw once line. more. Jassy's to call. St. Joseph's College will have the final say of the day as we come to the closing stages of this fixture. Step. Your front man, on your front man. A oh, short ball and Hurst cuts back on the inside. Patterson in support. Stay. Edwards. Axeguana with a strong carry. Flashed across the face. Who will gather? Newcastle come away. Scrum advantage. And unfortunately, none so. Cross forward. Ojig Barney couldn't gather, so the game is over. And it's a real statement performance from St. Joseph's College. Brighton will be watching on in anticipation and perhaps fear following an excellent performance. St. Joseph's College go through second in the group, only behind the ever impressive Millfield. And they will play Cup Rugby tomorrow following an emphatic 33 5 victory over Newcastle, who descend to the plate competition. Well, don't go anywhere, as although the rugby's finished, I'll be heading down to join Angus and Tom while we go through the day's actions. We'll be there very shortly, live with Next Gen at the St. Joseph's College Rugby Festival.
the last score of the day, St Joseph's 33, Newcastle 5. <laughs> A reminder that these will be updated uh, in the next couple of hours and sent to the website and so on and so forth. Brought you here for 9 o'clock tomorrow, 9 o'clock start. First match starts promptly 9 o'clock, so make sure you're here before that in case you're playing. Um, End of day one, and what a day it's been here at St. Joseph's College. The St. Joseph's Festival just doesn't let us down ever, does it? We've had an incredible day. Absolutely stunning. Some brilliant performances. Such competition in the groups. And now after that big St. Joseph's victory, the home side are into the trophy quarterfinals. It's always special when they go through, isn't it? And we can see the crowd starting to come towards us. The players just emerging off the field. Millfield are on the other field. They're also through doing their stretching but we're going to have a bit of a wrap up here myself and our commentators Wilf Kemsley and, uh, and Tom Reed are going to have a bit of a chat uh, talk through what's been happening today but also more importantly what's coming tomorrow and who we're excited about and already alongside me because he's, uh, he's a real athlete he moves so fast it's Tom Reed and Tom a brilliant day. Your pitch uh, finished up a little earlier than the other pitch, and uh, the last game you had there was was Millfield, who've been sensational today. Yeah, they certainly have. It's uh, it's what you'd expect. Certainly a strong side, and uh, talking to some of the other lads from other teams, it's definitely the one they're all, all looking out for all the time. But we know that there was a close game in there for Millfield today, which was brilliant. Didn't get to see much of it because it was over on pitch one. But goodness me, it sounds like a really strong side that are coming through and really pounding out those wins. It certainly has. We've seen a lot of different play today I mean it started off it was you know it was wet and horrible and windy and we, yeah, we were all standing on the touchlines imploring people to, to kick the ball and move it long and all the rest of it and then suddenly the sun broke out and we started to see some unbelievable rugby I know you were treated to a few unbelievable tries over there on pitch two yeah certainly a pick of the bunch has got to be Dulwich in one game two absolute tries I mean the skill and the pace that was involved to be able to finish off them, starting some of them from, from their own line really, was amazing to see the work that they put towards scoring those tries and just to have two great tries in one game was something really special and all their games today really Dulwich have been a little bit special I think so they're definitely ones to look out for. They certainly are and then uh, as we look ahead you know we feel tomorrow it, it's building up 
A little word before we talk to Wilf about it, because he is an old boy of this place, but a little word on, you know, I don't want to bang on about the hosts too much, because uh, there are 15 other teams here, but there is something a bit special when they're in the big comp on day two, isn't it? It just heightens that sense of anticipation. Yeah, massively. They've got massive support here, and you can see when they run onto the pitch, they're running through that giant tunnel, the support all the way around the field, the, the sound, you can even know. You know when St. Joe's is playing. If you're around anywhere on site, you know when St. Joe's are playing, because of the noise that's made to, to really support them is amazing um, and yeah having them in that Tom competition I mean even just the walk over here from pitch two to where we are now the murmurs the conversations who's going to be in that final maybe it's St Joe's Millfield final how exciting would that be some people really putting some bets together about how we can make some really exciting games well I tell you what I said I wasn't we weren't going to bang on about the host too much but I've got I've got one of the one of them here hello mate um, what an amazing day through to the trophy quarterfinals, you've got to be excited about that. Yeah, it's something special. I've been looking forward to this moment for ages and just can't wait for tomorrow. I'll tell you what, some really good performance as well. You've got to be happy with the level that you guys have shown. Yeah, we've just connected so well and love every one of the boys and love playing with them. It's great. And it's got to be a bit of excitement. You know, it's been, it's been a, a kind of quiet couple of years for St. Joe's at the festival, not quite getting the highest before. Back in the back in the trophy quarterfinals. The, the, you must be able to feel it from all the old boys and girls that are around as well. You must just feel like, oh, this is special. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of that stigma that St. Joe's aren't very good at rugby anymore. We'll just prove that out there to, uh, today but we're back on, on the grid. You certainly did, and it's been a terrific season so far. Confidence has got to be high, and, and feeling confident ahead of tomorrow. Yeah, we are, very confident. Well, I'll tell you what, thank you very much thank for you. joining us. Go and warm up, it's absolutely <laughs> freezing now, isn't it? So you go warm up, hand me that mic, and we'll get we'll get things going with... Well, I'll tell you what, this St. Joseph scene keeps on going, because we we've got an old boy over here. Will Kemsley, you've been doing the, uh, the commentary over on pitch one today. Um, and we'll sort of finish this this St. Joseph specific segment with you. Um, you've been commentating on, on every single one of their games. We've just been talking with Tom there about how special it is when St. Joe's make it through to to the to the second day in that top competition. There is just a different feel about the place. They've played really well, but it is just a different tournament when that happens, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the uh, the last time that St. Joe's got close to the final was actually in 2019. I think it was the last time we really challenged. We were one game away. We lost to Kirkham at 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, and that set the tone for the rest of the day. Uh, and then since then, we haven't necessarily challenged in the way that we should really um, but I think it's come together really nicely this team it's got a really good feel good factor to it I've actually had a lot of conversations with old friends and uh, teachers and things like that and they've all said it just feels a bit different this year not necessarily better not worse but, but different in, in a good way um, and the rugby is matching that in the way that we're performing I think that 31 points is the most that anyone's put on anyone today the most scored by uh, any team and that's very impressive and uh, took Millfield really close Millfield as ever impressive as they are um, uh, it's really difficult to take them down, but uh, came close. And I think that Brighton offers a really accessible challenge tomorrow because it's not the best Brighton team that have ever been assembled, but they've got some excellent players in there. Uh, and I think it should be a great contest. Certainly has been. I'm going to grab your mic off you because, as you mentioned, Millfield, we have one of the Millfield players. What's your name, sorry? Uh, Will Howells. Will Howells. Yeah. Terrific day for Millfield today. Top of the group and uh, and into the trophy quarterfinals. Of course, we all we all know you're going for three in a row. Yeah. It'd be pretty special to do it. But we'll yeah. focus on today first. An amazing day, yeah. three out of three, and some terrific performances. Yeah, great performance. Uh, yeah, a great drive from all the boys to you know continue the intensity throughout the day. Each game was as important as each, and obviously great to beat St. Joe's on the home ground, so good from all the boys. Very nice indeed. Yeah. And looking ahead to tomorrow, so you're going to be playing Blundells first up. You've met yeah. them already this season. I yeah. know it's a bit of a mixed side, but you know what they offer. They got off to yeah. a pretty decent start against you boys. You yeah. had to claw your way back and, and found a way for victory. Yeah. So that's going to be an exciting start for tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, we were 20, 20 nil down at half-time against Blundells when we played them uh, at Millfield, so just got to start better than them. We know they're a threat, so treat every game the same. And is that the pressure when you're here? Is you've got you do have to start well. You know, yeah. you, there's not a lot of time to play with. Getting points on the board is really important. Is, is is there a different feel when you've got that kind of pressure of the clock on you? Yeah, definitely. You feel like you've got to capitalise on every play almost, and every play matters. So, yeah. absolutely. Well, listen, yeah. Will, go and warm up. Thank you so much for Thank joining us, much. and Cheers. best of luck tomorrow. Three in a row. It could well be on. Thank you very much.
And Tom, I guess we, we you know, we, we've spoken a lot about St. Joe's, and it's worth it's worth us now as we we sort of breeze through Group Four. Um, we will go on and, and look at all the other groups, um, but just to to have a little look at Millfield, there, it is an incredible thing that they're going for. Three in a row would be astonishing, and they're they're certainly in the mix for it. You know, they, as we've sort of touched on, they've played unbelievably well. But uh, thoughts on that as a potential achievement? Yeah, I mean, it would be huge, uh, and to, to to win St. Joseph's once is is a big achievement, but then to keep doing it three years in a row would be it would be immense and, and would be huge. I think that. It adds the pressure, certainly for those lads. But you know, looking at them today, watching the way they play, they're 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 focused. They know what they need to do. They're not worried about the hype. They're not worried about the fact that you know there's got to be three years. It's just this year that matters. They've done the other years, so this year is the only one that matters. So I think for them, they're really focused, really on task. But they just got to see whether they can actually put it together and and do it. They certainly do. And so the rest of Group 4, Dulwich College finished third, RGS Newcastle finished in fourth. They're going across to the bowl tomorrow uh, where they're going to be taking on Strathallen and Denston College. And I think I was particularly, actually, I, I thought that Dulwich stepped up really well. I thought RGS Newcastle, who'd struggled for form coming into to this weekend, actually stepped up really well as well. They, they looked at that group and you would go, God, you've got Millfield, you know they're going to be a good side. You've got St. Joe's, you know that's going to be difficult. And both of those sides stepped up. But I think we'll just drift across to Group 3 now. We'll drift across because St. Joe's obviously are going to be playing Brighton College and Millfield are going to be playing Blundells in those in those cup games tomorrow in the quarterfinals. And Wilf, I'd, I'd like to get your take on this because Brighton College haven't conceded a point today. There was a nil-nil draw in it. I will, I, will, I will give them that. But after that, they have come out like a bat out of hell. Oh, my word. Some sensational tries, some sensational score lines in what has been an otherwise incredibly competitive group. Brighton College are looking tasty. They have also scored my pick for try of the tournament as well, uh, which was earlier on in the day. It was an 105-metre try. The kick was spilled. He was, uh, back, it was the captain, Freddie Terrace, back in his own try line, uh, stepped four people then sold a dummy to beat one man and then finish and then it was a two on one length of the pitch it was an excellent try uh, so they do look really forward going they look really good going forward as well which is uh, an aspect of them that you wouldn't think of when you think oh they haven't conceded and actually I, I can't exactly pinpoint why they haven't conceded because they were playing Strath Allen who uh, tore apart the Denston at times in that final game um, and Blundells who looked excellent in their first outing I thought they were really impressive um, so I don't think it's a fault of the group at all. I think Brighton just offered a really, off, offered really good structure. Um, and I was just very impressed by them overall. I think that McNamara at 10 has had a really good day as well. I think stepping into the 10 shirt at Brighton College is always quite difficult given the history behind it. Um, and I think they could be on for a, a really fascinating counter. I think Solomons and McNamara as opposite 10s at St. Joe's and Brighton, very different players, but a very exciting way to look at things. The um, Cardiff Blues man uh, up against the South African. It's going to be great. It certainly is. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about watching Brighton College some more. And I'm really excited about our next guest, Mark Will. Patterson, <laughs> who's right. very excited to see Will. I'm very well, thank you, Mark. What an amazing day. But what I want to focus on first is I know that your boy's been playing. Um, what's that experience like? I know you, I mean, last time I saw you, he was about seven years old or something you were telling me earlier. But how, how great is that to see yeah, your, your lad out there? It's been very strange. I mean, he was here for a lot of years and now. Um, my eldest lad playing, it's a bit of a different, um, different thing, being on the side, trying to keep myself to myself, <laughs> rather than walking around and seeing everybody, but yeah, it's, it's been a really good day as it always is, um, St Joe's have done, done well, but the atmosphere in terms of you know community and, and rugby people is brilliant on, on the back of, um, of the World Cup. I'll tell you what, Mark. We need to hear more from you, but I need you to hold your mic a little higher up because otherwise, sorry, we're otherwise sorry. we're gonna we're sorry. gonna run out of signal on it, and that would be terrible. Because okay. what you How's have that? to say is important. It's absolutely perfect. Um, but listen, it's it's a special day. It's you're a, you've you've got a long experience here. Tell me a little bit about what it means to the community. Uh, it's it's a massive thing. It always has been. You know, uh, you talk about winning sometimes, and, and you think that the success is winning, but the success is actually just being part of this. It's it's a big thing. I, I've got uh, in the years that I've gone from St. Joe's, I've got to speak to quite a lot of people about 
what it what it is to come to places I guess so Brighton and Millfield places like that. It's 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 a it's just a lovely event for for kids in general. Um, the parents, everybody, it's a really good community. It's the best of rugby actually. It's certainly incredible, and it's such a special day. And you're going to get to do it all tomorrow with the trophy quarterfinals. That's yeah, what it's all about. Yeah. Well, hopefully, and actually, it wasn't too bad in the end today. But I think it's going to be dry tomorrow, which is even better. Oh, I like you more and more. It's going to be dry and sunny as well. Maybe a little bit of Suffolk sun. No, I I grew up in Belfast, so I'm not used to the sun. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I'll take any of it. Right, Mark, you go and enjoy yourself. I'm sure Lovely. there's a beer waiting for you somewhere. Well done, you Angus. You certainly will see us okay, tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mark Patterson there, the former head of rugby at St. Joseph's College. And um, we'll, we'll go back to, to Group 3 and we'll, we'll have a little think about Blundells. Um, Blundells, obviously, with that nil-nil draw, I picked them before the tournament as a bit of a dark horse for this. I'd just sort of been watching what they'd been up to, and I was very impressed by um, kind of the way they'd been playing. Kind of, we'll take we'll take you, Wilf, and then we'll move down to Tom. Just sort of thoughts on Blundells and what they might be able to do. Well, it's interesting because I've not, I hadn't, I hadn't picked out Blundells, uh, and I actually think they they avoided a lot of conversation, other than the fact they were new. They didn't receive a lot of coverage coming into the tournament. Um, but they're an excellent school side. They're an excellent side. They're really well established. And yeah, it, it's difficult to see past certain teams in the Cup uh, and the favourites. But I think that Blundells will certainly offer stiff opposition to whoever they do come up against tomorrow. Uh, and I've been really impressed with their first outing. There seems to be a running theme of teams when they come here for the first time do really well. You thought, you know, Kirkham came for the first time, made the final. Wellington on their first appearance. Trinity on their first first appearance made the final. Seems like a running theme and we'll see if Blundells can repeat the same trick. It certainly does. Now Tom I'm going to get your thoughts in a second because I'm afraid we've got more important guests. I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Aaron Ludlam Hello, How Angus. are you? Yeah, pretty good, mate. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad, to be honest. I'm, su I'm surprised we got you here and you're not, a, you're well, not in front of a TV already. Um, unfortunately, Steve Borthwick's selection ended up with me being here this weekend <laughs> rather than in France. So, Can't uh, believe it. Can't yeah, believe it. Go sometimes. But hey, how is the boy enjoying life he's over okay. there? He's okay. He's pretty good. He's enjoying himself. He's, uh, he's a little bit gutted about the selection, obviously. Live TV, uh, eh? Yeah, live TV, <laughs> children, animals, you know. <laughs> But no, yeah, he's good. He's good. He's enjoyed the experience, but he's a, he's a little bit down about not being selected this weekend, obviously. I'm sure. But yeah. one thing I know that's also really special to him is this place uh, and this competition. 100%. Yeah, whenever he can, he's back here yeah. watching on the touchlines. It, it's an incredibly special event, isn't it? Yeah, I've been sending him a few messages actually, a few of his old mates in the bar and uh, and stuff. So that's cheered him up a little bit. I think the um, I've watched St Joe's a bit today. I'm actually really impressed with the side. It's probably the best St Joe's side I've seen for maybe eight or nine years they've got a little bit of meat up front which we like to see and uh, you yeah, know they look really well organized and well structured good pod system so yeah really impressed with the way St Joe's have played. Well, they do look very good don't they They're, I've been impressed and I, all I can do though is just hark back and think back to that 2013 side and some, some of those players obviously Lewis at eight but then you've got you had George Wackakoki, didn't you, on yeah. the wing, and Austin Beckett, these inc incredible players. It was it was a wonderful tournament. Do you think they can do it again 10 years down the line? Well, it'd be, be symmetric. That, that was a bit of a golden era. I mean, that, that year group had 35 boys in the year, and they managed to turn out a kind of festival winning side. But, yeah, there's no reason with kind of the home support. You know, you've been here year in, year out. And the, when this place comes alive and the fans get behind the boys, then, uh, yeah, anything can happen. And, from what I've seen, they'll, they'll have a very, very good chance tomorrow. They certainly will. And I tell you what, I've got you here. You've got a bit of inside knowledge. What do you reckon tonight? Well, what are we going to see? Uh, England, South Africa. Well, look, we're... You, you've got to say England, you? You'll uh, be in so much trouble if you don't. England, of course. But look, we're, we're a lot better than people realise. We're not, we're not pretty. We're not playing attractive rugby. But they're a very stubborn side. And, you know, the one side, South Africa, probably don't want to play as England because we'll match them physically and uh, so it's going to be close it's going to be very close but of course I'm going to say England are going to nudge it in the end 
I wouldn't have expected anything else. Listen, <laughs> we're, we're so proud to have, be, to have been there at the start of Lewis's journey and seen some of the stuff he's done. It's so amazing, selected or not for today. It's so amazing to see the progress he's made and the work he's put in. He might be the hardest working player in Premiership Rugby, I think. I honestly think I've never seen anyone work quite so hard. It's so special to watch. It's been great to get to know everyone on the touchlines as well. And uh, hey, you never know, 10 years later, maybe St. Joe's do it again for him. It, it would be a nice way to mark the 10 years, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Good to see you, Angus. It certainly would. Right, you go and have a rest. I'll yeah. grab that. And I think I'm bringing in Will Stace. Here we go. Will, right. Tell me about the day. Enjoyed it? It's been brilliant. Look, to be back here at the festival, everyone knows how much it means to St. Joe's lads like us, but also the wider community across Suffolk. It's great to be back here today. I've lost my voice. This is how much I've enjoyed it. But to see how many people that have turned out, more concessions, uh, a change of pitches, to see new faces, old faces, what a festival and what a way to come back into it. Perfect. Right. I'm going to just rotate you around a little bit because uh, we've, we've got wind blowing us from, from okay, left yeah, to right. So here we go. Now, you, you stay here. We're all good. Right. Um, ready for tomorrow? Excited for tomorrow? Tomorrow is, you know, something we haven't thought about as St. Joe's for a long time because it's always been, let's give a good account of ourselves, but now it's, let's go push on and see what we can actually do and which place we can finish. Single digits was the aim before the tournament. That's what I've heard, and I think that's something they can easily smash and get into a very, very good number tomorrow. Facing Brighton College, I believe. A very tough side. They look great. They've looked absolutely brilliant. And look, tomorrow will be a new challenge. It will be something really big for these boys. They were close to last year's winners, 12-10, could have arguably, beat, arguably beaten them. But we'll see. Big challenge ahead, excited for it, and come on you blues, come on you red, red army. Perfect, right, Will. I need to bring Tom back in, but you stay for a little bit because we'll bring you in for a couple of bits as well. Uh, Tom, we're going to switch back. I must talk about the other teams, I really must. <laughs> we're going to switch back to, to that Group 3. Blundells, we were very impressed with Strathallan. I think, I know Will was, in fact, Strathallan, Denston College. We knew that group was going to be a really tough one, that Brighton, Blundells, Denston, Strathallan. And it really was such a good group. Yeah, definitely. I think um, picking up from, from the Blundell sort of discussion in a way as well, I, I do agree with you in a way that they are certainly a dark horse um, and they see themselves the underdogs. Had a couple of the lads up in commentary for the last game that they had in on today and they were really confident. They knew they had some things to work on. They got quite a few players playing out of position to try and rotate those players through. So they worked well, they worked out. The last game didn't matter as much. They were through already to the cup competition. So for them, really working hard to preserve some of their better players and they had two two flankers or a flanker and an eight playing out in the backs at, at uh, inside and outside centre. So really going above and beyond to really help the team and push in the right direction. Uh, and they're just loving it. They're absolutely loving the festival, their, their first time here. So it's a great opportunity for them to really push through and see if they can have a bit of an upset. Yeah, certainly. And as Wilf said, you know, we've always had teams managing to get themselves towards the final when they come on their debut. I don't know how they manage it, but they keep on managing it. But anyway, so that's that bottom half of the draw. And so tomorrow's cup, well, trophy rather, uh, quarterfinals will be Brighton College against St. Joseph's College and Blundells against Millfield. Over in the bowl, it will be South Allen against RGS Newcastle and Denston College against Dulwich College. Now to the top half of the draw and a team that I think has been sensational in Group 2. Kirkham Grammar School have been the talk of the touchlines, and in particular, fly half Ollie Davies. My word, what a day he's had, what a day his team has had. Yeah, massively. I mean, I've, I've been lucky to commentate on two of their games, and I, the amount of times I was almost speechless with the way that they played with the ball, the way they had the tries. I had to disagree with Will slightly. I think they got one of the tries of the tournament from their first game. Two cracking tries coming almost from their own line just keeping that ball alive and something that we discussed earlier that you wouldn't really think with the weather today the way that the ground stayed quite greasy the ball's not been great to hand actually wouldn't want to play the way that they've been playing but they managed to execute it so well um, i'm going to put it down to skill rather than luck and that they've really worked hard at keeping that ball alive and goodness me i just just really impressed and as i say especially controlled by the man at 10 working that through trying to find the space and just that support is constantly there they certainly are. And it was a really amazing group. I mean, Wilf, you, you, you've seen plenty of that group as well. When we went into the final round of games, RGS High Wycombe, Cheltenham College and Wellington College still had a chance of joining Kirkham Grammar School in the, uh, in the Cup quarterfinals. It ended up being RGS High Wycombe, and I will come on to them. 
But the very fact that Wellington College ended up not winning a game today, and that's a good Wellington side, that shows you how good this competition is, but more importantly, how good that group was. It was brutally tough. Opening game, Cheltenham College winning 7-6. Then suddenly you're going, oh, okay, this is wide open. And then suddenly just everything there burst alive. It is a sensational group, but it tells you everything about this tournament that Wellington College of all teams couldn't win a game. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's an interesting mix of teams at this year's tournament because in my head there are some very strong favourites and I can't really look past them. But that makes it more exciting tomorrow. The likes of RGS High Wickham, who I wouldn't put in that category of they are the, the, of my four favourites, but like, I think they have been really impressive and I'm really looking forward to watching them play. Their mall is very impressive. And with Wellington, I, I had a conversation with a Cheltenham College player and he was saying, look, we're missing a couple of our key players. To our two, who who has classic. not said that today? But then, you know, <laughs> Trinity are missing the likes of Lucas Friday. Like, you know, Wellington are missing some key players as well. Um, and I just think that that doesn't really factor into how I view who's going to win the tournament and who's not. Because it's the teams that are the strongest collectives that I feel are the favourites. Uh, I guess how Wickham being back in the cup is great. It's great to see them both. Former winners, really nice to see them back up there where they probably belong. Uh, and they have looked pretty formidable and uh, they have a very physical side. And I think that's going to serve them well as they go later in the competition. It certainly is. And Tom, I'd like your take on this as well because, because to me, school rugby is right when RGS High Wycombe are competing. And it was so good to see how well they played and how true to themselves they were. You know, they know their strengths. They were they were brilliant. We've we've got someone doing some uh, some work experience with us. She's been going behind the scenes, getting some getting some stuff off all the teams. The RGS High Wycombe boys were just like, no, nah, no, nah, game face on, we ain't doing any of that. And they, that was how they played. It was brilliant. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's the theme of these these this tournament and the teams that are all here as well. I mean they take this so seriously. They know that this is the pinnacle of their careers in terms of school boy rugby these are the kind of tournaments they really want to get into they really want to play well when they get here so they keep getting that invite back as well say teams missing from previous years who you think some of them may even still deserve to be here but the competition is just so strong to get into here and yeah taking it seriously for high wickham it, it, it's it's really important for them and as you say school rugby isn't right unless they're at the top Exactly, exactly. And so what that meant was that that incredible group sees Kirkham Grammar School and RGS High Wycombe through to the trophy quarterfinals and at least Cheltenham College and Wellington College in the bowl. I mean, good luck stopping either of those in that bowl competition. But what that allows us to do, we can go over to Group 1, which again was also a cracking group in the sense that it was so competitive. It felt like it could go any which way. Yeah, Trinity had been written off by a few people, including actually on our podcast this week, Sam Howard, who basically basically said that they ain't going anywhere. I was a little more skeptical of that point of view, but they came out of the blocks firing. They got an early victory um, and Trinity go through. But then in the very final game of the day, having drawn earlier in the day, Hampton step up, win a tight one, 8-7 to beat Trinity and book their place in those trophy quarterfinals. What a group. And then you obviously you've got Whitchurch High School who are giving it everything. Quakes Wakefield who came within Oh, millimeters of doing some special things. I think they, you were commentating, in fact, they scored in the last play to level the game against Whitchurch, which actually denied Whitchurch progression. Incredible group, but talk to me about Trinity because I think their story is, is impressive. Having been slightly written off, they reached the final last year. They were probably smarting about getting written off and boy, did they prove everyone wrong. Well, I watched their first game of the day against Whitchurch, and I think, per firstly, I think Whitchurch are going to walk through that plate competition. I think they're a very impressive side. Strath Allen have looked great as well, but I, Whitchurch are going to have a good day tomorrow, I'm predicting. Um, but yeah, they won that first game against Whitchurch Trinity, uh, and then they were very impressive throughout. They really put Quaid to Wakefield to the sword. They were just really ruthless. Uh, they, were, they weren't in the 22 nearly as often as the scoreline would suggest. They were just very clinical. Um, and losing to Hamilton, is, it's interesting because like, they knew they were through and I think that probably did play into it whereas Hampton knew if they didn't win they were out uh, really playing on other results elsewhere you don't want to be relying on other results in a competition like this when the games are all at the same time but Hampton were great but Trinity have looked really solid I think um, they're an impressive side I think they've got a lot of leadership in the group They've got some really impressive uh, key players, like the fullback, second row. Uh, you know, they're, they're the sort of positions you want really solid options, and they're very impressive. And 
I think they're going to challenge tomorrow. They still don't crack into what I would consider like favourites. Uh, neither do Hampton, despite the fact they have looked good. It's, uh, but it's going to be more interesting to see if they can overcome a Millfield, a Brighton, a St Joe's. Uh, who I'm putting as people who are perhaps going to go all the way. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that works out. I mean, Hampton have done amazingly well to top the group, and they've avoided an incredibly difficult challenge, which they've then handed to Trinity. So that's going to be a really interesting uh, development tomorrow. I can't wait. 100%, and you've got to be in it to win it, and that's exactly what Hampton have managed to do. I reckon probably the most sort of under the radar side to have qualified today and to end up topping the pool as well no one was really talking about them not in a negative way they just people they weren't really on the radar that much and then they've they've topped the pool they're in the they're in the cup uh, the cup, the trophy quarterfinals rather hey game on yeah i think i think all day they've just been doing the job really they they haven't done anything amazingly that sort of really stood out but they've just done the job every single time uh, really pushed hard, played some decent rugby and just, just pushed through it. Um, and, that, and that's how you win, that's how you're going to do well. Especially St Joe's often sometimes actually coming through, you avoid the hype, you avoid the pressure as well. That Obviously St Joe's had the pressure naturally, Millfield have the pressure of this year particularly trying to get three years in a row. Maybe Hampton can sneak in and just sort of, you know, really cause a bit of that upset. They certainly can. Right, well, that means so it's Hampton against RGS High Wickham in that uh, trophy quarter final. Trinity take on Kirkham in the other one. Over in the bowl, Whitchurch High School against Wellington College and Queggs Wakefield against Cheltenham College. Some cracking games. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get some quick predictions off all three of us and then we're going to let people get on and get, the, get their preparation ready for tonight's game. I'm sure there, there's ovens to be warmed up and all sorts to get ready. Um, so, let's have a look forward. Those, those trophy quarter finals, we've got Hampton, RGS High Wickham, Trinity, Kirkham. Brighton St Joe's, Blundell's Millfield. So with that in mind, you kind of know the pattern of the draw. I'll come to you first, Tom, since you got the mic in your hand. Who are you picking out of that? Who do you think's going all the way? It is tough. There's so, so many good teams in there. Um, for me, Kirkham, just the way they've been playing today, just so strong. I think they've just got so much more in the tank. They're enjoying their rugby, and that's really key, I think, to make sure you're enjoying playing the game and you're actually having fun with it means you have so much more freedom in how you play. And I think that can mean that they can come through and get something really exciting out of this. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think they're, they're pretty strong from that perspective, for sure. There we go. One vote, Kirk and Wilf. It's up to you now. Where, where's your, where, where are you going tomorrow? What's the head saying? It's really nice to talk about St. Joseph's College and not to be really biased when I say... I think they're going to get to the final. And it's such a home man. It's nice such to a home boy. Say that, and I'm not like you could. You, no, everyone's not going to laugh at me. They will have to play Milford in the semi final. And to be honest, I think Milfield today, that was a final. That was a seriously quality game of rugby. They stuck right in the middle of the day. Um, but I, I do think that. St. Joe's have a genuine opportunity. They do have. They have to be Brighton and Millfield, who I think, other than Kirkham, that's the four who I think are the strongest four teams here: Kirkham, Brighton, Millfield, and St. Joe's College. So, if they can beat Brighton, they can beat Millfield. If they can beat Millfield, they can beat Kirkham. But I think a Kirkham St. Joe's final is absolutely on the cards. Well, I'll tell you one thing that, that you have to remember it in this place of all places as well, which is that if St. Joe's get on a run they will become irresistible. There is something special in the atmosphere that it doesn't seem to put pressure on them. It seems to lift things. And that's very impressive for what are, what are schoolboys. Yeah, that's really tricky. But I guess I've got to put my neck on the line as well, haven't I? Well, we've got we've got one vote Kirkham. I see what I was banking on was we'd get one Kirkham, one, one Millfield and one, and one Brighton College and we could, we could all go. <laughs> but we, we, we'll, we'll throw a curveball into the mix that may actually work. Um, it's very difficult. Tournament know-how, I think, is important. And Millfield won it eight times. Three in a row is on the cards. Does that make them my favourites? I think it, oh, it's very difficult to do. I might, I might lean Brighton College. I might lean Brighton College because I, the way they bounce back from nil-nil to then just rampage through, they were just sensational. I might just go with Brighton, but hey... It could be anyone, let's be honest. The bowl's going to be worth watching as well. Let me, let me, you know, not forget about that. Whitchurch High School, as you said, have been incredible. Strathallen have been incredible. Cheltenham, Wellington College. You know, these are huge names in all of schoolboy rugby. That's going to be a great competition. But uh, 
There we go. We put our next on the line. Let's see which way it goes tomorrow. The only place to watch it is going to be here on Next Gen 15. Just to let you know the schedule for tomorrow at the start of the day, the first bowl games are what we're going to open with at 9 o'clock in the morning. Pitch 1 will be Whitchurch High School against Wellington College. Pitch 2 will be Cheltenham College against Quakes Wakefield. Next round of bowl games at 9.30, and then the trophy starts at 10 a.m. It'll be Hampton RGS High Wickham on Pitch 1, and it'll be Trinity against Kirkham Grammar School on Pitch 2. Two massive games. It's going to be huge. We can't wait. There's loads of people left here who can't wait. No one's interested in that World Cup thing going on later. We don't care. It's all about the St. Joseph's Festival. And day two starts tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Thanks for joining us, and do stay with us for tomorrow.